can't stop us.
atrocities can press their lives up better than that. Picks up the kills. Another for Brett. A flip. The flippity flip flip. There's everyone just battling to try and get the spawns. Five and are now for Skies amidst the madness. And he just keeps cruising. It's like he's pump stomping. Get him another one. Seven in a row. 25 and 16 for Skies. The scum. Mike gets a nice timing here. Hello. The cross just sneak it on in. Gonna find Gullet. Hello. Snaps on the second. He's had some insane clutches this year. A chance in a one versus three now. Down to a 1v1. A seam. Scum. 20 on the clock. Are these on? Did he see the other yes, Scum gets it done again. You've got two glide bombs still to use. Church now going the way of phase. And it's a tight one indeed. Fred trying to find the entry through side. Here we go. He's in. Finds at least one. Towards the back is Arsides. Can press their lines. A better than that. Picks up the kills. Arsties may be able to pick him out here, he's the top side of the map. Oh my god, Fred finds two! That's tremendous! Arsties answers right back, and it is a 2v2. I think that was triggered just from Arsities. I think he could have had the first kill quicker, but he got two instead. Two versus two, back towards B! Oh my god. Sim can't find anybody! Oh my Accuracy god! Accuracy on the drop, and accuracy gone down! The ace in the round 11! Snipers have been out, they've been the story. But our first two rounds, can they beat again? Insight with some early shots, but it's Kleenex there! To walk away with oh! four! That's gotta be a record-setting ace! Here we go! Way, 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 way. This is chaotic. Way, 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 way. Give him all three! Oh no! The shots are good! He finds the first one, finds the second as well! This is what he does! You never know when I call to the event what could happen. But the whole team up, say that's north side. Walk away! We have a tank and a sensational stuff. It's done! It's nothing! And that will be it! No, it's disgraceful again! Let's get into the pool of juicy league. Let's go. people from all around the road welcome to the call of duty league where we're in the what the major four qualifiers is week one day two a lot of numbers i was going to get confused but welcome back to the analyst desk my name is belly we got ali and also nameless and i'm speaking of major four ali i have a question have you been to new york before i have but only when i was very young though okay my question to you is what do you look forward to when we go to major four in brooklyn just the amount of people i just know the crowd that's going to turn up is going to be absolutely insane i mean you turn a corner and there's like a million people down the street oh new yorkers are built different i'm gonna tell you that right now but nameless you're from chicago so, mm -hmm. all right, I'm gonna ask you something hot, okay? Do you prefer Chicago style deep dish pizza or New York pizza? <laughs> I mean, listen, I am from Chicago and I'm really not the biggest fan of deep dish pizza. What? I gotta keep it a buck, man. I gotta I don't keep even it like honest. Pizza. I see, <laughs> the, we I see know a man behind the camera looking at me like, you serious? I really do prefer the Sicilian style out there in New York. Um, so, yeah, there's that one. Sorry to my Chicago friends. You know what? Nameless, for all the Chicago people that I'm are watching right now, don't worry. Nameless gets no points for that, but let's look at the CDO points from what's happened all season. Is along. As you guys already know the deal, Atlanta phase are first place, 260. Like, that's how you dominate the point standings, right? Mm -hmm. Take a look at top eight. LA Thieves sitting at 120, but right behind them, nameless, Minnesota and also Florida, 10 points behind. Man, I mean, you look at that bubble. It's just so intense from London Royal Ravens all the way down to the New York Subliners who had a big W yesterday. Like, this can have a giant changeup before we get to Major Four. I mean, matches have so many implications. Today, Belly, we have the London Royal Ravens versus the Toronto All. Ultra. If Ultra win that, they will finally topple Royal Ravens on that stand, and it's going to get scary for some of these teams. Right, and remember this graphic for those of you at home. We keep talking about the bubble, and it has to do with exactly that, right? Boston Breach are sitting in sixth place right now, and while they might be sitting pretty, we got to see how the rest of this stage works for them. But the thing is, if they continue to play like how they did yesterday, it's going to be just easy. Ali, this team, they're fast, they're fun, they're new. It's a, <laughs> it's a breath of just fresh air with them. I think the biggest show 
shock for most people yesterday was vivid, right? When he came out, I mean, he came out hot. And I think for me, the biggest thing had to be the search and destroy. I feel like going into this, it was like the biggest loss in losing Cap was in their search and destroy, right? He had the highest gate. He, he added a lot to their search. And vivid, well, he had a .78 coming off the Florida Mutineers in that game mode. Well, yesterday he had a 1.21 in S&D versus the likes of Optic Texas. So clearly bringing a lot more to the team more than just in respawn. Yeah, Dameless, you and I, we question this play because, right, we all love Cap. Cap yeah, is yeah. a terrible player. Great. We're like, yo, why get rid of him? But what we saw out of Vivid, he was just good. He was monstrous. The impact plays he had, yo, he, he looks better here than Florida to me. Oh, definitely. I mean, we were worried about it because of the capsule, like, like I said, highest KD, but also the highest damage per round, most kills per nine rounds. Like, the guy was going off in search, but Vivid comes in and he changes the play style for this team. TJ Halley was so much more aggressive. He was taking mid map control against Optic Texas. Vivid playing like a rat as well, really playing those credit corners, getting those annoying kills on the flank, made Nero more free on the map. He had the ability to go out and just slam. I mean, in the respawns, we saw it as well when Nero dropped 49 kills on that game for Boston. It was a breath of fresh air for them, and I wasn't a believer in the change, but what Vivid brought to this team, it was new life yesterday. Yesterday, for me as well, Nero and TJ. I mean, Nero, obviously, in the respawn, he was just absolutely dominant, a 1.19 overall, but a 1.44 in the hard point alone. But TJ, man, he had a good stage three even though Boston Breach had a struggling qualifying matches TJ looked consistent throughout the board and now heading into stage four I mean he has been absolutely fried and he's feeling like Tej baby that's how you answer back to criticism right now the Boston Breach throughout the entirety of the year the, the question was okay we know they're good but can they beat the top teams in the game that's not a question anymore as we saw what they did against Optic Texas in that beautiful reverse sweep but take a look at the schedule to close out the year is gonna be a hard one but it's gonna be good I can't wait to see what comes out of this but also I can't wait to see what comes out of NYSL now this team all right things aren't pretty right now Allie okay this team there they, they were struggling at the beginning of the year they won the prime classic right they didn't get any points from that mm. they they bummed out at the last major but they, they did get a good win yesterday the squad is fire right like yeah. they finally found the perfect pieces to the puzzle to make a nasty roster but the issue now is is it too late it is do or die for, the, for this New York Subliners team and they did come out with a huge win yesterday in Florida Mutineers. It got a little scary there in the beginning, but it was Paul and Hydra, the absolute slayers, the pressure, the new addition on this team with Paul. I mean, they were just getting first blood after first blood when it came to this search and destroy. And then even in the respawns, Paul had a 1.68 in the Tuscan, so frying across the board. But again, they have to keep this momentum going for hopes at the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, the biggest map that series uh, for me was that control. I mean, we saw Krim really stepping up. He had a really big game there, and he's the guy that we highlighted in the pre-show. Like, if they want to have a lot of success, it has to be him. In these high-pressure situations, especially at Major 3, yeah. they lost a lot of round of 11, a lot of round 11s, and that's where they have to get better in those situations to clutch up. And now that they need these points, they're sitting at 80. They're on that bubble at the very bottom of it. They have to have a fantastic stage four. Those situations have to be better, and yesterday they were in that round five. They're able to win it, right? So that is where New York will find success. If Krim can continue to be consistent, you're going to get the big games out of Hydra. You're going to get those big games out of Paul. High pressure situations are where they need to make it count. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. And by the way, shout out to underrated Paul right there at a 1.29. He's 0.01 points over Hydra, who's a superstar on this team. Paul X has been putting in work, but this team as a whole, they need to put in more work than that. Take a look at their schedule. LAG, Seattle Surge, Optic Texas, and the LA Thieves. Not easy. In order for NYSL to make it a chance, they're going to have to really show everyone, okay, this is what we're made out of. All of these team changes came up to this point, and us as players, this is what you know we're made of, right? Especially Krim. I want to see Krim there at champs. But um, also a team that we're, we're going to see at champs definitely. The Toronto Ultra, if they don't bum out this stage, right? Nameless. Them, what we saw yesterday, what we saw at the major, it seems like this is a Toronto Ultra that we expected to see all year long at the beginning of the year. They're, they're finally back. Man. I mean, yeah, like it was That's not solid. an easy series by yeah, any means. No. Uh, I mean, for Toronto Ultra, like they went down, they had to crawl their way back in it, but. It just does seem comfortable towards the end of these years. Like when you get to a game five, I just feel like Toronto Ultra is always going to win it in yep. that fashion. The search and destroy has just been unbelievable. It's nine and two in their last 11. And, you know, Insight really, to me, over the last couple months, he's been the best search and destroy player in the game. He gets so many impact plays and big kills. And yesterday in that game five, the guy was just going off, picking up kills on the cross on Berlin with the sniper. I mean, those are just massive plays to ease up the round for your team. Uh, I think a lot of these teams are really going to stop challenging them on Berlin. Uh, that's something that team 
teams have been testing on control, Hardpoint SD, it doesn't matter. That's where Toronto Ultra is comfortable on. But yeah, these guys, they look fantastic, but like you said, this is the Toronto Ultra we've been waiting to see. But that being said, they're still on that bubble as well. Yeah. They have to get these victories. So yesterday, that game five was massive. Under pressure, they get the dub. The interesting thing for Toronto Ultra as well in yesterday's series, usually it's about their teamwork, right? Them coming together. But yesterday for me, it just felt like a lot of clutch plays. It felt like, you know, that Kleenex getting two piece and A on the Berlin control oh, yeah. to give them that pressure to fall to the hill. It felt like Bant was having a lot of clutch moments, and they actually got outslayed in that series versus LAG. Everybody went negative except for Insight with a 1.13. So looking forward, a little bit worried for this Toronto Ultra squad, but their next matchup is going to be in a str struggling London Royal Ravens. So hoping the boys can pull out the W. That's a rough schedule, Allie. Atlanta yeah. phase, Boston Breach, and then Optic Texas. That's the schedule we have for Toronto Ultra, but also the schedule that we have for today is going to be even better, right? Because Toronto Ultra, they're going to kick things off against the London Royal Ravens, but also there's a bounty match at the end of the day. It's going to be the LA Thieves and the Boston Breach. And, um, yo, Allie, you think we're going to see that, um, that high-speed duo on Boston again? Absolutely. I, I, I mean, so. I think that's their new pacing. I remember I asked uh, our stats guy, Carson, for the engagements across the board when it came to Nero. He somehow got faster after yesterday's series. He went from like five engagements per 10 minutes to like six. But the issue now is they're going against an LA that you said last time these two teams matched up, it went a little unfortunate for a specific side. Right, but hey, we'll see how things turn out here in stage four for the online qualifiers. But ladies and gentlemen, coming up on the other side of the break, we're finally going to kick off day two of week one for stage four. And I can't wait. We're going to have the London Royal Ravens and also the Toronto Ultra. We'll catch you guys on the other side. And I miss you. We'll see you soon. You want more shot when the camera's up. But this one, you gon' have to duck. Tell me about your lifestyle, really. We've been on the road to the tank, go empty. I'ma keep going to the long con. Give me if you wanted me to stop, then you can't come with me. Think you do the best? Silly. We about to put it in your chest, really. And I don't think you really want a problem. Think you know the outcome. You think you can get at me as you hit him. Listen up, boys. We're new in town. So grab your zennies. We're breaking it to Fenway. Once you're all inside with the precious cargo, it's time to blend in. We need to crack the Jumbotron code, figure out the cipher, and relay it to Nero. Once you have it all figured out, meet us down at the home dugout. We're only going to have one shot at this. Let's play. Yo, didn't you hear? Champs is joining it back to Cali. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 yeah. Champs is going back to Cali. Cali, see you there. Hey, we interrupt this programming to bring you a very important message. Did you guys buy your tickets for Major 4 yet? Buy your tickets at nyxl.com slash major, and you can come see me July 14th through 17th at the King's Theater. I swear to God, you better do that. You better do it. You better buy your tickets, all right? You ain't getting in if you don't have tickets, so what are you doing? Don't make me mad. Don't do that. Don't make me mad. I need no 
commentary. They gon' know me as legendary. When it stands, I ain't need no commentary. Ain't no option, ain't no secondary. I just throw it out like a Hail Mary. All right, ladies and gentlemen, okay, for this matchup right here, I really like it, right, okay? I'm a big fan of international play, but it's even better to watch the Europeans face off against each other, right? I love seeing them beat each other up. But welcome back to the Call of Duty <laughs> League. My name is Veli. We got Ali and also Nameless. But um, let's talk about it, okay? Toronto Ultra, even though we've been high about their performances when it came to Major 3 and also what we saw yesterday, Nameless, there's just one thing I, I honestly have to get off my chest. It is still terrifying that that game was that close in this LAG. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think Toronto really likes the game plan for their opponents. It's a tough team to game plan for in the yeah. in that squad they play yesterday in LAG. They made two roster changes. Uh, some of them just really had to settle into that series. But like we said, man, once it got to that control, you get in the big clutch plays out of players like Kleenex. Like, if he doesn't get that two-piece, they lose that map, potentially lose that series. But he gets it. And that's what I expect out of Toronto Ultra to make those five-head plays. And, you know, that search and destroy game five, I mean, it's just composure. The way these guys work the map. So for Toronto Ultra, it's about grinding these series out, getting these victories. That's always how they've won events. They've grinded out series, won it in game five fashion. So for me, it's sort of more of the same out of Toronto Ultra and the team that we saw last year clutching up. Improvise, adapt, and overcome, baby. Mark, you got these boys playing smart, but when it comes to the game field keys of victory, Allie, what you got? Well, it's all about the slaying power, right? They got out slayed by LAG yesterday by 25 kills. They still were able to pull off the reverse sweep, but you can't lean on that in every series, especially against a team like London Royal Ravens when you don't really know what you're gonna get. Be prepared for London's slow A pushes on Desert Siege. Toronto played Desert Siege yesterday against LEG. They got the loss in a 6-4 fashion. And I really think for them, it's just about abusing those lanes. I feel like they do the best on that map when Insight's getting that initial pick and they abuse the middle palace. So, hoping to see the normal Toronto Ultra today. And on that bottom left side, part of your screen, we got Insight right there. The man has the hottest hand on the roster. You don't want him to slap you, especially in Search and Destroy. <laughs> it's definitely gonna hurt. But um, this team, London Royal Ravens, I'm expecting a lot from this roster, okay? We could talk about how good they were at the beginning of the year, but the question still remains, what about now? What about the future? And we're finally gonna get a good look at that against a very good team, Ali. London, it is time for them to really show us what they're made of. Well, it's time for Gizmo to really show us what he's made of, right? We got that sneak peek into what he was capable of doing at the beginning of the year. The amount of aggression he added to this roster. I mean, they had the highest break percentage in hardpoint team in the league. Okay, that is how they depended on their respawn wins. Take away Gizmo, a lot of that aggression falls. But we've seen what all these players are capable of doing. It's just about getting everybody on the same page. Right, and um, Afro, we've seen his peak this year, and hopefully it's not going to be the end of it, right? Because he was on fire. And if this team could fire off on all cylinders and we can see a little bit of Major 2 0 again, this would be magical. But for the London Royal Ravens and the game field keys of victory, nameless, what you got for us? Yeah, they have to get back into form with Gizmo. I mean, we last time we saw them with Gizmo, like it obviously wasn't exactly the same as stage one, but obviously he was going through some things. So now he's back and they're trying to get back to that for formula that they had. Like Ali was saying, they were number one in break percentage, but they were also number one in like points after break as well. So now that they've had more reps with different players on this team. They get better on rotation. They can be even better than they were than that original iteration. They need a world-class S&D game plan versus Ultra. Ultra's number one S&D round win percentage this season. London is eighth, so definitely room for improvement there. All right, I can't wait to see these two European rosters go head-to-head -head against each other, but um, I think that there's a casting pair that's gonna like this even better, okay? It's gonna be the European casting duo that makes things very exciting when the game is at a very high pace. It's gonna be Bryce and 10 fellas. Yeah, the first series of the day. We'll say feel free, take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, Veli. Yes, I just feel like they keep kind of shoehorning us in for these European games, but we're always happy to cast them time. And of course, that means we can't possibly be biased. So technically, it is London versus Toronto, a Canadian team, but with European players. Uh, coming into this one, the questions, I think, mostly are going to be about London. What happens when Gizmo returns? Yeah, that, that is the question. Look how good they looked at the beginning of the season, as Nameless was just saying. But we didn't see much of that in the tail end of Gizmo's uh, short stint at the beginning of the season on the London Royal Ravens. Harry came in, not much improved. Gizmo is now back, though. And I, I just wonder, is the pressure on him to help this Ravens team get back to where they were? It was so exciting. Every single game you'd watch them, they would never rotate, but they would somehow win. And it was crazy when it come down to hard point. Their respawn was flawless. Their search and destroy needs work and, well, did back then as well but they're up against a reinvigorated toronto team who uh, just about got that win last night a win they were expected to get but can they get another win they are probably expected to get here well let's see the story is all about this man 
Does he somehow provide some sort of resurgence for the Ravens? To be traded out there from his first kill as well as in comes Bats with a two-piece. First control will go over to Ultra as now they're trying to lock this one down, but Zero going to move through and just take down Kleenex and looking to try and move these spawns for his team's favor. Yeah, just having a look at the start that came up on the side of your screens at the beginning of this one. Ultra four games in a row. Winning spree when it does come down to Tuscan Hall. Point two uh, second on the whole percentage as well. So when they do get these hills locked in, they are very hard to break, but they're going up against a team who are very good at breaking. So it should make things very, very interesting. I think a lot of the story is going to be around Gizmo for this squad, isn't it? London Royal Ravens really came out the gates and surprised so many people at the beginning of the season. It'll be a surprise win to kick it off here against Ultra. Good gunfight went up against Insight, though. Final couple of seconds will go over towards London, but Ultra with that good hold percentage are here already on towards P2. Oh, this is the big fight already. Can be shutting down P5. That takes away one of the angles that London can push this. You can see they're waiting for it. London going for this stack. They are going to try and hit this in some sort of force, but Nasty goes in by himself. Bans is alone. It doesn't matter. Kleenex wins his next gunfight as well. And this hasn't really worked out for London. London take another chow, and a third coming through. Bands is not even going to get that one. His teammate will clear it up inside towards the back as well here. London have struggled so far to get anywhere near P2. I thought that was inside snapping, but it was Kleenex helping him along. Yeah, London just really uncoordinated there, it felt. Two pushed it once, and then the other two just kind of standing still inside of radio. Of course, you would like your teammates to find a gunfight, and that might have released them, but... From there, Ultra have kind of had their way with London so far. Zero will get in there, and that will be the scrap time going over towards the side of the London Royal Ravens. So the deficit is not too bad, but once again, it's a rotational win for the Toronto Ultra. 7-2 out of Kami. We're starting to see a little bit more form out of him in the tail end of the season. Long may it continue for the Scotsman. Bans and Kill locking down maps momentarily. Afro will find two, though. London may well have a break yet. The problem is Afro is actually tying up Kami. Kami cannot go and help out his teammates because those kills are flooding in towards the other side. Well, I say they're flooding in. London are trying to find a hole, but it's only going to be zero, zero. with a two-piece and three zero. for zero. Finds it eventually. Oh, my four. God. Trey on a five streak now, and that has switched it around for London. And they have managed to crack through this all off the back of one man. That's six now for zero. Holding it down when they need him the most. Insight coming to the gunfight as well. Whoa. Zero keeps going. Looking for maybe one more, eventually will go down, but Glide Bomb in the pocket and a heroic play from Zero. My goodness me, he could not be stopped there. That was ridiculous. It was changed to auto, changed to MP40, everybody getting gunned. And that's the kind of player we need to see out of Zero. We, we've seen a lot of it at the beginning of the season, but an 11-3 to kick things off. That was ludicrous. I mean, we talk about players single-handedly breaking hills. That is as single-handed as you could possibly want. Four kills all in a row. They kind of all ran into him, but Zero gets the work done. That puts Ravens in touching distance. This rotation is kind of a bit of a 50-50. And is Ravens with purchase inside of Church. Ultra do have the more beneficial spawns, but maybe that's the SMGs for the London Royal Ravens starting to heat up just that little bit. Oh, at the moment, Bad's trying to just clear this one out a little bit. You saw the Ravens come screaming back into this game. Bad's actually pushed this completely out as much as he can. They'll probably be looking for him. They are going to be doing that as well. Nasty knows exactly what he was up to. This is a game of chess between these two teams. London now looking to put the squeeze onto Church. Nasty's trying to go through the front, but nobody there to hit his trade either. In fact, he's eventually going to go down to Gizmo, and the pinch comes through, and it works out for the Ravens. Scrap time will go in their favor, and it's off to P5. Has to be a miscommunication from the side of Ultra there. Absolutely nobody watching back Church. They wrap round along out it. One of our Ravens have got an easy enough pinch, and we head over towards P5. They've got plenty of purchase over here as well. Kleenex trying his best. Didn't have the best of series yesterday. I think it's what, like a negative 26 overall KD. That's not something you couldn't expect from him. So far, so decent on this map, but Ravens are inside. Afro in amongst the point. Good gunfight win up against Kleenex with the rest of the team there for the trades. Just about London. Half in control here, Brycey, but Toronto's still very much there. Okay, just trying to hold on here at the moment. The Ravens taking the lead and not the cleanest of positions here for Ultra. They're going to try and contest for as long as possible. If they can win enough gunfights going through and Bounce eventually will do, but takes the one in the face from inside. 23 seconds left to go. The Ravens will at least attempt to push this at some point, and Zero's going to come straight through, win the gunfight. Cammy here to find Cammy. two as well on the rotation, but they are going to lose the scrap time on the other side of the map. And that will put the Ravens in the lead, but Ultra in control of the next hill. London looking to just clear out for that final five seconds of this two. You inside the point, get somebody going. Afro is released. Look at the slow push that's coming in here. 
I think Afro is trying to play the game in the middle of the map to make Ultra think there was only one over that side. He's look the one looking to try and find a break here because Ultra a dug in deep. Good gunfight win from Gizmo. And well, there you go. That streak that came through from zero over towards P3 pays dividends as that glide bomb finds its way through. And Sight will find two. The only one remaining here for Ultra. It's a nice break from the Ravens. You should take a lead off the back of that. Zero is having a game at 18 and 8. Ravens Big game the from the Ravens. I'll tell you something, Tan. Let's find out how they are feeling to listen in with the London Royal Ravens. Out to me. Go on, go on. Melt over you, Marcus. Do it. Uh, two get, two get, 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 get the back. Get the back. Get the back. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm sat comms. Watch your top comms. Watch your back. No, what? Well, I'm watching ramp. I got, have you got comms? Yeah, I got comms. Right, I'm watching my own ramp. I'm watching my own ramp. Two comms. Two comms. Two comms. Come in someone else. Come on, 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 I'm there, you can't push. I'm staying close, hold on, hold on. Help me, Pat, help me, Pat. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming. One more ramp for me, one more ramp for me. Get the back up, okay? Push me, I'm on top. Ramp, 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 Okay, the Royal Ravens spitting fire, spitting comms. They have taken the lead in this game with huge holds on P1 oh and P2. God. And they have just broken P3 as well. Ultra are not hanging in this game at all. And Hilo Real Zero has come to play. Oh my god, I mean, he's absolutely going insane. You heard Gizmo getting excited over towards the back end of those comms as well. But this break percentage for London Royal Ravens is something we talked about so many times towards the beginning of the season. And we're seeing examples of it here. So many times they seem to be finding a route against a team who are so, so good at holding on this map. It's moment in time though, looks like Ultra will find a breakthrough, but Royal Ravens over the last three hills been absolutely ridiculous 200 points have been broken they're just about holding on to some sort of control over towards p3 but it was ultra the first ones here and it's a minimal amount of points they're going to come away with that's a win for the ravens as we head over towards b4 yeah if i draw back in this game they're going to need some big holds of their own unfortunately at the moment it hasn't really been going their way they will have church control for this initial here. Clinics is going to be pushed straight out, looking for this player. He thinks he's coming across. The timing is not going to work Big. out for him. Afro wins that gunfight. Zero wins another one towards mid-map. And Ultra, they have this point, but they do not have the bodies. London Royal Ravens are swarming, but inside gets two towards the back. Nasty gets one in the middle, and Cammy gets two himself. Ultra hold, and I don't know how. Huge players from inside as hell. Fantastic from him on the outside. I would say, you know, Kami's are a little bit easier inside the church. He's got a little bit of help. Insight has none. The grenades come over. They need to get rid of him. So much invested from the London Royal Ravens just to get rid of Jamie Craven on the outside. Kleenex now over towards the back. Trying to lock this down as best as he can. It's getting a little bit scrappy inside the point, but London have had very little to speak of here over towards Church. 30 points is now the lead. They've still got a solid one, but heading over towards P5, they're going to get absolutely nothing over towards Church. Can they lock down maps here? They do have Afro here first and foremost with the Ultra. All right alongside of him. Well, that's a clean X break, but I've ever seen one just flies into the pill by himself. And now it's a little bit of reversal. Well, last time, it'll be Ultra trying to push through here. You can already see Kami trying to get a little bit of an angle for them at the same time. This is all about contesting and getting bodies oh, in wow. towards it, but it's not going to be enough. Ultra cannot get Go through. Ahead. That is a full wipe. And now they have to sprint ton. They have to go the entire distance to try to get this one. Afro's pushing out as well. This might be done and dusted here. Just pushing out the cuts here from the London Royal Ravens, and it's absolutely fine for Ultra. If there wasn't this scoreline, London Royal Ravens about 14 away, five in a row from Afro. Ultra spawning out. Ravens in a fantastic spot to even rotate if they need to, but there's still 20 seconds remaining. This should be the closeout. 
Oh, basically, Ultra just had to go. It's full sprint all the time, and Cammy gets one, but it's not enough. There's too many Ravens on the board, and that'll be the London Royal Ravens taking it away from Toronto Ultra. A huge surge in the middle of that map gave them back to back hard point, and it made the difference. Ultra could not recover. We were discussing this map set at the beginning of the show. We were talking about uh, in between ourselves. We were looking at some of these maps and we were wondering. Ravens, uh, we're, we're not too sure on a couple of these hard points. Yeah, the session destroyed is always going to be difficult. Ultra on a four game win streak on Tuscan. They're on a six game win streak on Berlin. There's the first hard point gone. That win streak has been ended by a 33 and 15 performance from zero. 27 non traded kills on an auto player. That is something else. Out of Trey Zero Morris, my goodness, 3,500 damage put down. And amongst it, a lot of objective kills as well. This is what makes the difference. That moment where he broke that P3 seemed to be the resurgence for the Ravens. It was mostly Ultra all the way through up until that point. And Zero, one of the best individual players I've seen this year. That was insane from him. We'll have to see his POV for the most of it because that was pretty crazy out of the Ravens in a map that they, I just didn't expect them to win. I thought they maybe had a chance, but they were roaring through the middle of that, that map there. I think it was like three hills in a row. I don't think Ultra got a sniff. Yeah, and, and truth being told, that was probably the difference on this map because it was even a, a little bit of a comeback from Ultra. They started to get some holds down themselves, but they put themselves so far behind, they just had to try and get into P5, and that's when London Royal Ravens just locked the door and threw away the key. And yeah, big game out of the Ravens. We've been talking a lot about these teams recently and finding points anywhere coming forward is going to be super crucial. We haven't really been talking about that for Ultra. The truth is Ultra are still in that bubble. They are still not safe for champs at the end of the year. And I think that conversation hasn't been hard because of how good their performance was at Major 3. I might not have been there, Brycey, but I was very well aware of how they played a phenomenal, phenomenal event out of themselves. And it felt like we were getting to see the Ultra we expected to see, the Ultra that we've seen on Cold War. But it's been a shaky start to the qualifiers for Stage 4. It has to be said, yesterday, a game going the distance against LAG, one you would expect them to be able to deal with quite handily. And now heading into a series against London Royal Ravens, they find themselves behind after a map. Heading on to the Desert Siege, where Ravens actually don't look too bad, it has to be said. This could get very, very scary very, very quickly for Ultra if they don't step it up. Yeah, certainly could. I think uh, Zero just really doesn't want to lose to the Bants. It's just an ongoing feud between those two, even though they're good friends. Obviously, the record throughout their entire career heavily towards Zero, and he is feeling himself today. Smiles from the London camp. Ultra will need to regain. Fortunately, I think they're probably one of the coolest teams in the entire league with the fact that we've seen them beat in map one many, many times and it doesn't really seem to matter for them. No, it doesn't. I mean, yesterday, nobody would have... Ex well, I, I don't want to say nobody would have expected them to lose map number one up against LAG, but even when it comes to those sort of scenarios where they are behind, they find themselves in that reverse sweep position, you can absolutely never count them out. So even at this stage, Ultra are still okay. I mean, look, especially towards the search and destroy, that's what we say for them in particular. It does look very, very strong, but I don't know, man, that, that was not convincing. It, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, but it does it does feel like one of those things that we've seen from Ultra before, right? Not great at the hard point, especially not the first hard point. That map, especially, we were expecting a little bit more. They've been on a very good run with it recently. I just got to say, I think the difference is the fact that obviously Zero was just beaming and the problem is you can play maps well but if you cannot win the gunfights in certain positions where Trey was always it's not going to work out for you benefit being is I think Ultra eventually found their feet but they were too far behind to make a difference after losing that many hills back to back moving on to the S and D we'll have to see how it goes famously somewhere that Ultra have managed to stabilize the ship over and over again and I know this is weird but for me, it feels like a new Ravens roster, even though it's the old one. I don't know if, that, I don't know if you're feeling the same way, Tyler. It's a, it's a very weird thing for me right now, with the fact that obviously Gizmo's back, we haven't seen him in a while. There was even a little bit of a yeah. downturn towards the end of his, his tenure with the Ravens before he, he, he kind of left. Uh, and, and now it's back, it's been so long. 
And, you know, we talk about that downturn, but that could have been one of the reasons that he was moved. Well, not moved off the roster. Of course, we know that he took himself off for personal reasons. There could have been a lot going on. And if that's maybe at the back of his mind now, are we going to get to see the London Royal Ravens that we got to see for the first stage? That team that finished what I think was four wins, of course, across the first regular season. And then, of course, that third placement over in Texas. If they can bring that kind of form towards the end of the season, they become a very, very dangerous team that nobody will want to face. They're the sort that can, you can play your game perfectly in terms of rotations on half, but you can still lose. They have S&D prowess. They, they, they know what they're doing as a squad. If we can see what we saw at the beginning of the season, they are a legitimate problem here, Brycey. Well, let's find out if all this comes to fruition. At the moment, you can see London just having a little peek over towards B. That's just going to be up top here as well. Gives him a down low. That bomb is about to go down with Nasty. And four players still up for the Ravens. Good spot here for the Ravens now. Where's this retake going to come on through for Ultra? Bans takes his time. It will get traded. But is that going to open the floodgates? <laughs> Gizmo finds two on the outside. And then Zero with the snipe on his insight. And all of a sudden, Kami left. Can't even get up. The rocket is over. Very well played from the London Royal Ravens. One to zero. Had their position for the trade, and I think Bans was even lucky to get that technical, very, very quick first blood because there was a player watching over. I think Gizmo maybe just didn't have the quiet angle to take him down in time as he was slowly but surely creeping his way over towards Nasty. Uh, but yeah, really good setup from the Ravens, and because Ultra didn't challenge, it didn't really allow them a, an opportunity to get back into it, especially once those trades start flying in. The fact that Gizmo won that second gunfight, by the way, was huge. Yeah, yeah, massive. Really well played. Even if he got traded there, it's not a bad scenario for the Ravens, but the find two unprecedented if you're on the side of Ultra, who have now just decided to four man into Palace, so at least three. Of course, inside, you would expect over towards the back with the sniper out. Zero got the better of him in that last round. Oh, Gizmo with the peak as Kleenex just turns his back. Gets away with it, though. Kill's been traded in the middle. All of a sudden, it's a 3v2. Palace control still in favor of Toronto Ultra. Gives him a couple of options. Looks like they're going to take the A option. Clinex throws a very wide shoulder for that one. Fortunately, nobody's there. They're now going to try and get this bomb down. At the moment, they've only lost Bance. Gizmo, though, going to try and get himself in a good position here as well. He could be the key for the London Royal Ravens. Oh, does he know Insight's next door? But, well, I mean, i tell you what. Insight doesn't know he's there. Oh, cool. Okay. Zero is going to go down. But Gizmo's not in a terrible spot yet. He would be oh. expecting Insight towards the back. The awareness is great, but Insight... We'll just pull himself away, and now it's a difficult spot. Inside a slippery fish. He's not one of the best S and D players in the league to throw a wide chat at that point. And great play out of both players. You've got to say Gizmo with the awareness to just snap, ready for the chow. Unfortunately, Insight had his own awareness. It was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going that far out for this one, brother. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for my teammate. It was doable from Gizmo, though. I, I think in that situation, if you can find insight, then find that flag quickly, then it becomes something very, very different. But the fact that he got by as well can sometimes be a little bit more dangerous, can't it? Very well played. Both teams close so far. Of course, a very clean round for Ravens at the start. A little bit better from Ultra in the second. Insight will find the first kill onto Gizmo. Bats gets aggressive. Very well played from Ultra. Should be a round over towards them. Afro now falls as well. And wow, these rounds are not lasting long. They aren't. It looks like uh, Zero said, all right, I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to try and get any streaks unlocked on this map. And uh, one of the things we never really talk about is obviously streaks on certain maps don't mean as much on others. Desert Siege is a very good map for a glide bomb, by the way. Uh, this is wide open. It is a very, very good map. Much less so Berlin. But uh, those are kind of the difference here. So sometimes, yeah, it is very much beneficial. Just get out of the game. Don't worry about it. Do not give streaks away. Afro with a 1.3 KD, specifically on this map. And it's not necessarily a play you would expect to necessarily have that kind of KD when it comes up on this map. But getting inside of Palace is where he really does find a lot of his good positions, finds a lot of his kills at this moment in time, though. Hold over towards the A site, watching the close push. Nasty up top, maybe in the position you would expect Afro, while Bance doesn't expect Nasty. Skill comes their way. Royal Ravens now looking to try and tie this up. That first blood is crucial. It takes away so many options from Ultra. 
and they are just playing very tight at the moment. They are looking for a pick themselves, and Afro's going to get Kleenex down to two versus four, down to a one versus four, and it is Insight. But he hasn't managed to get that first kill, and they are now closing him down. Nasty will get that final one the round. The Ravens get one more on the board, Ton. Nicely done. I love that hold over towards A. Ravens just not giving an inch to Toronto, especially after that first kill comes on through. It makes it a little bit more difficult for the Toronto side. They can't make the push if Ravens are just ready and waiting. And that's typically more of a London style of play. They really do like the slow A push, 73% win rate when they do go for that. Toronto, not necessarily their bread and butter. They usually like to set up on that neutral attacking round, look for the pick and then go from there. 2-2 two -two, though, a various couple of different situations that these teams have come through, a couple of different strats, but Afro will get aggressive inside a palace. Look how neutral Ravens are here. They're still sat back. They've allowed Afro just to go forward, find the kill. Maybe they're waiting for Ultra to make a mistake and try to pick up on it. This is going to be a push on the Bance. Has backup. Insight is here as well. You see the Ravens now swinging into action, looking for it as well. Gizmo's going to go down. Nasty going to try and get that trade, but he's not going to be in the right position for it. There's a snipe battle going on as well. They're fairly certain that was Zero versus Insight on the far side of the map. Oh. He's going to get gunned by Afro. Two versus three. Bantz is going for it as well. He brings it back to a two versus two, just rotating all over the map by himself. Back and forth he goes. He might find another one here as well. Did he see zero? He didn't. Well, it's starting to rain on in, and Bantz just gets out of that one. Inside goes for the challenge. Afro goes for the bomb. While being planted, is Bantz out going to check this absolutely immediately? Yes, he is. There's Afro. It will be zero for the ace as well if he goes for the challenge. Insight nowhere near to help him. It's a 1v1. Well, zero. Time going to be looking for this one as well. Insight going to be a position to look for him as well. This comes down to one gun fight, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He gets him before he can even get off that bomb. And that will just be a very slow defuse. Insight, come on. <laughs> fist bombs first. Fist bomb first. He's just only have a conversation before he gets to the bomb. I've got time. I'll have a quick chat with my teammates. Back in the day, there'll be a couple of shot bodies, a couple of tea bags here and there before the bombs are being defused, of course. And that was, uh, uh, funny if I'm going to say, that was a, a huge play from Bantz. Let, let, yeah, let's was. be honest, right? First pick, runs away, managed to get a trade on the other side of the map, rotates back, somehow gets away from Zero out top, and then runs all the way around to get Afro. Obviously, he probably would have stayed in that corner if he could, but he knew Insight was nowhere near, so he was hoping to get the right timing. But yeah, huge play from Bantz on that round, bringing Ultra into the lead. Can they continue it yet? Another air push coming out from Ultra. London ready and winning in sight. Very, very weak. I'm starting to go down. Afro has just been pressured, as has Gizmo. Kami knows where they are, and he's just trying to pick them, just trying to put them off. Kleenex will find Afro. It's a 4v2. The retake has to come in here for Ravens, and it's such a tough spot. Ultra being absolutely lights out these last few rounds, and Ravens don't have an answer. They're putting so much pressure on the back there to zero, but Nasty's going to get through. He finds one. Zero's been back here forever. About three different Ultra players have tried to shoot him as well, but Nasty now finds a second one. Zero, not a lot of time left. It's going to be played against him, but Nasty finds a third, and it's now just going to be Bads against Zero, and he finds one and not going oh away. My Zero gets God. it eventually. The London Royal Ravens clutch up in unbelievable fashion off the back of Nasty finding three. How on earth has that happened? Byron Plumridge, what are we doing here? I don't know how he's found three. I mean, we didn't get to see any of it, but I, I mean, the, the first ones are on top of Palace and he just kind of finds a peek on a player holding an angle on the bomb. But to find two more with 25 seconds remaining, and those are the kind of rounds that can swing games ever so quickly, I was checked out. I was like, oh, yeah, no ultra round. Continuing off where they left it. They now. knew where zero was. Unreal. A two versus four bomb down, you should never lose. Where really it shouldn't, especially since you do, uh, let's like say, one of those players was trying to play around it. But hey, nasty came to the game. Here's a big hit coming in for the Ravens. They're very, very close at the moment. Eventually backing up, trying to get a little bit of coming through. But there's the ultra nade. So good at that. They're so good at. They're that. so annoying at that. Phoenix <laughs> gets the second one as well. Is there another two v four for the Ravens? Can they do it? Zero trying to get away. Not this time. Gizmo left in one versus four, finds the first, looks for inside towards the bag. Inside's not even really chatting it. 
Eventually, Gizmo runs towards him, and Inside gets the peak. And Ultra go up four to three, but it could have been much, much better for them, Ton. But hey, sometimes you clutch, sometimes you get clutched against. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the caveat you can take if you're a Toronto fan in that situation is at least they are in that position to, well, should be winning rounds. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not, it's not like you're getting blown out of the water, is it? It's a, it's a one of those you should never lose, but at the same time, you are putting yourself in these positions where you should be winning rounds. Every now and then, you do get clutched against. It just happens. Whatever way we string it here, Brycey, there's still four to three up. Raven's just about hanging on by hairs on their chinny-chin-chins at the moment. Anson Co. gets some sort of control over towards Palace Afro. Very, very aggressive. Over towards the right-hand side, towards the train tracks. He's going to be an interesting position for the London side. Finds first blood. Yeah, such a great position as well for that first pick. Makes all of mid-map dangerous for anybody on no ultra. And he's just playing his life now very, very well. Holding an angle, but oh my goodness! Kami guns, but gets gunned in return. Inside gets the trade as well. Two versus two now between these two teams after a flurry of gunfights. And time ticks slowly, as you can see. A little bit of chess coming in. My auto does not shoot that straight, by the way. That was insane from Kami. Inside. No, now he finds Zero on the pick on the outside. Now Zero's stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Has to either decide to stick or twist. Do we get out? Do we risk it? Or do we just hold and make them pay attention to me? Because Nasty is in a good position to do something about it. Zero will find one. Now it's down to Insight in the 1v2. Not going to happen. Ravens back into a big place from Afro over towards the train side. And then just the 2v2 that they close out. This is such a tight game. Just coming down is the tiniest of differences. Just obviously, these teams know each other very, very well. The trades are coming in consistently. And I don't know who walks away with the winner, but whoever does could just be the winner of this series. If it's the London Royal Ravens, I'll be up 2-0 to zero against Ultra. And I know many fans will be singing their praises. Goes into it again, and Kinex is under an awful lot of trouble. That's pressure just pushing him down in Palace. away just staying alive give that up to the ravens you'd rather have everybody up alive and kicking just looking for a pick here london you can see they're not getting too aggressive over towards that a side you can see number five and number seven there will be zero and gizmo not really making too much of a move waiting for ultra maybe to misstep maybe to look for that control that they did have do not have anymore ravens very aggressive over towards this site now still looking for a pick though both teams are kind of playing the same game here bryce yeah, a bit of a backpedal from Ultra to try and stay alive. They've been hoping for a pick themselves, but Ravens, I think they're trying to get aggressive. They're trying go. for one now as Kami goes bouncing past the window. Afro, super weak, Ooh. will find the gunfight. Stays alive, gets away with it. And he hasn't been found by the Ultra member that went to go and find him as well. And now they're going to go into the bomb site. Bomb going down for the London Royal Ravens. Oh, Kleenex was in a good spot to maybe do something from Top Palace there. Jumps down, though. Not aware where the players are. Well, it doesn't seem to matter. Didn't know Afro was there, but he's gone, and we'll see you into the next round. Three versus three. The bomb is down. Can Ultra find the retake? I don't think Pants saw his leg. I don't think he saw his leg. He didn't see it. Zero managed to get one, and Pants is still not going to be able to find this player. Eventually, we'll get down to Nasty as well, and inside's last oh alive. Oh, my God. 5 4 for the Ravens. It's a mixy, mixy game of SD. Patience from the London Royal Ravens paid out in the end. And Ravens struggled on this map yesterday against LAG. Oh, sorry, not Ravens. Ultra struggled against LAG <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Ravens maybe looked at that one and sort of said, right, okay, let, let's see what we can do. Insight was nullified by... <sighs> by Sprout yesterday, but... I don't know, man. I, it's, oh, Spart, I should, my words are mixed up. Bryce, you just take, take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take, you take a little rest, pal, but at the moment... I'll take a breather, eh? Ultra are playing a little bit coy. We are not looking to be aggressive here and give away another first blood to an Afro that's kind of nailed home the last few for the Ravens. And they are hoping, desperately, the Ravens move. Ultra are trying to find something, trying to open up this map. Phoenix looking. CC0 there. Well, Sun's going out towards him. 
Afro moving up once again. This time he's going to be seen as well. And Clinics nice. gets the first blood. Must have got the call out there from Kami. The push then starts to come through. Insight's going to find a pick as well. And round number 11 does beckon unless Zero can pull off this one versus four. The first kill will come on through. Insight will fall. Zero's got to try, hasn't he? This is going to be very, very difficult. Ultra already talking about next round, I think. Oh, he was hoping for that first kill against Kami. Now they know exactly where he is. Shoulders adorned over and over again. You can see every single member of Ultra back and forth. It's a 5-5. Five -five. Here we go, then. Both these teams going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, really, and hasn't necessarily felt like there's been a stronger side in terms of defense or attack, so whatever we get, let's see. Interesting, though, Afro has been consistently aggressive over towards that train side. When he finds that first pick, or when he can get through undetected, Ravens look good in the round. But when Toronto have been able to deal with him... Ravens haven't really had a plan. It's going to have to be an attack over towards A. Seems like Ultra are ready and waiting for it. Oh, I first think Kami's going to try and chow. <laughs> There's the first blood. Clinic looking for Nasty. Nasty stays alive. Just about, but oh. there's been trade back to a three versus three. Inside going to be looking for this one again. Yes, it's a two-piece. Somehow Ravens from the first blood have turned this one around. They have the numbers again. And now... And now they just have to execute. Bant's going all the way for the flank. Uh, this is huge. Oh, and just think if Kleenex had found that kill, none of that would have happened. Ultra would have been in prime position. But still, Raven's playing a little bit passive, a little bit tentative here. Not sure what to do. Haven't got a clue on where Ultra are. Ultra in awkward positions yet. Especially Bant. He's in a crazy spot at the moment. And I don't know if Ravens are going to be ready for him, whichever way this goes. Well, they probably have no idea where he is. It's probably the calm still under more Ravens are calling out as well. But Bans is going to find one, go. but it's not going to work. Bombs down today. Nasty goes down. Two versus two. They're still concentrating on the flank, and Bans has actually just re-wrapped back round to his own spawn. You can already see Zero is keeping an eye on it. 30 seconds remaining. It's going to be about the flank from Bance. Kami's probably going to try and stay alive as long as he possibly can here. Wait for the push, try and find a pick, and work with Bance, who's on the flank, but he has to go fast. Doing for it, he's going to see zero as well. He does. He eventually gets it down. Now it's for the pinch as well, but Gizmo wins his gunfight. It's 15 seconds. Yes. Bance has to go, and he's going to fight Gizmo, but he's not going to be able to get the kill. Gizmo's just going to run. Surely he's not going to put anything out there for as well. And London Royal Ravens, that's all <laughs> done and dusted. They win the round. Gizmo gets three, but it's the gets two piece four. that seals the deal. Two to zero now to the London Royal Ravens. That's the ace for Gizmo in round number 11. What a way to put yourself back into the scene. A round 11 ace out of Gizmo. My goodness me. <laughs> what a game. And honestly, Bryce, I was coming into this series and I'm just like, I'll try to get away. There was no question in my mind. But Ravens, the first two maps, yeah, okay, we looked at them. We looked at the videos. We, we were trying to understand some of the statistics. We knew that the first two maps, they were potentials for Ravens. I really didn't expect them to go win both. What a yeah. close game that was. 10 and 7 out of Gizmo. Th th those first two kills were the what basically won it. Those last two, not inconsequential, but just kind of put a bow on it. But if oh, first Cle from Ultra it, as well. If Kleenex finds that first kill there, Bryce. Oh, that second kill, I should say. Which Gizmo then went to be able to trade. Had he went down, but the player survived. Gizmo finds the kill. And then the second. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very wild round, and that sometimes can just be Call of Duty time. Little bit of game of inches and missed opportunities. But tell you what's not a missed opportunity. Math 3 is coming up in this already great game. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you right after this.
Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew. And Zenny. Armor your eyes with blocks gaming glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com slash CDL. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. It has been a great series so far. Tan, uh, throws and spills all the way through. Yeah, it's it's been interesting and not really the way that everyone was expecting. Of course, Ultra had a bit of a shaky series yesterday, and that's kind of continued. It's another game they would be expecting to win, you would say, based on what we've seen from them at their home major. Well, was it that home crowd advantage that really brought back uh, Cold War era kind of Ultra? Because so far, they, they really haven't looked up to the pace that we had seen them in. Especially when it comes to Hardpoint and Search and Destroy, which was two of their best modes. Lose around 11, lose map number one fairly comfortably as well. I don't know, we're heading into a control that again they probably should win but i thought they probably should have won the last two maps so <laughs> who knows spicy london seem to be back <laughs> they do seem to be back and speaking of back leads us nicely into our scuff play of the game it's going to be gizmo it's going to be round 11 and it's going to be the ace over and over again somehow winning these gunfights he thought inside should have had it just not going to be it and even the last kill went towards gizmo as well ton yeah, finds the third over towards the bomb site, and then this one is just inconsequential, really. As soon as Pants doesn't oh, kill him health. there, yeah, and gets away, that that's the round. Just has to survive. Easy done. And he's always going to be looking for the kill, irrelevant of how much time is left on the bomb. Fantastic stuff from Gizmo. I think the first, I said the first two is what does it. It is really what does it. Oh, I didn't realize Insight had a very, very poor reaction to the end of that. Yeah, I, it looked, it, it kill cam looked a strange one. Yeah, very, very not happy. Gizmo, that is one of the most interesting cams we've ever seen. <laughs> he is relaxed. He He's is chilled. laid out. He's chill. That is a meme in and of itself. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing? You good? You, you, you good over here? His head got him though, can't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I, I mean, look, the, the, the team do look reinvigorated, though. It has to be said. I mean, him finding those kind of picks, the, those are the kind of plays we've seen from him over and over again at the beginning of the season. He, he was this guy who was carrying the team, but he was that guy who was finding the moments over and over again. But now we head into a control, which is a bit of an interesting one for me. London are one and four on this map, but have not played it with Gizmo in their side. And I just, want to, point, the I, I just want to point something out as well about the last map, actually, before we went there. With Harry, they were zero and three. With Gizmo, they were four and two. They're now five and zero on Desert Siege with Gizmo. They lost all three when they didn't have it. They haven't played this map without with him. They're one and four. Who knows? Maybe maybe it's the Gizmo effect, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> it does kind of throw all of our stats around a little bit, but. We were questioning whether or not this team will be back on form. At the moment, it does seem to be so, but we go into the Berlin control. And London Royal Ravens will want to bury this right here and right now. A big, big push from them to kick things off. It's going to be an initial B hit coming on through. Never a bad thing to get yourself get your teeth into. Give yourself that extra time. Ultra, going to go for the peak. Bounce does not choose the right way. Play next. Can he find anything here? London just taking their time. Ultra not going to overcommit to this. May just try and find a couple of kills on the exit, but nothing too crazy. Oh, well, actually just completely wiped them out. B now back under control for Ultra. Two ticks in towards it, though, for the Ravens. Yeah, it's also what is really interesting on this map because you've got to be careful, obviously. Put the pressure on, put the squeeze on, make sure you get it. But if you open up ticket in the wrong way, you can find yourself in the wrong position, and that may be what happens to Ultra. They've got to try and get a little bit of control back. Zero's already going to be in here at the same time. Inside throwing bullets at him. There are a few players through. Bans going to get that nade down, and Cami comes to try and shut it down. Fortunately, Ultra managed to get back in position. But not fully. They aren't winning all the gunfights they wanted to try and clean this out. This one's actually found a way into the site as well. Just about staying alive, but he doesn't have any help. The rest of the team now fall as well. It's back to square one for the Ravens. Plenty of time here. The Ultra do play this so well. So aggressive over towards the train side. And that's why London are over here trying to battle for it. They win a couple of battles there as well. Bansen Co going to drop back. Making sure not to give anything up over towards this A side. But the cavalry will be back. Reinforcements will be there. By the time the Ravens do get some sort of purchase. 20 lives remaining. Peace here. Ravens not in a terrible spot. These next couple of kills are big. 
This is dangerous now. Very, very dangerous for Ultra. London to try and put the squeeze on. You see already Afro just coming through. Gets another kill. Looking for another one. The inside stays alive, but so does him eventually. Bans does find two on the flank. Afro left alone on six health. Ultra desperately trying to clean out Ticket. Try and push the Ravens back as far as possible. But they are holding on. Nasty gets a kill. Afro gets another one as well. Stay. Surely he can't win this one. Kleenex comes through with a two-piece they desperately need. A second to breathe for Ultra. Yeah, Kleenex needed to find those kills there. If he falls, all of a sudden Afro's in the point. The reinforcements are here for the Ravens. This is not being clean from Ultra at all. Ravens have really been inside of it the whole entire time. And all of a sudden it's Kami left all on his own. Gizmo challenges, Gizmo kills him. And Raven's now inside the point, the pressure's on. That's done. That is done. There is too many London oh, players game. here. They are all going to be in this point, and that will go to the London Royal Ravens, because there's just no way Ultra can clean out all these players in time and get there. And even with the kills a little bit towards them at the end, it wasn't going to matter. Too far away, not enough time. London Royal Ravens open up proceedings, and they take that first round of control. Taking the attack, which is crucial, of course, when it does come down to Berlin. It is not necessarily... Well, of course, you would always favour the defence, but attack is very winnable. But Ultra are first in round win percentage when it comes down to Berlin control. Arguably makes them the best team on the game of it. Statistically, at least, anyway. Welcome Ravens, to, I, to the CDL, I, I, where the stats don't well, matter and they're all made yeah, up. Yeah, well, yeah, no, we do all this research <laughs> before the game and usually it doesn't matter. Uh, looks like Ultra got a very similar tactic. Almost identical to the way the London Royal Ravens set up here. Get B done and dusted, get a few kills going through. Insert maybe the catalyst though. You can already probably see Ultra be very, very aggressive towards this one as well, and it's not gonna be a snap. Gonna run straight into this one as well and wins okay. the gunfight. Inside just gets obliterated. I think it was Bance actually. Nasty finds insight as well. London trying to get this one back doing their best just to try and lock this one in but this will be for seven for gizmo there you go there's the glide bomb and what what a comeback series this has been for him seven and three looking to continue a kami with a good gunfight win though and that should be b over towards the side of ultra a little bit of time wasted if you're the little royal ravens you're happy with that afro over extending over towards the trains be a thorn in the side of ultra if the push does come from that side but we'll force the spawns over towards docks it will have to be a fire push for ultra and london should be ready and waiting for this well, I'll tell you something. Let's find out how Toronto are doing down in this series with the Toronto Ultra. Listen in. A slow play for it. Long window. And go One's top three Nassie's here. on point. Nassie's on point. Right. I try and get like a pit, uh, pick pick for you. Nothing's pit, nothing's pit, Ben. Wait, you got an aid, Cam? Wait, one, one's long. Long long window on me. Long Daniel window, Joy. Joy, we can long. Joy, show me long. Joy, show me long one shot. And one secret stairs. That don't secret stairs, secret stairs. I want secret stairs. Secret stairs. Already on you, Ben. We can point. Wait, one shot on point. We can point. He's on the out door, out door. We could, we could wrap that and kill this guy. Yeah, I've got a very nice one. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spawn, yeah, spawn. Yeah, yeah, take a step, take a step. Nice, good shit. Wait, one shot on the office. Close office. I'm pushed out. I think he's pushed out secret. Like close. He's pushed out secret. He's pushed out secret. Come in secret. Secret and long. Long, 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 long. Some point. That's nasty on point. I already wrapped out of it, by the way. I didn't see him cross the green box. We should be P1 window. I'm weak. We can go both here. Yeah, yeah. I'll be on the right, boys, yeah. Out of absolute. Free. We're playing close right now. That's in top three. We need to try and play for Star secret door. shit. Yeah, 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 one's yeah. I'm dead, man. Where, where, where? I'll kill him, I'll kill him, man. Right side, when you weak, Joy, pushing on the right, Ben. I'm cutting secret, Ben. Yeah, cutting secret. Oh, the fuck, we got the Weak, weak, weak. Let's go. Stun the cross. Already cross, already cross. Yeah, one shot, one shot. Nasty really, nasty dead. Nasty dead. Big core right in. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting aided. Yeah, in core, in core, Afro. Already close to me, Joey, and Afro's stunned their side point. In office. Is he in office? Office, kill me. I'm gonna pit. The office, dead office. Nice, get there right now. One more, one more. Pit, 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 help him pit. Nice, nice, nice. Pit. I can get you pit. My pinch secret though, Afro's stunned their side point. Ultra comms cool as always. Very, very slow and relaxed, but the pressure is cooking. Only 20 seconds left to get the first couple of kills on this one. Get the third at the same time. Could this be the collapse as well? Only Gizmo left alive. They are going to get him. It's the final seconds for Ultra from Cool Karma collected to an absolute explosion on the map ton. And look at the Ravens. They don't have many lives remaining, but they're irrelevant of that. They need to get going. That second tick's about to come in, but it's such a push. You need to find some gunfights from the far back, but it's been all about Kami as we trade attacking rounds between these two in the first two. 
Ultra was slow and steady. They were just trying to pick their way through the map because Ravens were set up quite high. I think it's Kami who initially finds those three kills. One of them looked like a turn on in the middle of the map. I think everybody would have heard the uh, fruitful language from himself after he turned on Afro in mid map. I, and I'll then be the, you, I the push wanna... comes after that. that. That was the thing. He finds those kills, which wipes out London in the middle, and then they can push up and start putting that pressure on. Yeah, I, I've got to talk about the ultra comms a little bit more while we kind of get this rolling here in towards B, but just <laughs> honestly, it just sounds like they're going out to pick up the milk. It's so insane because obviously most comms are just blitz fast to go through, but ultra obviously have always had that kind of mentality to keep their energy levels reasonable until they need it. And it just makes the comms sound so weird to, to those who've obviously listened to COD comms for years. That was a big round for them, right, though, because, I mean, you, you're 2-0 down. You lose the first attack on a control. It, it, it can spiral very, very quickly. If London holds that defense, then all of a sudden they've got a, a guaranteed other defense to maybe try and close out the series. So the fact that Ultra Answer back is very, very important, but what they need to do is actually hold this side as well. Zero perfectly positioned. I love that from him. His team ball pushing that side. He's ready and waiting for the overextension that comes in from Ultra. And now Ravens have purchased over towards Ticket and immediately Ultra are in trouble. Oh, oh the timing. Cammy was pre-aiming back, says the entire time and eventually just turned. It's like Winter Gunfight, and Ultra are going to be here as well. Bans managed to get him at the same time, and Nasty trying to stay alive wow, eventually. Bans with a two-piece. Gets him down, only Afro left alive, and he backpedals. Phenomenal, phenomenal retake. I think it's Bans who finds two. Really well played from Ultra after what was a scary, scary moment. Yeah, Zero played not that so well. Yeah, Bans has not been having a good control at the moment here. Fortunately, the slaying on Kami has kind of made up for it. That's always the trouble with Ultra. Always kind of like one of their players maybe not having the greatest time away and picked up by the rest of them. Yeah, it, it hasn't been Bans this year though, really has it? I mean, he's, he's been stand out. I, I, well, maybe not stand out, but just consistently decent all the way through the air for this squad. 9 and 19 from him is regular. It has to be said. London now trying to put a bit of pressure on. There you go. Tickets is cleared out. Here comes the push. A minute remaining. A full life advantage. They're inside of it. Ultra need a big retick here. That's a big kill from Kami. Here come the rest of London, but here come the rest of Ultra as well. Oh my goodness me, Gizmo gets spat on and Ultra force it out. It just looked like Ravens had immediate control there and Ultra say no, they're trading four men down back in fourth price. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the way that Ultra keep playing that as well. They, they love their grenades. Their grenades always hit before Ultra, but the explosion before the storm. And, and now this settles down a little bit, but the lives are close. The Ravens still have the opportunity if they can make a big couple of kills. Thick still going to try and hold down Ticket, but pressure is on him here to try and stall anything that comes from the Ravens. Seems like they have stalled it successfully. One final push to come out from the London side. Bait and switch starting to come in, and Sight goes for the challenge, finds the gunfight as well. Just has to back on down, Bance and Court are there, Bance finds two kills, and we talk about them not necessarily having the best of games, but... That might be the final couple of kills to close this round out. Gizmo is going to get no further. Six seconds to go. Zero's going to sprint towards this window. There's going to be a player waiting for him. Surely he doesn't get in in time. He does get in in time. Oh, doesn't get away. Does not get away. Why do these rounds always feel so tight? That's Berlin, mate. It's, it's crazy. I think some people kind of look at it and sort of say, oh, it's... It's so back and forth. It's hard to really ascertain who's going to win it, but I absolutely love it. I, from the word go, every single time I've casted this map, there is at least one stupid round. It's ridiculous what, what goes on on this map. But three tick advantage for the Ravens. Of course, they have their defensive hold there now as well. So can Ultra at least get a capture over towards B? You would expect so. That advantage will be gone, and then it ultimately comes down if they can find anything over towards A. the entire way through. I'm just trying to get this first to try and stop it down as well, but Nasty and Zero combining. Entire's in tower alone. While well, nobody is connecting here for the Ravens. They don't need to. They have map control. Just like point out, Gizmo still has a hold of that glide bomb. We, we spoke about it earlier in the series operation. When it does come down to Berlin, it's not necessarily the best, but never a bad thing to have. So keep an eye on that as we do inevitably continue on through this game. Ultra will try and close this one out within the fall. Progress over towards A though, so if they do get a hold of B, they are staring at a guaranteed defense, but are we even going to get that? Ultra with a good spot here. 
And Ultra will have the advantage here for just a few seconds. That outside kill gonna come in. No, Bands huge. Manages to pick it up for Kami. Looking for Afro there on the window, but Afro wins a huge gunfight as well. Bands gets back in to hold this one down. Two ticks already over towards them. Ultra oh, wow. not ready to give this one up. Afro still alive. Ultra still got bodies here at the same time. Kami gets another kill towards the back, but it is gonna be the Ravens who hold this. They've given away two ticks. Kami is just, just ridiculous today. I mean, literally, he is looking at people and they die. 29 and 18 out of him right now. I still have no idea who's going to win this. Genuinely so back and forth between these two teams. Afro again. Managing to stall Ultra. Like looking for the plan. Oh, the door! And he gets a little bit of movement against him. Fortunately, reinforcements is there. And B is going to be locked in by Ultra. The lives are We're all dead. tied up once again, but with one tick, the Ravens cannot afford to blink. Yeah, Gizmo has to invest this. Has to slow them down, doesn't find anything. It's not very easy to use it when it comes to Berlin. And now Ultra are stacked already. Zero needs to find this kill and does so. Afro gets taken down. Nasty just trying to watch the flank as well, but everybody from Ultra pushing through the front door. London just about holding on so far. That's oh, big. Just about, yeah. Huge wipe coming through. Still going to be a minute 18 left on the clock here. The issue for Ultra is it's going to be a hard push for them to try and find these kills in sufficient numbers to not only go down in lives, but also to try and make sure they can get a push going before this time runs out. Gizmo's in a great position out to ticket now. And you may have seen it on the side of your screen, but Ultra confirmed defense. If we do go to a round number five, which is looking more likely as time does tick down. The Toronto side slow push through fire because the fact that that was contested for so long they have so much time there might many, not be many lives but time is definitely on their side 40 seconds to formulate some sort of push to get a hold of that one final tick oh cammy finds one towards the back fortunately london have got life to spare trying to find zero as well but zero is more than equal to it kleenex finds another one goes down for the trade 26 seconds left remaining this does mean ultra have to move ah. kleenex all goes for the pick ultra do have to move Let's see, can they find something through the front door with 15 seconds remaining? They still do have defense when it comes down to round number five, so they will not be too worried about that. You've got to give it everything, though. You'd rather close it out and fall. Kleenex, really the only one who can make a push. Afro gets dealt with. They're inside. They are inside. They're inside. They the kill. There's well, and it's just one left. It's just one left. Somehow, Ultra, the slow moving is unbelievable. There is an old saying that smooth, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And has that ever applied to a team more than Ultra? They look like they're doing nothing, but always manage to find the kills and click. It is so interesting to see the different styles of these two teams. Ultra like a glacier, inevitable moving slow and a firestorm from the London Royal Ravens. But all the way through that control turn, no idea who was gonna win it. These teams are gonna give me a heart attack. That's Ravens just seemingly in a good spot. And I mean, you can't afford to lose three or four gunfights at that scenario. Zero left all on his own, not in a terrible spot, but the rest of his team get gunned inside the site. And, and that's what happens. What a game out of Kami, by the way. I mean, every yeah. single time we've seen him either on the opposite end of a gunfight or from his POV, a hell of a game. Not of him at 4,100 damage, 27 untraded kills. And was a big catalyst for the side of Toronto Ultra. And how they got my job done. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's like, take it back to that comms, right? And this, this is why I, I laugh at this team, because obviously incredibly talented the entire way through. But like, just no time left. And they just seem incredibly casual about it. Obviously, adrenaline is probably coursing through their veins like fire. But it just seems like they just don't, like freeze up they don't they don't worry about it they're not sitting there going oh we've got to just sprint through kleenex was a great example on that last push he was checking the angles over and over again because that time was just ticking over and over and the pressure in that scenario is unbelievable and yet he still checked every corner and when he eventually went for the chow he picked it right because of the time he took to make sure he figured out where those players were I mean, it always helps when Kami is the unkillable demon king. It was yeah. like fake as circa 2013 out there. That was ridiculous. I mean, every single gunfight we've seen, he just, he could not be gunned. Sometimes players just have those kind of maps and Kami, well, we haven't seen too much of it up until the, this past month, really, from him when it comes down to Vanguard. But when he brings this kind of form, Ultra become 
a bit of a problem for absolutely everybody. And London Royal Ravens, this is not done for them yet. They may well have had a 2-0 lead. That has now been halved as we head into a Berlin Hall Point Tuscan search and destroy. And honestly, I, I thought to myself, Berlin and Tuscan, for me, when I look at the statistics, they absolutely lean towards the side of Ultra as well. Ravens could have done with a 3-0 there because these next two maps do not suit them when it does come down to the statistics. I'll tell you something though, the London Royal Ravens have looked very good in this series. Their slaying has been on point. We saw a huge map out of zero, map one. Gizmo, obviously, bit of a highlight reel on map number two. Cami on map number three. Who's going off on map number four, Tun? Good question. I have, it, honestly, it, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> I, I mean, looking towards London, it, it, zero was fantastic, map number one. Gizmo has definitely had a fantastic start to his uh, resurgence, if you like, though. And that will be positive for the side of London Royal Ravens. Some takeaways they can find from this are relevant of what happens. They look disappointed with that map, though. Especially when in map, uh, round number one and then three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back rounds for Ultra. It's got to sting. It really has to sting. Nasty looks like he's about a person in the tears, to be honest with you, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I'm not going to comment on that. What I am going to talk about is Gizmo uh, and some of the statistics we've, we've kind of seen from him so far. Obviously, we did come into this uh, talking about him being maybe the catalyst for a resurgent Royal Ravens. KD, 1.05, 13th currently in the CDL. Uh, some pretty good stats along the way here for this one, of course. And um, for me, I think a lot of the teams or a lot of the fans of this team, I should say, are excited to see if he can kind of right this ship. Yeah, and, and I mean, as as mentioned multiple times, beginning of this season, the guy was an absolute phenom. We expected big things from him coming in, but I, I don't think we all expected him to look as strong as he did. I, I've said it before, I, I really thought that Nasty was going to be that guy for the London Royal Ravens, but it really was Gizmo at the top end of the season. Afro then, of course, sort of a little bit more comfortably into that SMG role as well, and the team as a whole gelled. And it felt like they peaked very, very early. It, it was kind of annoying to see how well they were doing and then just the fall off a cliff. But ever since, well, Gizmo was back in this just one series, things have been looking pretty good. The 1.27 for Kami, another player who's having his own little resurgence. If he, if he can continue that, as said, Ultra become a different beast entirely. Well, <laughs> the other side of it, though. Zero dropping 1.43. Obviously, that incredible play in the very first half point we saw and the Ravens will want him to do it again. We move on to Berlin. And uh, Tan, obviously, statistics, sometimes it means a lot, sometimes it doesn't. But we were chatting quite considerably, saying that we don't know if these last two maps really are the best ones for the Ravens. But That's with Gizmo why. return, I suppose anything is possible. Yeah, six-game win streak here for Ultra. But, I mean, it has to be said, when it does come down to the first map, they want a four-game win streak there, they lose it. So you never know. You never know. The number one team of breaking hills on this map is the London Royal Ravens going up against a team who have won it six times in a row. And it sets it up for a nice game, Brycey, I believe. That's inside though, coming under an awful lot of pressure and somehow wins that gunfight. That pillar saved his life in a huge way forward. And Gizmo now spraying him down as well. 20 seconds left on this one. The Ravens going for one last roll of the dice before they hit this rotation. And it's going to be Ultra who stack it. It was difficult though, Ultra spawning on the well, beneficiary side, if you like, for the spawns. They're the first ones who get over towards that P1. It's always the more preferable side when you are trying to defend that. But ultimately, it does mean that the Ravens will have this rotation over towards P2, but a 46 point deficit to deal with as well. Ravens set up, ready and waiting. Can they deal with Ultra, who are pushing on through its kills traded? Two for two on both teams, zero. Well, that's a back though. Bans, Kami, both fall. Well played from zero. Big kills from him, three in a row. Yeah, this is already shaping up to be a big hold by the London Royal Ravens. They have map position. Clinics just managed to get out towards Ticket. Nasty, though, in a great position himself towards Fire. Looking for him. Managed to find two. Already cutting the numbers down of Ultra. Afro will be reinforcing his teammate Zero here in this one, but he doesn't really need to. Gizmo and Zero getting this locked in as well. It was always a hard push for Ultra. And the key now is do Ultra get their own rotation in? Always a hard push for Ultra, against, especially up against the London Royal Ravens, the best team when it comes down to P2 on Berlin. Richard plus 13 points on it, a 92% hold rate. And, well, I mean, we've got an example of it there. 
46 points down by the time we headed over there. And all of a sudden, well, there are going to be about, what, seven or eight points in the lead. Fantastic hold over towards P2, but when it does come down to it, Ultra in this spot, P3, so important. One of the biggest money hills on the maps. Shout out Afro for that quote. He's going to have to be one of the guys who try and break this. Is Ultra holding this well so far? Phoenix actually diving out towards Phoenix. Zero. Tank and eventually finds nobody. Zero finds another one now, and the pressure coming through. Insight somehow still alive, but the pressure mounting again. Eventually, Afro will take him down. And Ravens now can look to lock down the lion's share of this time if they can hold the ultra push they know is coming. Best Berlin P2 team on the game. Best breaking team on the game when it does come down to Berlin. They hold on to it as well, London Royal Ravens. And Zero again. It, it, what is he have for breakfast this morning? 12 and 3 on this so far. Vengeance. An absolute stupendous <laughs> game one. <laughs> Vengeance. What, what's the record against Bants at the moment? Oh, that's on the, the thing is, it's on land, and I think it's 10 and 1. Uh, or it's, it's, it's close. It's around that number. I'll have to get the stat book out again, but it is definitely in favor of Zero. But we'll see how this one goes. Obviously, it doesn't go towards that land record, but it's always a great rivalry in the meantime. Right now, though, Ultra have control of Train Hill. Famously, a hill that's always a little bit difficult to hold if it gets a bit mixy. And you can see the Ravens trying to get in the right position for it. Doesn't want to maybe overwork this one, Zero. The rest of the team up. Finding some good kills, though. So we can maybe take his time for these streaks. A smash stunt. There we go. So we'll find a couple over towards the back, though, and that will lock things down. The call-out comes. There's Kami. Now, all of a sudden, one kill off a of glide, which can't be influential when it does come down to hard point. It's probably the most beneficial mode to have it in. Kalinax is going to be there, though. Zero will get taken down. The end of that streak comes, and Ultra get a really decent hold here, Brycey. Majority of the time going their way, and oh, Ravens just couldn't find a breakthrough. They can't. Kami have to backpedal just a little bit for the chow. He's now he's coming eventually. Just reads him like a book. Bans gets another one to Gizmo. Nasty has been seen, but it's going to win the gunfight regardless. And this is where it comes down to a very, very tight game. P5 will not be taken until a team feels comfortable to jump on board. If you are ultra, getting the time is great, but they want to flip this for P1. Oh, I mean, you're going to struggle to flip it when the only member left alive momentarily is going to be in sight. Does find two, though. Good job. Alive and kicking, being a nuisance. Finds those two kills, allows the rest of his team just not to have too much pressure on the water. Gunfight win, that is from Afro, though. All of a sudden, Ultra gonna have to find a way through trains. The coming may well be the spear hey, to do it. What on earth is that gunfight? We're getting an absolute smoke show today. Nobody's missing a bullet. This is where it gets very, very interesting. At the moment, the Ravens have done enough. They have held off. Ultra getting too many points on the P5. And Bantz trying to get the root man. Trying to figure out if he can get his team to a good position for P1. We know that can be a money hill over and over again. Now he's going to hit secret. Going to look for zero, but zero has figured it out as well. We'll be trading out at the same time. Click's going to go through, but it's going to be Gizmo pushing out towards Ticket. And the Ravens looking to hammer this one home. This is a dangerous position because Gizmo will try and just farm them here at the same time. And Nasty's holding the angle they need at the same time. And I will say this, the London Royal Ravens have now bedded themselves in. Oh, keep an eye on Bance, though. He could be the catalyst for the Ultra side, finding a way through. He finds one kill towards the back, and all of a sudden, Ravens, you need to find a couple in sight. Will be the last one there for Ultra, as Gizmo is there for the Ravens. But Ultra find a way through. They can contest this. This is a win for them. They're not just contesting it. They're finding points. Ravens trying to find a route back in. But once you're inside for the side of Ultra, is it going to be locked down? Nasty finding two. Back and forth we go. It's absolute chaos inside of the point. And it's Kami who comes out on top. It's Ultra after not having the rotation, after not having the spawns, who are the beneficiary from P1. As we head back over towards the favor for London, over towards P2, can they hold it as well as they did last time? Can we have a map that's not incredibly tight at any point during this series? No, oh, shut up, we don't want that. <laughs> it's just constant, because it's looking like the Ravens are going to be in a position to try and take the lead here again as they've moved towards P2. Ultra going to try and collapse onto this. Eventually, you can see they've got players now in the area. Kleenex opens up the proceedings. There will be Ultra eventually get into it, but they haven't cleared the stairs. They have not cleaned all the Ravens out yet. And eventually, that'll be the last player, but Gizmo gets one, and Kami will trade him out. Ultra have an opportunity now to grab this time if they get set up in. That'll be a good chunk of the lead as well, heading over towards what will be potentially a money hill for the Ravens if they can keep a hold of these spawns. Ultra. This is crucial time for them, it feels. 
will put them in a decent little spot, but as mentioned, that rotation, not in their favor, and neither is the point now, as Ravens will find a way through. 15 seconds remaining, and Ultra may well just overextend through train, but no, they're actually going to fight for the scrap time. Well, I'm going to say this because they haven't had a lot of chance, like opportunity to really get towards P3, and that's what they wanted all of that time, to try to give them a cushion. Look how far away Ultra are now. This map is all Ravens. Ultra basically have to do a bit of a marathon before they even get into a gunfight. Zero's on a 5-3 as well. Afro cleaning out fire, looking for oh the second kill. <laughs> this is difficult. Ultra don't even know what the inside of P3 looks like this time around. Yeah, they haven't had a sniff so far, have they? But Zero does get shut down off what was a 5 spree. So that's important for the side of Ultra. Every time we seem to go on board with Zero, it's 4-5 kills in a row. Afro just being a nuisance, side door fire. You have to keep an eye on it if you're the attacking team as well as trying to formulate some sort of attack to try and break through into the hail, which has been held so far by the Lunar Royal Ravens quite flawlessly. 15 seconds remaining here, and Ultra had a good hold over towards P4 last time. Can they do it again? As I said, it's typically not the hill where you find a lot of the success, but Ultra did so last time around. We'll have to see a repeat if they want to take the lead once more. Well, zero step will this Will this be the difference? Ants will be able to get into this hill, but they do not know Zero is here, and Zero gets the first kill as well. Gizmo gets another. The Raven's not going to give them the opportunity to try and get all these points back again here, and Cami looks for Zero, and Zero stays alive. Nasty picks up two, and they're not even giving the time turn. They don't need to. They just need to keep punishing Ultra, and Nasty is pushing them further and further back. Now for Ultra, for them. You've lost control of the point, but what you can gain is spawns heading over towards P1. That's why you've seen them wrap around fire. Look. Probably want to try and clear our train station. There you go. Spawns over towards fire. So Ultra, any points here is a bonus. Nasty, Nasty will find two, though. He's had a hell of a hill over towards this side. Spawns are there, though, for the side of Ultra when we do start moving back over towards P1, if they can hold it through P5 as well. But Ravens are getting the time. Of course, they have broke 200. But look at Ultra to try and keep a hold of the side of the spawn that they have, but they cannot allow Ravens to get too many points here over towards P5. Now, this is difficult. They have to fight for P5 and then get all the way over towards P1. And they aren't winning the gunfights. Positioning is great. Kills may be a little bit better in this scenario. Afro is going to be allowed to slip the net as well as he goes in towards P1. And this is the disaster scenario. Ultra have to push. They have to put the pressure on a P5. That's big. Hammy manages to find two as well, but Zero is going to be towards ticket. And he's just trying a gun. It's not going to work, but the spawns have flipped on. Oh, that's disastrous for the side of Ultra. They were focusing so hard and keeping a hold of them. It was actually leaking time to Ravens, and then Ravens flipped them. And now Ultra needs to try and find some time to put themselves in a better spot, but it's three dead. Ravens might do this, Bryce. They're looking for it. Clearing managed to find one as well, but now Ravens have the opportunity to keep jumping. They're just going to keep jumping on this over and over again, knowing they can bleed this time out step by step. And Ultra have right, to come and seconds. chow them. Ants has managed to get on the point. He's going to fly out as well because he knows they have to get through. This isn't even really about P5 anymore. It's flying towards P1, but now they go down. Kami, can he be the hero that Ultra need? Otherwise, this series is done. There are three players in here already. He finds one. He looks for the second. It's not good enough. The Ravens are not close. That game is done and dusted. And the London Royal Ravens cause an upset. And they take it and they get the 10 points. And it's already feeling like a different story. Give me a Joey Gizmo interview right now. <laughs> the man comes back and they beat Ultra in the Battle of EU. A 3-1 to one victory as well. And on, honestly, if I was to say a route for London to win that series, it, I, I felt like it had to be 3-0. to zero. The last two maps really just didn't favor them. And while we don't even get to see the great zero equalizer again. of that final search and destroy, but zero again, as you say. 32 and 16. We, we were hearing reports of Ravens sucking in scrims this week. <laughs> well, that Apparently was the question. <laughs> Apparently, they just fell into old ways. The last two, three months doesn't really matter. It's all the way back to Major 1 again, but yeah, just doing the business. And they found it when they needed it. Some huge holds, some big plays. And they have a little bit of an upset against Ultra. It does beg the question now. With Ravens grabbing those 10 points, feeling a little bit more secure than they would have been before this game. Yeah, it puts them in a little bit of a better spot, has to be said. Of course, we will be keeping an eye on their position on the leaderboard. Everybody around that sort of area is still in trouble, even after their fantastic start to the season. Ravens still have to be careful, but what a way to start off stage four. 
And honestly, I, I just felt like Raymond's going to be a team who are lost at sea. Would it have been too much of a quick step up for Gizmo to come back in? I, I want to say he didn't have a phenomenal series, but some of the moments that win them the game are irrelevant of what happened from Insight's POV when it does come down to that second kill in that final round. Gizmo still played it well, finding the ace to solidify it. As I said, the stats might not back up what was inevitably a decent performance from him, but those moments are what make the difference. And how many times can you count on your hash that he would find two pieces that you just wouldn't expect, especially in the first two maps, Bryce? I, I mean, for me, a really good performance from him, but I mean, Zero could not be stopped today either. Nasty had a great map number four as well. Ravens will be very much reinvigorated after that one. It's a big win for them. We'll give them tremendous confidence heading into the rest of the stage four qualifiers, but that is a very, very big win. Yeah, that is huge for them, and it does mean maybe a reevaluation of how we look at the London Royal Ravens moving forward, and potentially also how we look at Ultra. But it's good news for the London Royal Ravens and their fans. Gizmo has returned, the rust has been shaken free, and potentially a bit of a change in the CDL. I've got to say this, with how tight the bubble is, one of the things you don't want to see is any of the other teams, is another team you thought were done and dusted, coming back to life. It's horrible, because you know you've got to win all the more games now to try and solidify that spot. Yeah, I, one thing I'm absolutely furious about this, though, is Chance. Chance is right. He, we were speaking about this in the green room before. He's like, there can only be one good EU team at any time. <laughs> he's so toxic. Oh, honestly, I hate it when he's right as well, which is quite often uh, every yeah. single time, unfortunately. Yeah. It doesn't. And obviously, obviously, Chance hates Bant, so it doesn't matter anyway. We're going to hand this one over for analysis <laughs> to our desk. Uh, thank you so much, Bryce and Tan. And by the way, Bryce made a really big point, right? When we talk about the bubble and the points and mm -hmm. the race to go to champs, you really can't sleep on anybody because I'm going to say it right now, nobody out there probably expected London to pop off the way that they didn't have the wins that they did, but shout out to them. And by the way, Nameless, that guy, Zero, took over in hardpoint. Nothing was stopping him. Man, they look so much better in this series. I yeah. mean, early on in that first hardpoint, they were breaking a lot of hills. We saw that big break on P3 where Zero was mid-stairs. He got four kills to get them that position. They get all that time there. And they just have a good map throughout the rest. The P5 setup that we saw at the very end, it was clinical. They were pushing out yeah. each lane. They spawned them out to church, slayed them out once again. I mean... This is a London team that was in shambles. Gizmo comes back, and it's like plug and play. They're back to where they were at stage one, at least in this series. And then on that game four, another perfect hard point. Like, we yeah. saw zero on that last rotation go all the way around back trains. After they just held P3, Toronto lets him get through. Like, these yeah. are things Toronto was picking up on versus other teams. But London, man, just masterclass today. It was big time. Before we jump into the interview, Ali, anything you want to say? I mean, it, it feels good. It's like a throwback to London now, right? It felt nice because, like, I was sitting in the green room and I was like, you know, if this is the London that we're going to continue to get, they're, you know, back to being, like, a top six, top four conversation team. So hopefully that consistency stays there because each player did what we expect out of them and it, they all did it at the same time and it worked out. It was zero absolutely frying. It was nasty popping off. Ness and D was Afro early on rotation, just playing in a corner, getting that free pick to, you know, get in their enemy's head, being like, all right, well, now we have to search for this player, which allowed players like Nasty and Zero to capitalize on that. So I'm hoping to see this moving forward from London Royal Ravens. Right, and um, let's talk to somebody to see if he can tell us if they're going to continue to dominate this way. It's going to be Gizmo for the Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Gizmo, yo, Burberry Gizmo, what's up, man? It's good to see you again, um, first off. Second, how good does it feel to just be back and winning like this? Oh, bro, I've missed it. Obviously, I had to go home for, like, mental um, family and stuff, but I'm back. Um, glad to help the boys, isn't it? And give a fucking swagger to the team, mate. That's what they've been missing, <laughs> all right? Harry's an unreal player. He just didn't it just didn't click. It's too many R's. Um, but I'm back, fast, just running first, fucking dying with an AR. Oh, my bad. And, yeah, I, I'm glad to be back with the boys, man. You're, you're fine. You're back. We just missed you. I'm sure we got <laughs> You're going to see, you know, you did bring the swagger back and head glitching the camp for most of the series. But I do have to ask this. What was it like for you as a player to kind of have that time off to go play in challengers for a bit as well? What did you learn to bring forth coming back into the league? Um, well, I learned in challenges, but I played with uh, Vortex and I had Josh as my coach. who was just like brainiacs. So like, although it's not the same like type of level, you still learn stuff. Um, it also helped as well because beforehand like my play style is very unique to the league i'm just an ar who just runs like like yeah. i'm an actual flex i'm not a second ar and i was just running um so playing with them i transitioned to more of like just a second ar a bit slower but also being fast but um so in snd it's helped i'm just more like sort of running down mid all the time i'm <laughs> running up in spots and just like being a cool head a bit in snd 
Um, so yeah, I've learned quite a bit, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to bring it to the boys, man. Uh, Gizmo, yeah, definitely run down midworks. That uh, couple kills you got in the very last round of Search and Destroy in middle were absolutely spectacular. Congratulations on the win. Uh, but I want to ask you, like, Zero had a crazy performance Oof. across both hard points. I mean, like, the guy was popping off. What is it about you being on this team that elevates him to that next level? I mean, Trey's unreal, bro. Like, he, he has, like, that swag about him. He just needs someone to bait. And I'm the, I'm the bait. As much as I don't want to be, I am. Um... <laughs> So yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Trey can get the four pieces and whatnot. But yeah, we're, not, we're happy. We get the dub. I don't mind it. Uh, but yeah, he's unreal, bro. Our whole team's unreal. We're fucking back, boy. Love it. You're back, love boy. It. The, the swag is back. Gizmo, show some love to some friends, family, and even the London supporters out there. And then, yeah, um, I mean, we'll let you go. Yeah, shout out to the owners for letting me go back. Shout out to Dom, like Kev, a coaching staff, and my family back home. Um, love you all. Miss you. And I'll see you soon. And yeah, to the London fans, we're back. Believe that. <laughs> We're back, believe that. Gizmo, you take it easy, fam. I'll holler at you later, all right? All right, in a bit. <laughs> I love it. Yo, Ali, isn't it nice to see Gizmo back just, just, just feeling loose, right? That's exactly what London needed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the words of him, it would be the swagger, right? Like, I'm not the person to say that. I should have loved and pull that one out. But, like, Gizmo, obviously, he brings the vibes, right? And it's yeah. good to hear, you know, that they think that they're back, they have their confidence. Because, obviously, you know, there were some wishy-washy rumors. Like, we can't act like that wasn't happening. We were like, well, no, we don't really yeah. know what's going to happen. Well, now we see what they're capable of. Exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the first series of the day. And you heard it right there from Gizmo. Baby, the swag is back. And as one EU team uh, hops over another, it's going to be the London Royal Ravens that comes out on top. But for this next series, it's going to be very interesting. We're going to see if LAG can show us a little bit of what we saw yesterday against NYSL. We'll catch you on the other side and see you soon.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Victory in a can. And upgrade your game with a scuff. The official controller of the Call of Duty League. people how you feeling today welcome back to the call of duty league my name is Veli. we got an alien also nameless and um today has been a pretty fun one so far we just saw the london Royal ravens pick up a big win against the european brothers right the the team from toronto the ultra and it was a pretty big win but for this one right here i have a i have a feeling okay hear me out. i have a feeling that this one might be something that people don't expect with lag versus the new york subliners but let's get down to it right because when it comes to nysl they don't have any time to slack at all. The nameless, looking at the points, they're sitting at 80, 11th place, and but this being the final stage possible yes. to give points for them, what do you expect? To do? I mean, if you're New York, this is a must win. You look must at these win. points yeah. in LAG at 125. You're hoping one of these teams falls out of the top eight and you can climb your way back up. You just saw the Royal Ravens get a win. That's one of the teams that you're looking at. Like, I hope they fall out. So for New York, it's just winning out and getting top eight. Right. And when it comes to the NYSL in this specific matchup, I mean, yo, and this team, they're looking good, man. The first match that they, excuse me, the first map that they had against the Florida Millionaires was a close hard point. Yes. But NY, they picked up and they were able to get the good win and they look confident at the end of it. Yeah, they bounced back in that Desert Siege search and destroy. They look fantastic on that map. Everybody played great. It was a team effort and, you know, they have that again in this series. Uh, going into this match versus an LAG team that has just made two big roster changes. For New York, they are a high pressure team. They're great at respawn. They play aggressive. So if you can get Kismet and Hydra going, you get one of those big games out of Paul. Like, you can fluster the players that are on LAG. So for New York subliners and the game field keys to victory, Ali, what are they going to have to do to win this series? Well, it's a lot of pressure on Hydra, right? He has been a positive in 17 of the last 19 series. Wow. You know what you're going to get out of him, right? He's the aggressive SMG on this squad and take the swing game in Berlin control. Obviously, LAG have been struggling in control this season. They are 0-4. So basically a guaranteed map win right off the bat. And NYSL for two games in a row, they go against two teams that had team changes. So they really don't know what to expect just yet. And I don't think they could really bank off of what they know from scrim reports, right? So um, when it comes to LAG, I will say this. We had, well, we, we've always said how we feel, you know, we said it with our chest about this roster, but I got to give it to them. Yesterday, LAG looked nice. They weren't able to get the win against Toronto Ultra Alley, yeah. but I have to give it to them. I really liked a few things I saw from them. Seriously, no, this squad on paper for me, I was a little wishy-washy about, but after seeing them in game, I was very pleasantly surprised, specifically on the backs of Neptune and Sparks, the new additions to this roster. They actually fell into the mold incredibly well. Austin was doing incredible things on the map, and even Hook, we saw new lights out of them. Unfortunately, they weren't able to close the series out against the Toronto Ultra, but they are heading into a Gavutu hardpoint once again that they won 250 to 174, very dominant fashion, so they need to take that map early in this series and hopefully ride the momentum from there. But the question is, did LAG learn from past lessons and that close loss that they had last time they were on screen at all? We'll find out soon. But when it comes to the game field keys to victory, nameless, lay it on me, man. Got to make your kills matter. All four players are positive yesterday in a 3-2 loss to Ultra. And really that game four, they outslayed by about 10 kills and still lost the game. You know, just a couple sloppy rotations there on the side of LAG. And also locking down hills is a must on Gabutu. 67% hold rate ranks 11th this season across all teams. So like for them on Gavutu, when they rotate and they set up, they gotta hold, man. We saw what New York's capable of doing there. So LAG just do it once again like they look 
just like yesterday. Right, and yesterday, LAG started off really hot with a 2-0 lead over Toronto Ultra, but then a reverse sweep came in, and they got that loss. But we're going to look at Maps and Mo's in just a second. I know Allie loves this segment <laughs> right here, but I'm looking at it, and um, LAG, they're, they're struggling in control, to say, you know, kindly, right? But when it comes to the maps, I want to hear your thoughts, Allie. I want to see um, who won this. Well, they got the first two maps that they got in the dub against Toronto Ultra yesterday, excuse me, not the dub, but they went up 2-0, right? So they went 6-4 in the Desert Siege and 250-174 in the Gavutu. So they're setting themselves up early in the series, and obviously that Berlin control is going to be a rough one because they lost the 3-1 yesterday, and they're 0-4 this season overall. And that's where New York Soul are going to be looking to capitalize because their respawn has been absolutely lights out across the board. Now, the only hope now for LAG is that Krim has a rough map one, and they capitalize <laughs> on that momentum early because that's been kind of the woes. He starts a little slow, but by the end of the game five, he is frying. So try to shut that down early. I love that. Nameless, man. Any last thoughts before we get into um, pickles? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing here is the control, like we were just talking about. On that Berlin, I mean, New York's only one and all on that map, so they don't have a ton of reps there in official matches. So for LAG, if they can come out and take that and sort of rewrite the trajectory of this team, like that is where they've been losing in all these series is that game three. Owen 11 now in their last 11 controls. That's unacceptable. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this game on the road, okay? And we're going to send this over to my boys, Miles and Chance. How you doing today? And um, take it away. Thank you very much, Vel. Ready to rock and roll straight into this one. Friends, no jokes. We're going right now. Chuck Miles and Chance taking you through this one. Chance, how you doing, brother? This should be a spicy one indeed. Uh, it doesn't matter how I'm doing. The matches are too important, right? Like, almost every <laughs> single team outside of, like, three are on the bubble. Every single match matters. For New York right now, have to be damn near perfect, right? Like, if they do as poorly as, I mean, three and two, even four and one, which would still be a very good stage, they're still going to have to place, like, maybe top four, top three, if not just win the event so these guys need to be on point lag it is the exact same thing right now seventh in the cdl point standings cannot afford to fall especially when the two matches we have after this one are two teams they're trying to catch up to lag we'll see if the catch up can come through but for now we're gonna get to watch lg go up against the new york subliners we get to watch you know neptune go up against his old teammate new york and over hydra first man on the point as new york start to soak away the first few moments here on the voodoo back to those game field keys again for lag holds 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 let's see if they can get anything out of this first one as the test continues and I think Ohydra is going to be a, a very interesting player for these guys to have to shoot back against. But whether it be the hole or whether it be the break, LAG at least get the ladder. And funnily enough, Neptune making plays over towards green while you got a gunfight for the final 10 seconds. Jismet takes that one down, so he's a little bit of time here, but maybe Neptune's opportunity to strike. Did he get it? Two now for Hook in a row. Kills keep through, rotations done and dusted over towards the bottom side of the boat. That's going to be who once again. The three spree continues. Can he make any more of a chance? Uh, we'll see if he can actually, you know, cause some problems up top. Three spree, nothing to write home about yet, but you get the full setup in and around the hill. And he's ready for the flank that's actually not coming through. So LAG guns up, ready to go flying from the top rope. And well, just to take the next player down. Stronghold so far. Obviously, Subliner's getting poised up for the next break. And Kismet with the intro. And that's just to get LAG out of time. Yeah, still time now going away the New York subliners. 10-point game now for them as they lead the charge. Time ticking away in their favor. Rotation's on as well. Full X top right hand side of your screen. He's up next. Kills all now for Kismet. It's a good look now for the New York subliners. Lock this one down. Five moments of the break there. It's going to be 15 seconds to be had. Still, LAG with a sweet bit of time. Rotation's done for New York. Oh, a big three from Krim as well. Talk about a way to make a rotation very easy for your teammates, right? LAG running across the map. It's going to be a hike and a half. And well, Krim right now just beats the, the cutoff, man. Neptune actually reads it, but you still get your tape posted up in that ring control, but fall like dominoes. That is not the start New York necessarily wanted to have. I mean, look, Krim had a bit of a day yesterday at times. We'll see if he can keep this one going now. Who kills flying forward? LAG with the mounting pressure now towards the hard point, and they are now bracing for impact. Kids in the hill, Hydro at the cover. You got yourself ring control as well in the form of Paul X, but here come LAG, first few kills now. Hook, it's a slow and steady approach, and it's one by one. Now the contest comes through. The hitman Neptune in gets dropped immediately by Kismet. Sparks up next now, trying to get involved as well. There it is. Trades now abound, and oh baby. New upliners still retain control. 20 seconds left. Yeah, and LAG, by the way, making a play that personally I hate, right? You go to flow spawns and work your way through the back, but if you don't break through the hill when you get those back spawns, now you're setting yourself up in a situation where again, you have to run across the entire map 
just to even think about breaking just the new hills. So they played with fire. They are in the midst of getting burned. And on this rotation, maybe the first couple of gunfights go in their way, but you're still by 60. Not by 60. Subliners with a rotation. Now let's have a quick listen in and see how they hold it. He's done. Nice. 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 Watch your back, watch your back. I saw, I spawned the levy. What's going on? They're in the back, they're in the back. Yeah, I got needed. I got needed. Yeah, I got fire, get fire. I heard you, I have fire, I have fire. Don't think right, don't think right. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. Double chopping, triple chopping, triple chopping, team kill. I'm in the right. I'm in the right. Yeah, they're fire, they're fire, they're fire, they're fire. They're fire, they're fire. Both fire, both 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 fire. That's dead. Nice. Nice. I'm, I'm new. I'm new. I'm back. Spawning Ivy. Spawning Ivy. I know. I know. Ivy. 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 Dead. Yo, I'm hiding back new. Okay, they can be anywhere. I'm literally in that back alley. They're gonna be okay, both. Good. They're gonna be both. Double. 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 double, double. Neptune. One shot. Neptune. One shot. Going hole. Double. Going hole. One shot. Hole. One shot. What's doing me? Dead. Hole. One shot. He's gonna be cages on you or some shit. I hear you. I'm trying to stay down top. Yo, yeah, Bucky. Bucky. Travis. Top wall bait. Top wall bait. One shot. Absolute new cages. I got top wall. Dead. 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 Travis, Travis in the cages. Spy guys. Yeah, spawning yeah, 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 I needed it. Oh, top 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 I needed it. 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 I'm in time. I'm coming. 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 I'm Nice. One team, he's going run up, run up, run up. I heard you, I have out, I have out. I'm like, yo, I got little beach, got little beach, got little beach, I heard you, I heard you. D5, D5, Kano. No, he's going to go, 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 D5, one shot slasher. Yo, that's one stun, that's one stun. I'm in here, I'm in here. One shot, one shot, one shot. Nice. Nice, try to get two just to the front. There's still a guy low somewhere, there's still a guy low. Go, 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 go. He's our side low beach, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting over. We gotta get to him. We gotta get to him. Don't free him. Go, go, go. Yeah, go, go, go. Low, 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 low left. One dead side, Spark. He's going in, 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 I'm getting to you. Close, 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 two, two, two. I need it over. Both full, full. I'm going to go track. Close, close, close. Yeah, yeah, bro. I'm going to go track. I'm going to go track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pushing front. I'm pushing front. Okay, I got needed. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. One hit me, 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 I spawned back for tower. One can be pushed on us. Yo, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Front white, front white, front white, Austin. He's just sitting in white, sitting in white, sitting in white, Paco. Okay, okay. One's white, one's white, one's white, one's propane, propane. Wall bang, wall bang. Okay, looking at it. Wall bang, wall bang. Propane, propane. Propane is the propane dies to that guy. And there was a bit of an extended listening there with the New York Subliners chance. And hey, man, all things considered, they sound great. They look great. What a lead they've got right now. Hey, hey, man, if we could fix the lag that we're having, well, that means LAG needs to fix the rotations that they failed at last go around. This is the setup. Once again, it is the P2 in a P3 rotation where Subliners started to dominate this game. And well, LAG struggling for the moment. You see Kismet is popping pieces inside the hill, a four man wipe and deja vu all over again. Gorillas another hike across Kabutu. Got to go for a big old run through the sands and the kill's still there for Kismet. Last time we checked in, he was looking great. Five spree now, 20 and 16 overall. And it's 100 points separating these two teams you know, with the final seconds going the way of LAG, but they have found next to nothing here on this harsh Kavutu hard point. So far, all good. Subliners once again in control. We could see the end of the map right here, right now. The question is, how good are your nays? Looks like not good enough. Paul X still just alive, soaking up that hill time, and it's already a 120-point lead, and if you can't take care of him, well, the game will take care of you, Spark. Trying to make some moves on the map, but Paul, even inside the point, is the man oh taking God. gunfight wins. Everyone is falling. LAG right now looking near hopeless. It's near hopeless. It's directionless. They've got
Bowles involved as well. And I tell you what, that is an unbelievable hold. Seemingly perfect. It was as if LAG barely put up a fight. The last minute contest here is just that. Last minute, not good enough. What an absolute slaughter of a map one. Gavu 2 giveth and uh, Gavu 2 taketh away, right? I mean, Jesus. it truly is a map that you have like one bad rotation, one small misstep, and things just spiral out of control in a, a way that I think only Danny Brown could understand. But uh, I mean, it truly was like Prim picks up that three at the start of the P3 Hill. And even though LAG won a couple of those next gunfights, they flip spawns, end up in the back, don't break through on the hill. And I mean, from that moment, you go down by 100 points. After that, subliners just have to like, play average hard point after the fact and it wasn't even average they continue to play well and i mean set themselves up for a dominant game where i'd be funneling it off like paul x only at 12 kills genuinely did not need to do much at all didn't even have to light up the damage because his teammates were just outright slaying absolutely a preposterous look there i mean we can go back over that one and hey looking forward to the flank tonight when you're going to be watching this hard point try to get broken p3 was not a pretty place for lag but either way new york subliners we've talked enough about their road to champs and every victory being an important one that map one was a delightful start to a series that they absolutely must be winning if they want to have a hope in hell making it to Los Angeles for champs later on this year. Wow, Chance, what an opener. LAG, whew, it's a lot of work that needs to be done here, boys, after that reverse sweep yesterday. Let's see if they got the goods coming up in Surge. It, it truly is a wild series. Obviously, just the generic setup of, like, CDL points just when it comes to actually qualifying for champs. Then you have players like Krim, who is on the bubble. It might be the first time he's missed champs in a decade. On the flip side, it is Slasher for the first time he's missed it in potentially, like, eight years. Like, basically, his entire career as well so you have wild stuff from the vets and then of course you also are in the midst of Neptune versus New York well I think New York sort of like London earlier today came out with the fire fire indeed baby look at that 205 to 104 the holds on Gavutu not there for LAG alas though they will now try their luck in the desert sands of desert siege and search and destroy map number two coming up next Berlin control number three and of course we got Tuscan and Berlin to close out the series should we go the distance but if you're a New York Subliners fan you don't want it to go any further than that Berlin control as the boys are looking particularly confident on what was a decisive victory there Charles going in a search though mate I mean what are the feels obviously we saw LAG play yesterday and the New York Subliners very different series for both teams but where are you dressing, mate? What's the what's the vibe so far? Well, I mean, I know Slasher, uh, you know, he has like that pick heavy SD style. The two maps we have for Search and Destroy in this series are Siege and Berlin, where those are pick heavy maps where you can really take your time and be calculated. So uh, I do think LAG have decent odds in the Search and Destroy. Admittedly, it's not like the subliners are too shabby at, at either of those maps. So it is not an easy battle, but Slasher loves this kind of gameplay, loves to be the ARs posted out on the outskirts of the map. And uh, obviously sort of the, the new dynamic with the team that you have. Neptune and Hook both have been like grinders throughout like the s and eights that have been going around for the past couple weeks, past few months. And uh, I mean, Spark, that is his bread and butter. He was a part of this roster when they go on the 13 search and destroy win streak, whatever it was. He's an S&D kid. He was one of the main factors why they were having success. And obviously on a map like Desert Siege, we saw what he was showing off yesterday with the sniper. Needs to have that prowess here uh, against subliners because I mean, already down 0-1, respawn was not looking too clean. Might be a must win map already. Yeah, it's a scary prospect again for LAG to go down 2-0 in this series already. Again, my biggest worry right now for the roster is a complete and utter lack of leadership. It looked like they had no clue as to what to do on some of the moments there in that Gavu 2 hard point. Will that translate into the search and destroy? As you said, mate, wonderful search team in general, not to mention the players on this team absolutely grinding out those late nights search and destroy eights. If anyone hasn't, check out their individual streams. You do get to get a lot of uh, a very interesting look to the insight of what it is to be a Call of Duty pro late at night playing search and destroy at the highest possible level. Stressful stuff. Let me tell you, boys and girls, the last in the desert siege we go, New York sideline has got to be feeling fantastic after that one we'll see if they can keep things going as a squad that has gone through nothing but turmoil for the entirety of the vanguard season actually the cold war season as well the rosters have seemingly been cursed can they turn their year around with this historic run towards champs low points for now sitting at 11th one series at a time and they've also got to have an incredible major of course that new york subliners major coming up very very soon yeah, I mean, I know their series is called No Pressure Right Miles, but the pressure, <laughs> it is as on as it could possibly be right now. 
Mate, you're telling me there could not be more pressure. But hey, I, again, I think a lot of players do really thrive under that. They love that. They need something special to light a fire in them. Again, Toronto Ultra, a squad that we've seen so many times. Like, they need to have a fire lit firmly under them cheeks before they get themselves up out of the seat and into the matches. But here we go, no match is on. There's a siege map number two. Here we go into the fray once again. New York Subliners with a beautiful start. And that I... Be too hard point. And now a chance we go into the desert. Excuse me, brother. And you can see, by the way, on the desert, right, like the, the biggest standout stat right there for me is just the first blood wood percentage where the subliners on point. But I mean, that is obviously with a few different rosters they have had, I think with this one, a, a one and two record Ooh. overall. And well, there you go. Boomstick, first kill. Spart has not lost a step since yesterday. Oh, my word. He's got a fight going on the other side of the map still. Krim. Oh, oh no. He's taking a dip. Krim's off, mate. Krim is gone. It is all down to Kismet. 1v3. Oh, what a round. Can we get that shot from Spart? Oh, unbelievable. Caught Hydra on the cross midair. A beautiful opener. Sadly, Krim took a tumble. Yeah, I mean, your team with Clay for long enough. I, I suppose some of it rubs <laughs> off on you. Normally, it's uh, the, the leadership qualities, the, the comms in game. Occasionally, you just fall off the map uh, in an incredibly high intense part of the year. You just fall off the map. Just he just sort of slipped. I mean, the sand over there definitely a little bit uneven. You've all been on the beach. You've all stepped on sand. It's not an easy thing, but either way, a great opener there from LAG. Nice rebound. Back in what we go. Round two. They're now on offense. Spartan not going to find anything on the opening pick here. Towards the middle of the map we go. Hydra. He's getting aggressive. What a two-piece. How diddly doodly will take those all day long. Beautiful opener there. Looking for number three. Can he get it? No. Neptune with a bounce back. Here we go. 1v3. Done. Rounds New York. Damn, uh, I mean, talk about a way to bounce back after round number one. That is one of the quickest rounds of uh, Desert Siege s and I mean, we may ever see everything calculated to perfection. Hydra, I mean, without question, the reason they won the round, just popping the pieces outright and, uh, I mean, really just hitting the gas pedal on that one. Feeling good. Pollux and Hydra, a little bit of that chem, putting in some work. Yeah, dangerous start from Hydra again. He takes his moment. He manages to get two out of it. Good awareness. Sweet gunny. Here we go. Another round for the New York Subliners. Now on offense towards the A-bomb site. Looks like we're going. The whole team's going to be making their way there. Nades cook. Nades up. See what they land. And it does. There we go. Spa out of the question. Yeah, best way to deal with a sniper. Don't peek. Just kill him with a nade to get that first blood and make things that much easier. Bomb planted. Man advantage. How could you possibly lose this? Well, we'll find out. Here we go, though. LAG on the counterattack now. Trying to retake the bomb site. Time ticket. Nades coming through. Splinters are wood all over the place, but Hydra stays alive. Neptune looking for that opening pick. Will he be patient enough as his teammates now maneuvering in a position? Slasher. One of the storied ARs of the league now looking over his teammates. 25 in the clock. Kismet's going to make it that bit easier now. 4v2. This is starting to get real dicey. Slasher moving forward. 20 seconds on this one. Catches Krim. Catches Krim out. Gets the second as well, but the kills are there. The subliners reign supreme. I mean, you back to back perfect rounds as well. I mean, just the coordinated aid. Spart plays the exact same spot last go around up in the tower. So, land a couple frags on top of him, get the first blood bomb planted. Then the setup that they had, in my mind, uh, about as perfect as you could ask for. You get Kismet to play down low, pick a corner, any corner. The spot Paul X had at the very back of the map is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best to watch the flank from. So, difficult setup to break down. Perfect execution for the subliners and nice little 2 1 lead. See how long they can go. Spot yet to find any success with the snipe since that first round. The opening shot onto Hydra. Been quite dry since then. Krim, eyes on Hook. Can you see it? A pixel, a hit marker. So no plan just yet. And Hook, there he goes. Dropped out indeed. An interesting round from LAG now as they find themselves 4v2. Yeah, and you see, you know, adjustments get made by the gorillas, but same thing can be said for subliners. Massive man advantage. You got Kismet on a four spree, by the way. I mean, if you could find a way to feed him this kill, that would be great. Maybe if Hydra can come up and bait for him just a little bit more, but this might be the gunfight. Slasher making noise, too. He is dancing with death. He is dancing with a score shriek, and well, there's number five for Kiz. Yeah, he walked right into that one. Last man up, Neptune. Far stretch from the murky depths his name is known for, but out here in the desert sands, he's doing what he can to stay alive. Tags are in, tries to snap onto a pull X, but Paul's already gone, and now New York Subline is toying with their food, and he will be buried out in that one another great round for the new york subliners and again i mean you don't have to throw around the the word perfect uh too often but that's as good as it gets <laughs> clean four man white the, the past three rounds have been utterly dominant from the subliners and 
I mean, pretty clean and efficient work. I sort of feel bad for Crimp because, like, he is sitting in his own spawn, looking at his own spawn, getting shot in the back. The the round before he gets shot in the back with like horrible Call of Duty timing as he turns around. But whether or not he's getting shot in the back, his teammates certainly delivering. Paul X taking that extra second to think about what he's going to do. Grab that bomb. Mosey on over towards A. You see Sports made an adjustment. Ooh. So the rest of the Gorillas, they stack up the inside, but Neptune forced it back down. Oh, tremendous pressure from the subliners right off the rip. Hoop managed to get in and out and alive. 4 HP with the kill. Safe and sound for now. That hit and run paid off. Opening pressure from the subliners has completely dissipated now. We are going to see a bit of a shuffle. LAG, hold your positions. You've got all angles covered. NYSL now at the man disadvantage, what will they do? I mean, they're sort of leaning towards dealing with Spark posted up on that train and I mean, one of the better power positions on the map. They obviously have an idea that he's there, but how uh -oh. many corners do you check? Well, there's the freebie Spark. Maybe he's just the next man to fall. Oh my God, Paul, he's on the hunt. Looking for number five, tags are in, can't get it done. There's the kills coming through there from his teammates. 2v1 now, Slasher. Last man up, the sprees now from the New York subliners. Players have come to a close. 30 seconds on the clock. His teammates saw him. Slasher didn't, but he got a call from his teammates that Hydra was up top. Wait for it. Uh, eyes are on. Slasher makes it a 1v1 now. 20 seconds. And here's the run. Hydra's played this so smart. He stopped dead in his tracks, and now the hunt is on. But wait, Slasher. Spidey sense is tingling. Oh, my God. Absolutely rips him. Uh, and that is a tough round for the subliners as well because they did everything right except for drop the bomb on top of the train in the back spawn in a situation where uh, I think Paul X didn't actually need it to challenge. I, I think spark in the back because I think Krim was there for the trades. And I mean, as soon as he drops it, that is just setting Slasher up. Shout out to his teammates for the comms, by the way, to make sure they told him that, yo, Hydra is very close to you. And I think he felt the pressure getting shot in the back, dips out in the middle of the map and... Well, just makes the perfect play. That is El Capitan making a big play just to try to keep things close. Keeping the lads in at six and three so far for Slasher, of course, three from that last round. Board position now for Neptune. His teammate's been dropped. That's to me, Slasher. The spree comes to a close. Oh, dear. Krim's going to find another one. Spot. Last oh, man. Ah, oh, this has been a disaster for LAG this round. Now, Spot. Whoa, hello. <laughs> oh, nearly God almighty. I was going to start screaming about your MVP performance from that major, but whatever, son. He hits at least one snipe. Either way, though, someone has a chance to keep the round all together. And um, it got a little bit spooky, but I think the other couple New York players were there for the trades anyway, coming from the, the deep side of the map. But, I mean, we talked about how, or at least I mentioned the fact that LAG enjoy the pick style play at Desert Siege. Uh, these rounds, they have been absolutely getting picked apart one by one. Kismet's finding first bloods. Crim's finding his gunfight wins on the outskirts of the map. And I mean, I suppose the style that LAG like, maybe New York were just born in it. As we go again, Paul X not able to see anything Ooh. just yet. And well, Spark, Ooh. well, he connects if you give it to him. It's a thigh of Kismet connected truly. 3v3. Oh, dear lordy. Cruel. Crim not backing down whatsoever. Fearless. The spark's gotten pinned now. A bit of shuffle from LAG on the defense. Who's this coming forward for the kill? Hunting it. Hydra, pistol in hand. Good job out of Spars. Two spree now on the round. Great work. We're less than a minute on the clock. Yeah, good work out of Neptune just to make sure he's watching the cross for his teammate for the little bit of help. And he got sniper shots raining out across the map. I mean, that bomb is just down in the worst spot possible. That's why Hydra making the desperation play to try to take the sniper down. But now Paul X needs the Ooh. pick, and it is a difficult dance. Yeah, a crack means it's far away, a whiz means it's close. And that was a whiz, ladies and gentlemen. More than a whiz there. Now Paul, last man up as he's going to do the very best he can. It's done. LAG. Total control in that round, Chance. That was the best looks we've seen out of them yet. A nice little fight back moment for the squad again. Slash has a nice 1v2 clutch to keep things close. Nice bounce back round where you get quite a few of those picks to keep things close. And I'd say really, I mean, you talked about, or I mentioned it, if you give the kill to Spart when he's on bomb, but in the feed, you see Kisman actually picked up the first blood. So he was probably one shot, just trying to do anything he could to stay alive. And after that, Subliner is not able to offer up anything for the round. Still 4-3 lead, but LAG back on the attack and the SMGs moving on up. Oh, Kismet is about to potentially bite off a lot and he can chew it, no problem. Oh, dances his way out of trouble. No, trades are bound now, 2v2. 
There's an explosive opening for the round now. Comes to a quiet close. Kroom trying to keep the back line safe. No one's going to be slipping on through, but Neptune's still with a bomb over towards the A bomb site. Now the last man up for his team. Oh, baby. This is a fight. Looking to make it a 1v1. He does indeed. It's Krim versus Neptune. It's old teammates. Here we go. And both of these guys, by the way, very loud. Actually, Neptune just pops the dead silence, so maybe an opportunity to start making some moves, but I think Krim was pretty loud as well. 45 seconds is plenty of time. He does have the bomb, but I think Krim just spotted him. Yeah, he saw him, he saw him through the crack there, and Krim playing it slow and steady. He knows the Neptune tendencies. Fast player, very aggressive, maybe a little antsy, the inexperienced in the grand scheme of things. And Krim... Power position indeed lays prone, lets his prey come to him. Great round of the subliners. And I think Krim also picked the spot where he can see what every crossover towards A, he can see like basically the entirety of the middle of the map, at least if you're like peeking through a window. And even if you try to wrap that bomb through B towards Krim's spawn, he could see that too. So complete map coverage and well now complete map control, 5-3 lead. Subliners looking to just dominate the series. That point now for the subliners, can they close it on out? Or will we see some of that LAG magic? Still record holders on Search and Destroy. But they're being put to task right now by New York. Slow shots out the back line there. That's the subliners. Bomb in hand, leaning towards the A-bomb site, but it is a firing squad right now, not letting anyone get through. And they are playing this slow, waiting for the LAG players to make a mistake. I mean, this is like the most committed A push I've ever seen. Obviously, they are taking their time, but... There's no one even thinking about a late flank. No one thinking about making the play. Well, there's Slasher, the pick that he loves to try and connect with. First blood for LAG. On a route, they need to convert. Hydra not going for the plant yet, but you see Paul X is backed up. It's the same spot from before to watch that flank. But the bomb's not here, and Slasher is now backed up to help his teammates out. I think he may have just seen the top of Kismet's head. Potentially. That's the bomb plant now. The rest of the LAG team now winding up for the hit. Slow and steady will be the approach. That first kill is going to get things started. And here we go. Waiting for an angle. Waiting for anything right now. Slasher finally takes care of Kismet. That's going to be the go button. Here we go. 4v2. The push is now on. Hydra now on the flank. Will he be able to catch anything now? You've got a lot of members to work with for LAG. They can potentially dive the bomb. Find a pick or two. Spark's already on it. Here we go. Chance. Hydra's trying to make something happen. All right. Well, you know, you can try well all you want, <laughs> but too clean from LAG there to shut him down. And Slasher just so annoying in that back train position, like gets the pick, backs down for 25, 30 seconds, eventually goes back. And I think you called it out correctly. He like spots the top of Kismet's head and still waits another 10, 15 seconds before he goes for the chow. So, uh, I mean, he almost just lulled the other team in a, a false sense of security and then snatch it away. And just for the fact that even Slasher just stayed posted that far back. There was nowhere for the subliners to actually go to try to watch over that bomb. So obviously a, a necessary round win for LAG. In my mind, a, a necessary map win. And hey, another pick. First blood going their way. <laughs> Spark connects again. There we go. That's three bangers with the snipe. More than the average, I think, at this point in time in Vanguard. He's doing a wonderful bit of work now. Over towards the B-bomb side of the map, we're going to go now for LAG. Spark, not any more to have. Aye, big tags out. Kismet, a great range. Now Slasher might be able to back him up. Now forward you go. That's great coverage from this side. Onto the bomb site we go. And here comes the close range battle. Slasher, guns up. Trying to find one or two there. Neptune gets involved as well. This is a good look now. Out of LAG. Chance they've got the opportunity to maybe get a bomb. Bloody hell, Slasher nearly shot his teammate. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it through the crack. Though Paul X forced it back down. They already know where Kismet is. And Paul X trying to stay alive. Slasher doing the same, but you gun him down for the three v one. And we might have a round eleven on our hands unless Kiz can pull off something electric. But he is getting tagged along the way. Good luck with that pixel. Yeah, they're taking him easy. He takes a full snipe, doesn't go down. Now he's got to worry about three members of LAG. He's got that bit closer, has to worry about it all. Round 11, here we go. Three clinical rounds now from LAG where they have had full control. Toying with the New York subliners. As the air has left their lungs, they're looking a little winded going into this round 11. Can LAG finish the race? Get themselves over that line. Here we go. And this is a battle for the first blood as well. I think the majority of these rounds have literally just been get the first blood, get a good setup, and make sure you convert. Uh, I think outside of Slasher's 1v2, there hasn't been, uh, I mean, anywhere near sloppiness in this game, really, from either team. So looking for that first pick. Krim doing the dance down towards B, but this is actually aggression in the middle of the map. 
He's trying to find something in the middle of the map. That's going to get mixy fast. Hook's got himself a corner and he's tucked into it. Neptune with a backline covered. There are a lot of subliners players on the inside now. Someone's going to pop a door or a wall or something, and that's when the fight will get going. Because this is getting tense. And I feel like that hook spot, if he just stays there long enough, might be enough for a guaranteed kill. The first nades connect, the second doesn't. Still no first blood. Pulls now, he's getting angsty. He's going to check upstairs. Got to check downstairs, got to check it all. But will he check the hook spot? We'll find out in a moment over the spot. Potential greatness now as he can tag a player on the way towards that bomb site. He does not know. There we go. Coverage now. As the bomb's going to get planted from Kismet. Another first blood. Trades now abound. Spark gets involved. Here we go. 3v3 retake. And hey, look at New York. Some players, by the way, they're at the top side of the map, so they're trying to roam to make plays. Slasher leads it, finds a pick, but now you got the late flank coming through from Hydra. Spark trying to cover him. Over towards the bomb site, we now go. Slash is making a run as well. Hydra reads it, gets the kill now. It's a 2v2. Clock still ticking. Krim finds another one. All comes down to Hook, trying to find anything. As he gets tagged up, I think a teammate now 1v1. 20 seconds on the clock. Hook's got to get the go on. He has got to run. Hydra's got himself a corner. Is Hook going to check this? No, he won't. The New York subliners stay alive. And that was an absolute sweat fest, man. You breathe a sigh of relief for New York. There were hands on heads for a moment there, and they knew that was a must win. Good Lord Almighty, 2 0 in the series. And I think Krim was feeling the stress of that moment. He starts <laughs> lighting up his teammate when he's in the middle of getting flanked. And I think he just breathed a heavy sigh of relief that they did not drop that 5 3 game. I mean, Slasher did everything he could. I mean, he is reading some of those late flanks in the finals rounds. He was getting the picks when he needed them, but I think in the end, it was what? Hydra, they got the first blood, stayed alive, makes the play towards the end of the round, and I mean, really delivers towards the end. And obviously, Kismet, fantastic performance as well. That is a 2-0 lead in a delicate game number two. And obviously, the series is not over yet. We've already had one reverse sweep so far this stage. Actually, we've had two. So it's not safe by any means, but subliners who are, you know, the team literally most desperate for CDL points are on their way to get their next tech. And this week has been a, a crazy one indeed. Seems to be far from over. That 2-0 lead in this series now for the New York subliners is anything but safe, friends. I mean, this is this is one to watch. And again, as New York tries to continue their run towards champs, we'll see if they can get it done. LAG, though, another reverse sweep in the cards for them this side on the right side of it. We'll find out if they get this one done after the break. We're going to be playing Control. We'll be right back.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew. And Zenny. Armor your eyes with blocks gaming glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com slash CDL. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. The New York Subliners are speedrunning their way through this series so far, very happily against Los Angeles Gorillas. 2-0 going to the control. Miles and Chance here looking to, uh, I don't know, mate, fly through a 3-0. New York's, they want to get the champs bad. Yeah, it, I mean, truly, just to add to like the stress of like how important that Matthew was for LAG, they're like 0-4 on Berlin control. So not a fun situation to be where you have to win a map that you literally have not won before just to kick off a potential reverse sweep because well, subliners need to be not quite perfect, but pretty close to it throughout stage four to qualify for champs. Well, LAG also have to stop the bleeding. The two matches we have Oof. after this one are two teams that are in the process of potentially catching up to LAG. And right now, I think they're in seventh place. If they lose this series and LA Thieves win theirs, well, then Gorillas fall to eighth place. If Minnesota wins their series, then that means LAG at the end of the day will only have a five point buffer for that top eight spot. So it is literally a, a nail-biting moment for this team. Quite literally a nail-biting moment as the nervous tension washes itself across the Los Angeles Gorillas players. The New York Subliner is strictly business now. Close this one out, 3-0. That's another one under the belt. Keep stepping along that road to champs. But Berlin Control is going to be our next map here. This has been a interesting one since its joining of the league, what, a couple of majors ago. Spicy stuff indeed, but here we go, friends. Map number three, and again, the subliners looking to fly through this one. The reverse sweep yesterday for Los Angeles Gorillas was a heartbreaker against Ultra. Can they now be on the giving end against the New York subliners? We'll find out, but maybe not when Kismet's shooting like he has done today. Boys looking fat. I pretty solid stuff. Uh, I mean, especially so in the S and D. I think like uh, oh, yeah. 11 and six, 11 and seven. But uh, yeah. I mean, whatever the case may be, the thing that stood out to me was the stats that Carson was able to throw up in the graphic. Uh, of just the fact that 10th and 11th in every single category for the Gorillas, offense, defense, actually capturing six. Uh, it does not matter, they struggle. Well, point to him though, nice little bounce back to start things off right. Bounce back, Bunny hops, finds the kills, out he goes. Now the belly flop on towards the spawners of New York subliners. That's gonna be the play right now. Spa is going, baby, flying forward. Hydra, great awareness, man. Again, just knowing full well those players are gonna be hitting your spawn. That's the way things go here on Berlin. Still over towards the B side of the map, we go top side. Not too far from the B bomb site in search and destroy for those of you who listen at home. Now, capture almost there. First segment should be closed out. That's all New York. And you see LAG, I mean, really just turtling up on the bottom side of the map. And as soon as they kill Hydra, Slasher can now move in position. So Ooh. not necessarily a high defense on B that they're looking for. But hey, now that you found the opening, send Hook in, let him charge first. And well, he might fall. You get the trades and you Ooh. still have quite a bit of map control. Nice bit of help there from Spa over the shoulder of Neptune. Now straight on to the point, we're continuing the fight. Less than a minute now to play with. Second segment is starting to get a bit messy. Spa trying to get involved now. Flying forward through window wall, you name it. Your boy's getting in the fight right in hand. Three spree. Raining that segment. The New York subliners had to throw so much blood, sweat, and tears at just to try to capture. Over towards the B side of the map we go once again. Spa is on a spree, baby. Oh, Lordy, what a three-piece that was. We'll take it. But you've still got to worry about one more player downstairs. I mean, hey, this would be a good time to mention that 0-4 record, not entirely with this roster. So maybe Spark could be the factor in getting this team uh, a solid performance throughout stage four. But I mean, funnily enough, in spite of that three piece, you still have subliners at least able to capture B with a five life lead. Gorilla still have that map control, still in a comfortable spot, but can't afford to make mistakes. And Kismet trying to force them. Like that. 130 now on the clock to make your way forward. As the subliners continue their onslaught here at the train station, Spark, the man of the moment, just a moment ago is now, but a thing of the past. As Kismet now on the three comes to a stop. Slasher holding the line down now. Subliners back on spawn. One more wave still in their hands. Nine lives remaining. Dude, LAG, by the way, putting the pressure on the teammates, sending players like Hook all the way around the back spawn. Spart actually loses a gunfight. So the front of the map starting to open up a little bit. Slasher's now by himself in Hill. And I mean, Hook, this is the longest round of all time. He needs to pick up at least two. There's number one. 
That's number one. That's good enough. Now pressure straight on towards the top of the point. It's going to be kills from his teammates. Get going. Spark's going to find one. Paul with the trades. This could be a hit. Now Hook trying to find something there. There's the contest. Catches one more out. In and out he goes. Beautiful teamwork. And it took a long time for Hook to get there. But it pays off at the end. Final five lives now for the subliners. That could be the round. Uh, that is a truly terrifying play call in my mind. Similar to like forcing the back spawns on P3 on Gavutu. Like it is incredibly risky, but it pays off. You still got a six life lead and I think right now you actually have a couple players for LAG uh, effectively reading the full flank, but Kismet the lone man, they're trying to set up for this one final play, but uh, I mean, you're just stacked up and trained. This seems impossible to break down. Yeah, very difficult. That's that next kill. It's going to slow the push down either way. You've staggered the subliners for now. However, Kismet snuck onto the point, managed to get through. Will that attention be enough? It might be for Hydra now to go forward. Still pressure on point. Kismet's got one, a big one. Now Hydra gets involved. He does get the kills. Oh my gentle Jesus, we're on the point. Oh my God, the kills are there. Progress now, second segment gone. There's only two members of NYSL left. They're holding it down. They're holding it down. Can they get the kill? Down in the end, the contest comes through. Kills are there. My God, LAG. That almost was disgusting. But the subliners don't get it done. Now, I mean, I'm sweating. I'm freaking out. I'm sweating. I'm biting my nails. Good Lord, what a round. Subliners. I mean, that was what? Like a, a 5v11 or something yeah. like that? Like, four they were four. down bad. They sent Kismet on, on the longest round of all time, and it nearly works out for them. I mean, that is Berlin in a nutshell, man. One mistake, and you could just throw away a round on defense, and, oh, maybe not mistakes, maybe a four-man hook. Hook trying to fly forward, does get caught. A couple trades coming through, but right now, slight advantage towards LAG. Some trades on that secret side. Neptune gets one back on his old boy, Krim. Now forward he goes. Nice shots. Oh, not enough. The last one there. Hydra, beautiful use of cover to stay alive. The spark gets dropped as well. Numbers now starting to dwindle. Subliners with a clean set of kills. One man left up. It's going to be Hook, and he's been spotted out. This should be a clean kill. Oh dear, from Paul. Krim should be there to pick it up. Either way, whatever happens. And Hook is a slippery customer, I'll tell you that much. Not an easy man to deal with, but there we go. Pressure now from New York. Forward we go on defense. And, and I gotta say, by the way, for LAG, I think somewhat of a missed moment. Like, they played the opening break incredibly well. Had like three players in and around the hill, and maybe their ego just getting the best of them with a, a couple of the chows that they had. But still, early in this round, plenty of pressure over towards B, and obviously the lives. Well, well, not quite dead even. Neptune loses another Ooh, one. Hey, Krim delivers for two, so maybe New York's turn to try to set up this spawn trap. Yeah, big daddy Krim finding a couple. Less than a minute now to play with. LAG trying to get themselves on a B, but again, Kismet setting himself up in a strange spot now to do the dosi -si do around these players coming out of spawn, trying to get involved. Spark's been tagged. That's good work, and that's the kill from Kismet. Cleans up the B side of the map over towards A. Lone Man defending it right now is going to be Paul X. Gets at least one kill. That is huge. Going to allow Kismet across map to fortify that position as well. Nice looks out of the subliners. Just under 40 seconds of the round is theirs. Yeah, now LAG is really struggling to figure out what to do because it is Neptune by himself. And I mean, being a, a decent distraction, but he gets picked apart. And LAG still have not actually set foot on this B zone. Finally, two players nearby. But I mean, that just gives enough time for Kismet maybe to go on another flank. Maybe the timing just goes his way perfectly. Oh, Number come on. Two falls into his lap and where he gets traded. It looks like the subliners instead of forcing it over towards B, just keeping it nice and control, stacking up the trade and just being annoying in your spawn. It was a one-man mission there from Kismet. The rest of the team not necessarily involved, but that's fine. They were going to let that one go. He does get a decent amount of kills in that run. 12 and 11 overall so far. Not huge, but they have been wonderfully influential. Now, here we go, though, with an extra minute to play with LAG. 13 lives in the bag. Let's go for a listen in. I'm still playing. I'm still playing. Why be hiding in fire or something, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going deep. Still Looking playing right now. Hiding. Anything low fire? I don't see anything top third fire. I don't see him holding the pinch. I'm I'm right now, he's on the circle desk, bro. He's on the circle desk. Yeah, I'm trying to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing got it. Wait, hit me too. He's getting one shot. I'm gonna do it. He's getting one shot. 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 He's getting He's in red room, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, red room, laying down, laying down, red no, room. No, no, outer, outer. I got him, I got him, red room. I got, uh, outer pushing out, outer door. Or, Bring him up, yeah. Sitting in the corner, I think. Close center. One's on the point, yeah, too. I'm left. Close center, dead. Be he's he's, gonna he's be outer pit, outer pit. I'm better nade it. No, he pinched me. Pitch. He's outer. Somewhere outer. outer he's in inner, inner lobby, kiss me. No, he's shot, he shot off before. Dead, dead, dead. dead, dead nice. One was outer. He was outer. He was outer, Eddie. He's probably pushed up on you. It was Paco, too. He's probably pushed up on you. Beginner. Outer, Eddie. A chance it does not sound very fun to try to deal with the New York subliners here on defense of Berlin. 
No, not at all. I mean, it was a pretty good try on the break, but you see Subliners able to slow the pace down just enough for the spawners to come back and make a play. So guys like Hydra putting in a, a little bit of work in just the, uh, the pace category. Make sure they keep things nice and secure for that round. So it was incredibly dicey in round number one. Subliners on defense, much more controlled uh, last go around. But I'd say right now, I'd say if I'm the subliner, try to push the pace, like try to go for the steamroll. You're still playing against a team that has yet to find a win. And um, you were able to nearly convert around on offense where you were massively down on live. So they've been out playing their opponent and they have certainly been out slaying them as well. You convert this round on offense, you gotta be feeling sweet for this series. Let's see if they can get it done. Not an easy thing to do, but again on Berlin control, a relatively even in the wins when it comes to attack and defense. The most balanced we have of all the control maps. Here we go though, Kismet. Been a difficult man to deal with so far on the map. He taking his way forward now, backed up again by Hydra. Gets brought down now. This side of the map looks to be a dangerous spot. Can he find something here? Nades are through, pinches on. All looks good so far as the hit is still alive. Chance slow and steady. In at the point we go. There's one from Kiz. Out he comes. And the movement on this man, he's dancing on Berlin. I mean, this is basically a route of search and destroy, at least for the opening break. But now the pace, maybe a little bit oh. quick. Paul X again wins one of those gunfights that it seems like he shouldn't. And this is Subliner as well. I was going to say, maybe trying to pour on that pressure, but now Hydra by himself. I mean, he gets to be the roaming slayer, but you see Slasher incredibly ready for this <laughs> pressure, expecting it from fire. And well, maybe not as ready as he should have been. Hydra's still alive, and all this pressure is still towards A. Yeah, he's looking very good right now. If you can get onto it, the New York subline is, oh my God, Hydra's in your spawn and he is having a whale of a time. That's going to be the kills coming through. A bit of an opening now. Spawns get a bit squirrely, but there we have it. Hydra spree comes to an end. A is starting to get captured. It's a two-man hit for now as the point's now closing out. Second segment done. Nice shots at Krim. As the final segment coming to a close, but here comes the final hit now. This could be the saving grace for LAG, and it is last man alive, Hydra. He's got to find two more kills here, and that's going to be bloody difficult. I'll tell you that, friends also super well timed on the flank whatever player that was for lag that ends up making that play and win the gunfighting drain the savior for the squad now the pressure back over towards this newly found b point but sub liners Oof. should be able to collect that without any issue only a two life advantage so incredibly close and lag are able to stabilize and get the setup get the player pushed out to the deep bottom of the map and fun enough it'll be hook once again Subliners want nothing to do with that, though. They are taking the full team train route. Everyone going round. Here we go. Slash has got himself a sweet corner. Might be able to catch one or two. Sees a shadow of a Crim6 in fire. That's going to back him up for now. Neptune fight, catches him Hydra. And with that taken care of, beautiful work from Neptune again. Dancing around fire. Two members up now still. Kiz and Paul Lex towards the point they go. Spark's going to have to be the lone defender here. Can he get anything out of this? The shots are in. The respawn's now making their way forward for NYSL. But the cutoff is behind him as well. It is pinches on pinches on pinches, ladies and gentlemen. And now it comes to a close. Neptune's last man in. Paul gets dropped. That is it, son. This play is over for now, 13 lives apiece. Yeah, and Hook's still been chilling, by the way, in the back spawn. So he's sort of that like bailout clause for the team. He has been letting a, a couple players run past him though. And Hydra, the, the next one to go on live, but finally Hook is able to pounce. He's able to pick up one, but still, this is two ticks on point. Oh. You still have to be perfect. And well, LAG for the moment still delivering. Only 25 seconds now left on the clock. Yeah, that table is wobbling right now. New York Subliners have taken a leg or two out of it. They've only got one left to grab before it's done, but there's less than 20 seconds to play with now. Life's still burning out. Paul's got to try to find something. Neptune does have the awareness of him, and he's got the gunny as well. Another big kill on a pause. He has been instrumental in the defense there over towards the A side of the map. Final few seconds. Kills are there. Not a hope in hell. A worthy attempt from the New York Subliners, but it ain't gonna happen. And there it is. Great round out of LAG. They will live to fight another round, Matt Point. I'd say a, a little bit more clinical this go around. A lot of nice reads from the Gorillas, like ready for the flanks that are coming through, you know, smart making plays, ready for Kismet to pinch in through the brick steps. And uh, I mean, overall, no craziness in that moment. They read out the, the sort of four man push all the way through P3 as well. So it has been a, a defensive sided game. And I'm mean, fine enough, just looking at the kills. If Sasher starts shooting back, uh, I think yeah. Gorillas might be clean for this round. I mean, they could absolutely walk through to this one. Hello, what is this awkward fight? Ah, Hook's done. Thor might be the one that killed him in the end, but Neptune's going to be the last man standing here on the B side of the map. And that's it. Capture's on. 
Neptune backing him up. Spark's going to be there as well. That's going to be a second segment on its way out as well. Beautiful opening here from LAG on offense. This could get ugly real quick. Neptune flying, man. And frying on a three spree. We're going to find a few more. Nice shots as well. Slasher backing him up. And there we go, Chance. 10 to 19 out of the Mad Titan. Hey, and this is as good as it gets, right? Two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock, and you still have 28 lives to work with. So you can push Oof. the pace, you can fly, you can go for the calculated setups. You get the freedom to do whatever you want. Maybe that's the freedom to fall as well. Crim6 with a grenade. Slasher gets picked off as well, still sitting at double negative. Subliners now have regained control of the train side of the map, dominated the bottom portion. Hydra maybe even found his new home. Post up and get that real estate couple problems lag needs to solve yeah they're gonna slip in towards this train side of the map hydra's the man in and that is devastating two players dropped out watch them spawn up top right hand side of the map it's not gonna be an easy journey either way not too far but for now you've got one player in it's gonna be hook how long can he stay alive he's got to go big here that's one. Oh my word paul saves it neptune can't get anything either that's gonna be the a side of the map safe spot maintains a little bit of that real estate right now for los angeles gorillas but it is expensive and it is valuable and new york are coming for it all right that's a big win though because now number eight i was gonna say kismet is left alone by himself he gets picked as well unfortunately sparta is gonna fall so a man down for this next push i think hook might have gotten spotted going secret but he's made it to Ooh. his home and hey there's the gunfight win trades coming through still a lot of pressure on the point but lag a little bit of control a couple gunfights go their way and this will be the moment oh that was a slide through trades are about though still on the point we have it no one quite able to stop the clock just yet. LAG trying to fight their way forward. Kismet still on the defense. That's going to be slowing down the reinforcements, cutting the supply lines out. And again, he's got Neptune in sight. Oh, big win from Nep. Now flying forward. You still have a bit of space to work with right now for LAG. A clear avenue to actually get into the fight. Same way sell now. Lining up for the hit. Setting up for the defense. And it is Hydra trying to do what he can. Sparks in. And here we go. Chance the defense holds again. That's just good movement from Hydra, by the way, to like go from outer oh. just to get inside office nice and quick. So readjustment on point. But LAG still are having the pressure up towards the train side of the map. Couple players outskirts. Hydra forced to back down. He gets picked. The kills right now going their way. Oh, Kismet can't get it done either. Now pressure is on. Here comes the numbers. You're going to flood this point quickly. Three man now on top of the point for the New York sublines. They got to get in there. You're running out of lives. You're running out of chances. First segment gone. One clean hit. So you need to get them off the point. Nades, lethals, everything through the window. Go, boys. Go, dive. Contest is on. And here we go. You have to clean Kismet out. A spark keeps the kills going. Unbelievable. Hold right now. And you keep running into the guns. You've still got a capture working out. And one player left is Slasher. He's staying alive. You've nearly got the capture. Hydra there trying to hold it down. He's the last man in and it can't happen lag turn it all around there on berlin they get the win and on a map that they were 0-4 on in a series that is honestly one of the most important of the year desperate for some points and hey we're back against the wall they deliver I mean, again, that was a pretty dominant stuff, at least towards that final round. They got that gas pedal up into the train side of the map, and eventually the dam broke and spark. God damn, actually, yeah, 4K damage, 33 and 26. Talk about your, uh, well, not main AR, but your flex sort of quicker main AR. Most engagements in the lobby, most damage in the lobby, most non-traded, at least tied in that category. And I mean, hey, most assists as well. So MVP for that map three, spark, keeping his team alive. Yeah, that was great. Massive, massive amount of work being done by a lot of the members there of LAG. Slasher getting involved towards the end, but man, alive. You got to go back and think about how tight this map could have been if that attacking round from the New York subliners early on had gone their way. What a different look we could be in now. But look at that three-piece. Germany crickets. Disgusting work out of Spark. Wonderful work out of LAG. Bouncing back to life when he certainly needed it. And hey, they got reverse swept yesterday. Reverse sweep seemed to be on the cards here in the Call of Duty League this week at the very least. Going into major number four. God only knows what we've got ahead of us, Chance, but that's that. Berlin finally won by LAG. And, and funnily enough, just to like add to the, you know, 17 different storylines we're throwing at you, the net versus his former team, the subliners, it is also the exact same five maps in the exact same order that LAG had yesterday against Toronto. So they got reverse swept with this map set. Now they're looking to complete a reverse sweep. So you just want to add a little bit of spice to the series. Got to add that storyline in. Yeah, we'll see. All right, it's almost coming to a close here of map number three in this series. And for those who thought it was going to be a swift 3-0, think again, friends. We're going a little bit deeper into this one. As New York subliners still making this triumphant and heroic run towards champs a reality. They can still get it done. I believe the sort of the way the maths works out, they're allowed to lose at least one 
match up in the road towards their own major, but it is going to be an incredibly difficult one. Getting a winner's bracket start is going to be ideal. They've got to go real deep into the tournament as well. We'll see if they can get it done. His current form ain't bad. Chance like everyone's shooting hot. The gunny is there indeed. Teamwork seems to be good. Berlin's a difficult sort of test, but if this series is anything to go by so far, that 250-104 in Gavutu was disgusting. Clutching up on Desert Siege. Tuscan Hardpoint now awaits. Here we go, brother. What the hell happens now? I mean, that, I mean, maybe Spark can continue to run the show. Maybe he needs to on Tuscan, whether it be uh, with the Volk at Major 2 or even yesterday on this map where he was having a, a decent bit of success. Uh, I'd say the pressure is on the kid. Uh, and obviously at Major 2, he was able to deliver, but I mean, LAG in the mix. It, it is literally just like seven or eight bubble teams we have uh, in this moment for this final stage. There's really, you know, only two or three teams with any degree of separation. And we talked about how LAG, the two series that we have after this are two different teams that are literally directly behind them in the CDL point standings. But if you lose to the subliners, I mean, that's just like a, a new like challenger has appeared sort of moment where like you're giving more life into this camp who, I mean, again, need to be close to perfect. But if they go in the pro-am, I mean, who knows what these guys can actually do, right? I mean, even at the major where they end up getting like the top 12, they still go to a game five, round 11, one versus one against Seattle Surge, the team that won the entire event. So it is Vanguard. It is unpredictable. <laughs> and any team that is down is never out. In spite of that loss, still smiles on the faces of the subliners because, I mean, hey, if that could boot too hard point was anything to take away, at least for the, the HP game that we have, we're probably still confident going in this map four. I should feel confident indeed, yeah. I mean, Vanguard, I'm glad you brought up Vanguard because this it's an interesting one, man. This game will beat the living snot out of you if you aren't careful. One day you are king of the world, the next day you're LAG right after Major 2. It's just what happens. It's just what happens. But for now, we're going to be rolling into this next map any second now. We'll see how this one goes because again, Chance, not a, not a clue. Not a clue what happens next. We have next to no information, no data, no... I mean, the gut is telling me all sorts of things. None of it's useful right now, mate. That's just the name of the game here in Vanguard this late into the season, but it is sure making spicy runs towards champs. LAG, though, man, if they can keep this one going, they've got themselves some good points off that major two win. They're in a decent spot, but as you said, a loss here and a, lo and a victory from LA Thieves changes the way their whole season looks. We will see, boys and girls, as we now go into Tuscan. And especially because, like, the LA Thieves and Minnesota Rock are the two teams that are directly underneath LAG also have been teams that like you know minnesota just had a, a perfect stage three they went five and oh so that's 50 points right there and i know they didn't perform on land but still if you're performing that well online you expect the ability to catch up and then almost the opposite has been true for the thieves where this is a team that has turned up and overperformed when it comes to the land events so they're going to be scary uh, to the end of the stage as well so uh, a dangerous spot every single map every single series is going to be a difference maker and as far as the stats go for this one i would certainly lean towards the subliners and it is not by a, a decent margin by any means and if the pop-off potential is there especially from a guy like spark i mean who's to say he's had some iconic moments here in his career already in the professional call of duty world on this map alone let's see if he can keep them going Hydra now and his boys doing what they can to lock down this opening hard point. It's going to be a four-man hit through the middle of the map, and it is going to be ugly itself. It gives me, he is done. Here we go. LAG strong on the point, trying to find at least a kill or two. Trades are in. Trades are there. Crim's the last man up. The contest is all good. Slasher reads it, and there we go. Finally comes to a close. Takes a little too long, and the subliners come right in off spawn, and they take the hard point right back. I mean, hey, that's a good job from the subliners to at least keep the hill time, but unfortunately for those guys, end up losing the spawn. So, yeah, they do have a, a decent little lead after P1. Happy for that, but now the problem is is how good are your breaks gonna be lag get the full setup couple players pushed out past plat you get neptune posted up on the back tank and looks like subliners lucking to hit this hill through green yep and looky looky here comes the break it's on for now crim's gonna keep the nades going as the teammates are flying forward send in the little guns crim not another team nade for the love of god man as he does find it and the breaks are good that's gonna be the new york subliners hard point and a measly nine seconds garnered there from lag yeah i did watch that for crips pov this is terrible <laughs> doesn't have to win a single gunfight in fact actually kills one of his teammates and all well, his teammates do well enough that he get the break anyway doesn't watch the plank properly so he dies well funnily enough that's gonna be the opening because now spartan just soar on through get a three piece from him and just like that crim struggling on this second hill a fascinating and bizarre turn of events here on Tuscan is, woof, kismet. 
First slash it down. Neptune's yet to get a kill, man. As we go over towards P3, it's going to be a big fight now. Hook versus Hydra. And that's a win from Hydra. That's good looks now for the subliners. Again, even if Hook did win that, three members there on the rotation, they're all good now to go. Final five seconds going to go the way of LAG. You've got Crim set up in a sweet corner here. Should be able to catch a player or two. And here they come. The trap is set. The net is out. He gets himself at least one. Nep's up next. He gets on the ball. Two and five now for Neptune. And you see the roof side of the, the map is actually made. But funny enough, Slash actually spawns toward the top side of the map. So oh. you just spawn into a pinch right now for LAG. So you get gifted like that. You got to take full advantage. Hydra in the hill, though. He gets a little bit of coverage for his teammates. The final 1v1. Kiz versus Spark. And Spark delivers. LAG, well, they got the spawn. They got the break. And, well, he's going to say maybe get the glide. But an aid from the sky able to take Spark down. Nice little moment for the subliners where things could have spiraled a little bit out of control. Yeah, it could have got real bad. Hook's going to dive right back into this fight. Oh, my God. It's all three for Hook. Unreal. Can he get the fourth man now? As Paul's up next, great bit of work from Hook, whether it was Spark with a six pre or now Hook with a three. LAG back in this. And your sub's trying to get a little bit hot as well, right? That's sort of the battle for the LAG team. If Hook and Neptune are frying, you expect this team to win. But oof, shooting against guys like Hydra and Kismet, never fun. But in this true test right now, Hook trying to rise to the occasion on a five spree has his corner and has two players that will cross his path and look at the pace he set for himself there flying forward pumps the brakes at the right time here comes the counter hit through the back side of church though and it's all good no slasher finding at least one spark with trades there on point as well gets two of them nice bit of work now lag you are well and truly back in the match here on tuscan lead may change hands in a brief moment sparks doing what he can to keep this one safe and sound another sweet set of kills 12 and 7 now looking to find number 13 no paul x ah, my dude. good god oh take it away chance I mean, that, dude, I've said it so many times. That is one of those gunfights, Paul X. It seems like he should not win, but somehow convert. So electric stuff in that moment to get the break and try to restabilize over towards the hill. Slasher feels like dying. So he goes to Chal and I mean, funnily enough, he just spawned up in a super interesting moment. Kismet got through. Kismet didn't even spot him, but this is the opening. You break through on P5. You could blow this game wide open. Oh, we've seen some hits on P5. This is the pinch is on now. Timing could be so good. Here comes the hard point. Opens up. Kiz is there. Kills are there as well. Break is perfect. The York subliners at P5's all yours. Dude, and Slasher just hung out over towards P1 for an extra 15 seconds. He just completely takes himself out of the play and, well, now puts his team in a pretty bad spot. LAG, four men grouped up around this hill, and maybe they're actually able to just walk on through. This is where the trades are ever important, and Krim down low, able to pick up two. The untradeable in the hill. While Subliner still mounting that 50 point. It's still a good hold. Nades out. Here comes the hit. Through the front door we fly. A couple of kills going the way. And that's it. LAG even wiped out the point. Last man up is going to be Hook versus Krim now. Slides on into it. Former teammates, of course, that 2020 World Championship squad. They're going to find the kills and it is done. There we go. New York Subliners once again with a sweet bit of scrap time as the lead's starting to get ever bigger. Now back over towards P1. Paul winning another unbelievable gunfight as the menace continues. Oh, no. And you got the pinch in oh, as well. You on. get the clean four down and you get the calculated rotation over towards P1. And literally just a small moment, a small mishap for LAG. And all of a sudden, that is just, I mean, similar to the Gabutu, started to spiral out of control. You are now down by 90 points and you're dealing with the, the full setup. You get Kismet on the tree and this is his happy place. He does get taken down, but still gets out a little bit of damage. The flank gets red and well, who? Last man standing, nowhere for him to really go. That's a bit of body block there. Krim's gonna stay alive on the point. Pulls here as well, but Neptune now on the flank. There's the first. Dosi do Krim gets traded out. Nice work. Shots in from Neptune. Three in a row. 25 seconds to be had here. Incredibly important hard point time for them to bounce back into this one and not let Tuscan get out of hand. Subliner's still fighting for it though, right? That's a couple players grouped up and that's at very least just to, to chuck the nades over. So they're trying to strip away with his time and the trades come through, they keep the spawns. And uh, I mean, just like that, Neptune picks up a massive three piece, but that only buys your team oh. 10 seconds of time as Kismet with the rat -a tat able to take him down. And well, now you get set up over towards P2. This is the only uh, hill the Subliners did not have success this entire game. And well, now they get the full setup that they want. They're gonna try and hold it. Columns up. Sparks trying to make his way through radio. Paul is being pressured. It is nothing but metal, and they are pissing all over him. There we go. Big shots in from Slash Resort. Can't get the kill. As the lead comes to an end. Almost 200 points now garnished for the New York subliners, and LAG desperately trying to fight their way onto this one. It is not an easy one. Open hard point for now. No one in position to get this. The Slasher and Co. have to fight their way back into it. And New York chance, they are in firm control.
I mean, hey, if Neptune could pop a three piece to break through P1, someone else has to pick up the three piece to break through P2, but Slasher ain't gonna be that guy this time. And Subliner's looking nice and secure. Hook trying to fly, but he's tagged up one shot. The gunfight towards the final 10 seconds is scrap. Well, Paul X delivers. So even that little bit extra swing sort of time, LAG cannot collect. They do get the setup over towards this new hill, but even if you get the perfect full 60, they're still going to be down by another 80 points. I, mean, I thought the Gavutu may have been an outlier, but no, it does not seem that way. The New York subline is even more dangerous now on Tuscan against LAG. You've got to go massive here. And as you said, a perfect 60 is only one of many steps now trying to pull this game back as NYSL truly sitting comfortably now atop their perch. Can they hold it? The break here would be great. Here comes Paul to the front, and that is it. The break is on. Neptune trying to pick up where his teammates left off, and that's going to be the hit still alive and well. Nept stays in the fight, gets it. And man alive, we're still going for LAG. I mean, hey, holding on for the moment. Who holding on to those flanks and holding on to that two-piece? So this has been a, a pretty solid Fountain Hill, right? To try to claw your way back into this game. And, well, you're still collecting. But, of course, well, the double hit coming through fire. 18 seconds is a decent chunk of time worth fighting for. Who forced the rat back? And Krim there to make the read. The two-piece in the point just to make the lead that much more insurmountable. By the way, you got Hydra posted up in the very back of the spawn, trying to keep it nice and secure. And obviously, subliners, just 10 seconds away. 10 easy seconds for them to get. And this will be a dominant series win. Over to Hydra now, trying to lock it down through the back. Finds one. The second, the damage is done. And surely, New York's prayers have been answered as their road to champs will stay alive. They keep it going, baby. That's a 3-1 and a big victory for the New York subliners. Incredibly decisive in the hard points. Control, not so much. And search and destroy, the squeakiest of bum time indeed. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. 3-1 comes to a close you got to tip the cap to new york looking very strong indeed and dude i'm telling you this is new york slowly chipping away at that cdl point deficit An extra 10 point in the bag making things just a, a little bit closer trying to pour on that pressure from the, the bottom side of the standings and for lag i'd be leaving the lobby too because i'd be feeling the heat we might be in the situation where by the end of the day there could be four teams within five points of each other or like 15 actually i think it might be 15 but still <laughs> incredibly close incredibly important moments in these bubble games and i mean that is now back-to-back -back losses uh for the la gorillas as they are seeing their lead potentially slowly fade away and uh, i mean obviously you talk about pressure they might be a team that literally wins a major and performs poorly enough throughout the rest of the year they don't even make champs so Obviously, a lot of Call of Duty left to be played, but not the stage four star girls we're looking to have. No, not at all. However, this far from finish, they're running deep. We'll see if they can make the bounce back again. A new look for the squad, of course. You do see two brand new players make it into the mix. Again, Search and Destroy should be a much stronger game mode for them, if not strong enough now. And again, it's strong, but not quite there. We'll see if they can't find that. But the hard point, diabolical. Diabolical hard point performance, especially there against the New York subliners, the Gavutu. They will watch that one back with fury in their eyes when they see how hard it was for them to even do anything on most of those points. Same could be said here, as the hard point was not good on Tuscan. New York subliners absolutely ran them over time and time again. A couple of sweet individual plays here or there. Again, we've given a lot of love to Spark. The kills were good, but not quite enough to get the boys over the finish line. Or actually, frankly, even close. No, and I would say for both of the hard points as well, like, you know, you could talk about a dozen different moments where, like, things could have gone either way, but I'd say for both the Gavutu and the Tuscan, the one moment I'm looking at for at least the Gavutu was, like, the P2 to P3 rotation uh, where they end up just, like, losing that one, getting broken down, losing the spawns, and things spiraled out of control. Similar on the Tuscan, the rotation over towards P5. Somebody's already had a decent lead. As soon as Kismet goes on the flank and makes that break, well, then you never have to look back and... Uh, and that is two of the more dominant hardpoint maps that we've ever seen in a series. So Subliner's nice and comfy. It's comfy indeed. However, they've still got a ways to go, babe. One series at a time, loving what we're seeing. Desk, the New York Subliners stay alive. LAG, though, got <laughs> dinged on. That was a <laughs> Okay, to be, to be completely fair, maps two and three were very close, but when it came to hardpoints, they just couldn't match up against yeah. who I still think is the best hardpoint team in the game. Shout out Listen, to New man. York for winning 31. But, um, yo, Ali, how do you feel about um, this series right here? It seems like New York were feeling comfortable. and The refunds were nowhere near what I expected them no. to be. I got really excited for the new look LAG heading into that Kavutu hardpoint, but right off the bat, it was 
all of New York Sub Liners in control. It was definitely not the outflank situation when it came to that map one. I was fairly impressed with their search and destroy, but I mean, Desert Siege obviously proving to be LAG's only kind of strong suit when it comes to that game mode. So things still looking rocky for the LAG camp. Right, still taking a second look at this new LAG team, right? There's one player above all in this entire lobby that really sunned the ARs. It was definitely Crim6. Yo, nameless man, they're getting the points. Crim6 is looking better than not trying to go super negative anymore. So that man was top fragging in both the hard points. He was making no plays there, man. I mean, you look at that map one, they were just in control the entire time. And then on that Tuscan, you look at that P5 hill, he went huge. Yeah. He played down there by well, played his life for like 30 seconds, goes up top, gets the two piece from the stairs and pushes out and gets another three piece from the hill when he retreats back. Like that is exactly how you have to play if you're Crim6 in yeah. those situations. So the hard point for New York, I mean, this is what we were seeing when they first made this roster. And right there, it was spectacular. Everybody popped off. Let's um, actually get Kismet to pop off in this interview for the Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Let's get the man on the screen. Kismet, small question, man. I don't know what things are like behind the scenes between the players and all, right? Was there any, like, friendly yeah. trash talk, even, even bad trash talk between you guys and Neptune heading into this match? <laughs> um, I mean, there was obviously, like, a little bit of, like, not beef, but, like, the, we wanted to win. Um, we, like, we kept calling him Neppy Nep and the call-outs just messing around because we were just trying him. Uh, no disrespect, but, you know. I mean, no, like, personal, personal beef, but we wanted to win. It's all fun in the I game. Respectfully, yeah, yeah, all yeah. sunned him, right. so, I mean, that's fair. But <laughs> I will have to say, you know, coming off the Pro-Am, you guys were looking like the best hardpoint team in the game, and it felt like that again in this series. So I have to ask you, what sets you guys apart from other teams in that game mode? Um, I think it's just, like, I don't know how to word it. Like, when we play, the like, the fundamentals correctly, we're unstoppable. Um, there's a couple times where we get in like situations where we like rush situations or you know Don't play it like our life or whatever and we've been like honing that in like in our scrims the past week was just like be a hard kill Be annoying be a thorn and we've been excelling in that and it's been showing uh, Kismet congratulations on the victory there. I know you guys need points and that was a huge one against another bubble team uh, I want to ask oh, yeah. you though in some of the high-pressure situations that we've seen you guys in a lot of round 11s Especially at the major you guys have folded in this series though in that game two round 11 you guys clutched up What was the discussion like after the major on how to get better in those scenarios? I mean truthfully like it wasn't really big, a big conversation. We saw each other, like, we saw we, how we played at the Pro-Am, right? And we saw that we clutched, like, I don't even know how many, like, round 11s or whatever S&Ds and that. So we knew it was there. It was just had fallen off for whatever reason. So we kind of went back and watched those. And then just we had JP, our analyst, and, and Bobble go over a lot more of, like, strictly S&D. And it's been helping a lot, like, in the late round situation because that was what was hurting us the most. And now I think late round, we're just kind of unstoppable. Yo, JP is that guy, by the way. Shout out to JP. Oh, he's, he's, oh, yeah. he's amazing. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, yo, kids. All right, so this is where things get really serious, right? This is the last question, yeah. by the way. You guys won the two easiest games on your schedule to close out the year. My question to you is, man, are things starting to really turn up over there? Are things starting... You starting to feel the pressure heading into Major 4 to uh, make it to champs? I'm going to be honest. Like, I, there's no pressure. Um, oh, man. We know the situation that we're in, and it's like it is what it is. But we have, like, the GOAT on our team. We have, you know, three superstars okay. that are, like, young and coming up. Like, if we do what we got to do, bro, like, we're not going to lose. Talk your talk. Ayo, hey, Kismet, congrats on the big win. Keep getting those points, and um, I'll talk to you next time, man. Keep this ball rolling, all right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> My man, no problem. Kismet, by the way, the, um, the guy that gets all the dirty work done on his team, and he does it so well. Um, I'm so happy to see this team win and thrive, man. This storyline is so fun as you're in the bubble. I just love that he called himself yeah. a superstar there. <laughs> he said, you know, we got the GOAT and three young superstars on this team. That just shows where their heads are at, and uh, it's got to be nice to, to feel like we don't, I don't have any pressure here I know we're gonna make it so we'll see if they do it it's good confidence and good confidence comes from good plays right because it's gonna play the game it's gonna bring us back to search and destroy where New York were able to win a 2v3 man it wasn't easy and I mean it was terrifying right with the, some of the snipes that Spart has been hitting for him to still be alive in that situation that was just such a breath of relief I'm sure as soon as Hydra got that shutdown Krim dude Krim when he started pre-firing this and got Hydra weak I was like oh my gosh who is gonna turn this corner and just out of pure reaction
reaction time, get the stray two bullets to kill Hydra, but Hook actually doesn't hit the slide and check it, so obviously Hydra's able to cover. Yeah, that out. was a terrifying round as well because it was so slow in the beginning, the first 45 seconds, nobody wanted to do anything, and then Hydra ends up getting that first blood, and then he pushes all the way through the other side of the base, and they knew where Spart was gonna be playing. He always plays deep sand back there, and there were a couple rounds where Spart got some big pistol kills on players trying to push him, but Hydra's like, nope, I'm killing you this round, catches a good timing on Spartan from then on out, they end up clutching it out. So, you know, in those round 11 situations, New York playing composed. New York making it happen, baby. By the way, that major for major form out there in Brooklyn better be a hype more than anything else out there. You New Yorkers better turn up, but um, we're gonna turn up because the next series of the day is gonna be a fun one, okay? We're gonna see Optic Texas face off against Minnesota, but before we get into that, yo, New York Subliners and Krim are really trying to rack up those points, especially with the last major right around the corner. But ladies and gentlemen, on the other side, we got the green wall and also Minnesota rocker, Ken wait, we'll catch you there.
Call of Duty League is brought to you by TeamSpeak, the official communication partner of the Call of Duty League. And AimLab, official first-person training partner of the Call of Duty League. Unleash your potential. Hey, we interrupt this programming to bring you a very important message. Did you guys buy your tickets for Major 4 yet? Buy your tickets at nyxl.com slash major, and you can come see me July 14th through 17th at the King's Theater. I swear to God, you better do that. You better do it. You better buy your tickets, all right? You ain't getting in if you don't have tickets, so what are you doing? Don't make me mad. Don't do that. Don't make me mad. The North. In the darkness, a prophecy is told. Four warriors. Confronting them like challenging the winter itself. The snow that blinds you. Gives them strength. And the ice. The ice belongs to them. Prepare yourself for a cold wind blows. gentlemen welcome back that was really happy hey uh, welcome back to the call of duty league you know what I'm, I'm kind of upset right now i was just looking to see if the minnesota rocker were having a watch party like they usually do but it's tomorrow i was gonna give a big shout out and show some love but welcome back to the desk my name is veli of course you guys already know the deal this is ali and also nameless but let's talk about the match at hand we got mini versus texas right and when it comes to rocker and also optic both of these teams really good but the thing is who's gonna be better today we'll find out very soon but in regards to optic though i'm kind of concerned at least so we know the deal already with illy we know the deal already with prolude and whatnot but from what we saw yesterday especially against boston optic were exposed and it, it wasn't a pretty game at all to be completely honest i'm specifically worried about the control to be honest because optic was the nastiest control team in Yo. the game i mean they had an 80 yeah. percent defensive win rate 37 percent of offensive win rate and on tuscan specifically which they got 3 0 on by a boston breach team who has been struggling in that game mode granted they have had a team change but we're going into the same map of mode in the series against minnesota rocker and when we had that listen what were in the comms well it wasn't a game plan it was all oh, this guy's dead all oh, this guy's here like nobody was making a play call they weren't inconcise with each other and that's what i'm worried about heading into the series against minnesota rocker who was five and oh stage yeah. three qualifiers so heading into this this is going to be a very rough matchup for the optic texas and when it comes to the game field keys of victory nameless what you got have to win the rotation battle on hardpoint they only won seven of 22 rotations first boston outscored them 256 to 41 win winning rotation wow. for optic texas they just couldn't deal with that pressure man i did not think i'd be saying this about optic texas versus boston but they got a rebound from that rare tuscan control loss they lost 03 tuscan to boston yesterday just an uncharacteristic loss on that map we're used to seeing dashy take over them being the team that's applying the pressure like yeah. instead we saw nero absolutely popping off vivid in their face like having them trapped back in spawn they were in a box so like optic have to bounce back in this series but they're going up against the minnesota team belly we know online is a different story online is a different story 100 but you know what i feel like optic might be okay because yep. if there's one person that they could rely on to really show out it's going to be the mountain dew featured player of the match right it's going to be mr seth abner himself shout out to scump the king alley 
This guy, he's gonna be the one that we're really looking forward to to really pick things up for this Optic squad. I mean, even yesterday, he was the player that was putting them back into the game. They had a struggling start on that Kavutu, and they ended up pulling it out because Skump got green control, and he was just absolutely frying everybody. He gets those streaks, and so we're gonna need to see that Skump heading into today because this is a huge matchup for their stage four. Oh, this is gonna be scary. Take a look at the stats right now, it's by the way. Man. Yeah, dude, this guy is killing it. How many years has he been playing now, Bo? It's been a long time, man, like 10 years. He's just missed a Consistent, always finds a way uh, whenever the team's struggling. He gets them out of tough situations. It should be no different this time, expecting him to continue this play. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at the maps and modes right now and see um, what games these guys are going to be playing on right now. Ali, I know you're able to take a look at um, Bow Cage Hardpoint to I kick things off. Again too. That is insane to me. The double Bow Cage, my worry right now is just how mixy Minnesota Rocker has been ever since their new team change in adding Havoc. They get very, very on this map and of course that Tuscan control I mean optic again it was a very rare loss in this map and game mode but then again it happened just yesterday so Minnesota Rocker obviously looking to capitalize yeah, I mean, this series, looking at these first three maps, like you said, Mixie is yeah. the right word. These guys are trying to go at it. Optic, I mean, on Bocage, I mean, they're a team to fear, right, across both yeah. game modes. I mean, we've seen them lose a couple of Bocage SNEs at this point, but yeah. I fully believe in this team on that map. I fully believe in a Minnesota Rocker as well. Can't wait to see what these guys are going to do after seeing what they did at the last major. But let's see this over to my boys, Bryce and Tun, fellas. It's good to see you again. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and it's going to be a great game. Texas versus Minnesota. An awful lot to kind of break down for this one turn. There is so much to talk about Texas. Looking a little bit flat coming out yesterday. Uh, Minnesota coming off the back of a disappointing major after a great qualifier for them. Can they do it again? They need the points. They do need the points, but I, honestly, I think it's probably a good time to play Optic if you look at it one way, but then another, a bunch of people will probably say it's a really bad time to play up against them. A tough loss against Boston yesterday. We got a first-hand view of that one. Do they bounce back with a bit of a vengeance here? Has the fire been lit for them to finally just kind of wake up? Because I think a lot of the Optic fans online maybe getting a little bit frustrated with how things have been going. This is legitimately a very, very difficult game. I would have said, you know, if they would either lose against Boston or Minnesota, you would probably put your money on a bean against Minnesota. But then there's also part of me, we were just having a small discussion there, that the way that this series could possibly go, if Optic 3 0 this, it, it wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility. I don't think anybody would be like, whoa, that's wild, because uh, we've got on, two Bukajas, and then we have a Tuscan. <laughs> I, 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 but, I, no, I know you're going to say like, yesterday, da, 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 but... Look, here's, here's what I'm looking good at. Maps for them. I, here's I what know. I'm looking at, and, and you know what I'm going to say, because I've brought it up a million times when talking I'm about teams. The... Benchmarking. It is time to figure out the benchmarkings of these teams. Minnesota, 5-0. and oh, Last time we saw them in qualifiers online. Went to the event, lost to Thieves, beat Boston, and then lost again and went out of the event. The number one seed going in did not make any higher than top eight. I need to find out what's going on in Minnesota. I need to figure out if they can figure out a way back from the brink. They are one of our lowest teams right now in the CDL standings, and they are fighting for their very spot to move forward. Texas is an unknown quantity. Yes, they come out slow yesterday. Boston did beat them. Boston had a team change. We're still trying to figure out how good it makes Boston in the long run. But also, where do Optics sit currently in our power rankings? It has not looked pretty for them. I know they've been looking for a sub, but this is a game. This is a game where I need to figure out, is Optic currently struggling with themselves or a Minnesota just that good? And it only can be answered. It only can be told once we find out what goes on. Well, let's see. We're going to get a first-time view of it once again. Can Optic turn it around after what was a very, very poor showing yesterday? And honestly, you know, after they went 120 points behind Brycey, they were pretty good on the Bukash Hard Point. But obviously, when you start 120 points behind, it makes it quite difficult to win. They outscored the Boston side straight after they managed to start shooting back. They cannot afford to be that slow up against this Minnesota side. They need to be switched on. We need to see what we see in their map number one up against Minnesota, up against Boston yesterday from the Optic side. But it's going to be tough. This is a, it's a strange series. It's always that kind of layout between these two teams. It could be a 3 or one way. It could go to a map five, round 11. It could happen. Anything can happen, Brycey. I, I am going to clip. <laughs> This is very true at the moment. Havoc just setting up, waiting. Scum throws a shoulder against him. Dash is going to try and go for the bait and switch. Not going to work. Havoc for the reposition. For these players, do they know he's here? At the moment, they do not. They're wondering where he's gone. And Havoc has uh, just played that one pretty nicely. 
Yep, keeping an eye on those spawns heading over towards P2 in around 20 or so seconds. Kill starting to flow the way of Optic Texas now. Three in a row from Pro Loot. Caught a little bit of flack yesterday, and it's always going to be the case, though, when you're in instead of Billy, but I, th I think he's doing a solid job for the squad, but at this moment in time, you know, there's a lot of questions asked over this Optic squad. You're going to have to answer some of those questions as well. Not a good showing yesterday. A win here, though, will be a nice bounce back against a tough Minnesota side. Can't quite find the kill there, can Scump. Is this rotation over towards P2 is going to belong to the Minnesota Rocker. Can Optic find a break through the front? Well, probably just trying to do everything he can to stay alive on this P2. Do not allow Minnesota to get that even a little back support. You can see Optic, though, sliding through Barn here, trying to get those kills going down, but the kill feed is betraying them, even while they are gaining points. And this is already a bit of a weird game here. Both teams trading back and forth. Stanley's got nothing on the board. Optic are leading. And it looks like it might be Minnesota to eventually grab this scrap time. Yeah, not too bad from Optic, considering that the rotation was there for Minnesota. Prevent a complete wipe of points going the way of the Rockers' side. Well, that final 20 or 25 is going to go their way. I'm going to have to look at this rotation. They've overcommitted once again here, though. Look at this rotation over towards P3. Yes, they will get those final seconds of scrap. But these fights over towards P3 now. It does seem as if the transition from Shotzi and Skump was good. And in the end, it is going to be Minnesota with the more beneficial spawns, but Optic are the ones inside the point. Oh, Optic still leading, still have this rotation. Scump just trying to play his life here a little bit as his teammates have disappeared away from him and attached. Stays alive. Scump's very, very weak. He's not going to be able to get any further out onto that one. And Minnesota take the lead back from Optic. Shotzi, though, going to be in here again. Again, it's a mixy one here on Bacage, and we kind of expect that from Optic. They do love to run this time down. Shotzi trying to do everything on the four streak, but Prolu takes him down with a grenade. And I think mixy is the right word, Tom. Yeah, it's actually now they took all four members of Optic out there, but then again, it just answered back immediately. Texas are here, ready and waiting. Shotzi, that full spree isn't going to continue, though, just to keep an eye on that, because the team kill comes through. It does not reset the streak on the scoreboard. So bear in mind, that is not going to be a seven spree if he does manage to find his way there. But Minnesota just about holding on. It was their rotational win. If anything, you know, they had a hold of the spawns. They don't really benefit too much for it. It's kind of an even split as we head over towards the barn, though. Optic are the first ones here. Can they manage to get some time? The SMGs are just about there. It's a pretty even game, though, Bryce. It's hard to tell any sort of difference between the two so far. It feels like Minnesota are maybe getting those flurry of kills a little bit more often as we see one once more. But Optic are right there with them. It's only a 10-point game. Oh, it's a Tatch who's uh, really having fun this map indeed. And I've got to be honest with you, a Tatch on Minnesota has probably been one of the biggest Minnesota stories of the timeline because he's always doing well. He's always the player we keep an eye on. But this being Bakaj <laughs> means regardless this game is close. Stand defense is way in. Scumball find two. Can't quite find the third. That might open things up here for Optic to finally get a few decent amount of points here on P4. A final 10 seconds of scrap time. Well, we'll go over towards them if they get inside the point. But heading over towards Boat, that's where the contention is going to be. Minnesota will have plenty of time to set themselves up here. <laughs> it's a one point difference. How? <laughs> exactly. It's always the same thing with Optic on Bacage. It doesn't matter about the slaying. It doesn't matter about anything. It's just going to be a tight game until we get into the second set of rotations. It does look like Optic are doing a pretty good job of trying to get these back spores coming through. You can see Prolute. He's also going to have backup in the form of Dashy. But nobody on the hill at the moment. Prolute looking for the L hit. And it's going to be Attach again that plays spoiler for it. Scum gets another one towards the back. Minnesota getting time. Shotty gets the kill, but Attach is still here as well. And bearing in mind how far we've come into this game, how little points have been scored. And the rotations for Optic yesterday across both of the hard points, they only won seven of the 22 rotations versus Boston. We need to see a little bit more than that for the side of Optic, because it doesn't feel like those rotations have been in their favor whatsoever. But they have managed to keep themselves close here. Priest will find two. They shut down that potential scrap time for Optic, who are now going to start setting themselves up for P1. But I'm seeing Lou of P2 coming shortly after it and we keep a hold of that barn side spawn well, we can see pro luke gonna try and make a little bit of a difference here can he find the kill onto river he does and this is where optic will try and flip the spawns of p1 of course nobody touching it because why would you get any time on a game like hard points but eventually minnesota going for a little bit of a soak and this is where positioning comes to play priester has tried to hit that back tin the spawn's coming for minnesota as well 
Up to get a bit of time on P1, but they will lose the P2 spawns. Rotations again. We highlighted at the top of the show here before this game kicked off. When they did out, when they did actually rotate and win those rotations up against Boston yesterday, they outscored them by over 200 points over two different hard points. The rotations are so important for this team. They are not going to have it locked in here for P2. They haven't really had it locked in whatsoever. They are still close though. If they can start winning some of these rotations, they should be able to pull away and they may well start moving this rotation here, but the spawn comes in for Havoc towards the back. So does the rest of the team. Minnesota are going to be able to lock this one in. Optic not quite at the races here yet. Well, you can already see Optic had a chance to maybe get a few kills coming through, but Attach manages to find two, and now Optic have been pushed out. This could be the difference for Minnesota. Can they push Optic back? Can they get a little bit of breathing room in the scoreline? Let's find out how they are feeling, though, with a Minnesota rocker listening. Alright, yeah, I'm reflanking tunnel, okay? I'm gonna stun for for hot here. The shot yeah, back left hand. Give me top grandma's. I'm gonna get him in the back. 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 I'm gonna this is a really good time right here. Yep, I'm just Actually, back right Nice, keep it in right. Top mid, top arm, top arm, perlude. Top arm, perlude. I'm gonna open up this. Tool side, tool side. Is anyone gonna push? I'm stunned. Per tools, per tools. Ready to go, ready to go. Nice, good shot. Hold my front door, hold my front door. Let's right, work a break here. One more tools. So we're going to break together. I think he's dead. Dead. I'm going top grandma. Yeah, well, Bacard is chaos, but let's find out how Optic Texas are dealing in it with a listening of their own. He's staying on time. Was that guy taking him my left? Yeah, he was top house. I have my left. Yo, he's top nerd, top nerd. Nice one. One more for Frizzy, Frizzy. To left. Yeah, front right, front right. Front right, front right. Another one front left, front left, front left. One more, one more. Straight attached, straight attached, dead. One more. Front left, front left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top, 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 top. He went top. He's top, top. Junchao, you got it. Junchao, you got it. One more time. Just stay on time, man. One more time, one more time. One more time right here. Yo, I'm PT tanker now. What's open? Right pinch? Yo, what, what's right? What's right? Cool. He's already... Yo, nothing hitting left. Nothing hitting left. I have my phone. Top nerd. Top nerd. One more ZM. Yep. One more ZM. I'm trying to use one. I'm trying to use one. Yo, Z absolute nubsy. First guy. Nice, dude. Last guy. Last guy Z one bullet. I'm trying to use one. I'm on right. Front door. Front door. Last one. Front left. 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 Nice. Good job. We're back in the team now. Slow down right here. Yo, one mid street. One mid street. Alright, slow down. We're good. We're good. One mid street. Dead. 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 Okay, back now. Yo, Z dead. I have your mid street. I'm trying mid street. I'm going. You in back at bracket? He's like. Yo, yo, Lamar take. Lamar take. Lamar take. Give me a second. I'm in tunnel. I'm in tunnel. Yo, yo, yo. Dead, dead, dead. Yo, one's in tunnel. Turn right there. Turn right there. Turn right there. Turn right there. Lamar take. Yo, what's one down? What's one down? I think we killed him. Is that guy in the back? Or where'd he go? Lamar take. I think we killed him. Is that kill him? Yeah, he's back out. Back out. Back out. Back out. No, he's in the back. In the back. He's 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 well, we've gone through many hells and a lot of lesser needs, and the game is still within touching distance. Only 15 points split between these two teams, Tarn, and at the moment, Minnesota are soaking on river. Yeah, and as soon as Optic start to get some sort of rotation, they start to get some points. Minnesota did a really good job over towards P3. Optic answered back immediately and will kind of get a little rotation here over towards that P5 hill. The fight towards the back, I mean, it was Priester who was staying alive. There has been some criticism of him this year, and rightfully so, it has to be said, but he stayed alive towards the back, and that allowed Rocker to get a bit more of a foothold to not allow Optic room to breathe. And there isn't much room to breathe between both of these two teams as we head into a third rotation. Keep an eye on that game clock. We're under a minute yet, and that could really tick in. It could really be influential throughout the rest of this game. A third rotation of Bakaj, we go. Well, it's a one point difference as we hit the rotations again, Tan. And well, that time dog is kicking down. And because this is P1, the teams aren't really going to jump on it as much as possible. It's all tied up between these two. Oh my God. This is ridiculous. 35 seconds left on the game clock. 
Havoc coming back into it. He's going to soak again for another tiger. No, one point difference. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Anytime is, is good time today. Anytime is good time when the game clock is that low. If you can even find a slender lead, it really could make the world of a difference. Scum. But let's see what Scum can do. Can he find something over towards oh. the back? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Attack. Oh, that looked like a guaranteed gunfight that he does not win. That game clock is down to under 30 seconds. The lead for Minnesota, more than that. That's going to be paused here. Optic going to try and take this last few seconds. No, they've jumped off. They've jumped off. They probably could have done with a little bit of a soak there just to give them a few more seconds as they have to make this rotation. Attach finds another one on six string. That will be a seven for Attach. Looking for his eighth. He can call in the glide bomb now. I don't know what's going to happen. You should never really leave the hill on hard point when you have the advantage like they do. They have the spawns. He can continue jumping in and out because at the moment they are still in the lead. But Optic have to keep pushing. A contest is not good enough. You have to get there. Optic have to move standing with a nade to take down a teammate as well seven seconds on the game clock ton they, they kind of want to get out but they want to just contest it as best as they can here as well minnesota are playing this perfectly here comes the glide bomb optic will find a breakthrough dash your shots you need to survive you need to get back inside the hill four seconds remaining still doable for optic here they could still take the lead when it comes down to this hill maybe just tie it up it's going to be super super close we need to consider the rotation we need to consider the game clock but minnesota find a way in havoc and it's hatch up there What's going on? Rotations in as well. The game clock is over, and Minnesota somehow do it. Oh, I can't take games like that. <laughs> what have we just watched? Chaos reigns in the CDL. Minnesota Rocker take map number one. Hill shy for both teams. Bacage is different, man. It's just a different hard point. We even saw it early on. I knew it was going to come down to time. Big stories of that one probably has to be attached. We saw him doing a ridiculous yeah. amount of work. The That's most the damage in that game. Non-traded kills. The glide bomb as well. And they lead against Optic Texas. I, I honestly think the moment you seen Scump got behind them, and it was a gunfight that attached from the look of the minimap shouldn't have won of course the doors there there's a lot involved when it comes to that fight you guys at home will know yourself sometimes when you run through that door can send players left right they don't know where they're gonna end up not sure how that gunfight went down if we could get a look at it, it would be fantastic but i feel like that was so crucial if scump finds that kill towards the back stays alive lets the rest of the team come in it's all hypothetical but the fact that attach found that then found a glide bomb that then forced optic off the point at a certain stage brought that game clock down again influential players from attach massively influential players and we'll we'll have to see that again I, because honestly I, I feel like that's the moment that swung the game in minnesota's favor completely yeah, it did. I mean, we called it out. We saw it on the minimap. We knew the rotation was going to be big. There's been a lack of holding the entire way through on Bacage. And it, it's a weird scenario. All right, let me, let, me, let me explain this just a little bit. Obviously, one of the reasons you see players kind of jump around some of these points here, especially on this map, is it can be very difficult to hold anything if you don't have all the angles. Bacage is a very tight and intensive map. There are multiple entries to multiple hills. Flanking is prevalent. And it kind of forces these teams to play this. We don't want to commit to getting time because in case then you know where we are, you'll take us down and then you'll get time. So they end up kind of dancing around at left, right, this and center. And Optic, oh, obviously, <laughs> Optic are the kings of doing that. The problem is not soaking time on P1 may have cost them. Like they could have done with that extra five seconds. No, there were four players yep. from Optic around Barn, Little Hut, and Top Grand Mars, I think. And none of them were on the time. I know it's seven seconds right but you needed every point of that to move into p2 yeah and that seven seconds you give it on your time you also then keep that game clock up a little bit more as well these are the kind of situations though when you're in a because it's that close towards the end the game clock's so low it's just instinct you're running on like just screaming call outs wherever they are but honestly i think there's moments like that let's give some credit to minnesota though at the same time that attach went off towards the end that that for me is kind of that game winning one but but he had a really good map as well fantastic stuff from him we, we asked to see more of priest he had a relatively solid game had a couple of crucial kills heading over towards p5 and minnesota rocker will take the lead and then we're heading into a bacage search and destroy as well it's a good map for both teams slight edge there for the side of minnesota and of course their snd has improved tenfold since Havoc came in. 
So that is going to be a difficult one for Optic. Who just... Yeah. It just feels like they're all at sea at the moment, Bryce. Yeah, I don't I want to talk about Top Dig. I want to talk about Minnesota. The reason yeah. I want to talk about Minnesota is obviously I said coming into this game, what is going on over there? Last time we saw them in the qualifiers, 5 0, looked fantastic, got to the event, disappointing to say the least. They now are in a position where they have to be better than good. They have to be great moving forward. Uh, and this team already, there's a big map one they have taken off of Optic. And they'll be looking to get the points here. Optic seem to be kind of giving equal points, maybe, to the teams down low there. But here are the keys of victory for Minnesota Rocket for this one. They need Priester to bring a bit more slaying. He's the only player on Rocket Negative at major number three. And that didn't go well for them, Tom. No, it didn't in the end, did it? That was disappointing considering how good of a qualifying section of that stage they did have. They looked phenomenal. And they came in and fell short. Very, very flat performances. But you have another opportunity here. Can you have another good online stage? Put yourself in another good position and close out the year strong. And bearing in mind, Bryce, where they are sitting in the standings, they kind of need to have another good qualification period at this point. Yeah, they certainly do. And Maybe the S and D in the qualifiers will be that catalyst. Five one last time around, not great at the major either, though. But we're talking about the negatives of Minnesota, and we can't get over this story point. We cannot overemphasize this enough. Points matter, and they matter even more than they have done for the rest of the season. It is crunch time. There are no more excuses. You can't afford to have a bad week. You can't even really afford to have a bad man. Every team is going to be battling their hearts out for the chance to attend champs. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a lot of teams are now going to be looking at, at that because Optic are going to have to reevaluate it as well. That's two in a row they've lost now. And that used to be one of those maps, Bryce, where I would I, I would look at it for Optic and sort of see itself. Right, okay, yeah, it's, it's not a guarantee, but you're looking pretty good for it. So that's one that falls to the wayside. But yeah, the, on the Minnesota side of things, it is very much needed for them. But moving I, I, back to... Thing, go on, I was going to move back to Optic in a certain sense, but go on. This is the, I think you're going to make a similar point to I am. Essentially, it's, it's two different stories, right? Minnesota Rocker need to find form. They have an uphill battle to come. Optic, technically have an uphill battle, but a very different one. Yeah. This is about rebuilding, reinvigorating this team, finding form for the last leg of this one. We know they've had a setback and it is horrible for all the fans out there. But the truth is, adversity makes champions and they have an opportunity to rise from the ashes of disappointment and potentially make an incredible storyline going forward. That's the positivity I'm taking from this. They may be knocked down, but they will get back up again, but they have to show it. And they have a little bit of time to make it happen. Minnesota on the other side, fighting for their lives. So <laughs> this is not a warm up for them. This is not a rebuilding. This is a knife fight. They have to win and they have to keep winning. Good opportunity to do so here on Bacage. Very much leading the way when it does come to these attack rounds, but Optic's defense has been very, very solid. But 52% of your 3v4s on Bacage SD. That's quite something. Optic Tex is very good at finding those first bloods, so that's probably going to come to fruition here. Priester with a 1.32 KD is going to be an issue, but so is this guy, Havoc, on your screens, getting very aggressive on the defensive front. Optic Texas about to get aggressive on the attack. Oh, Shotzi tries to make a bit of a push. Hasn't worked out. Havoc sitting in the corner, and they are shooting him from every angle. He's going to try and escape, and he's done it. Scum's going to try and challenge him here, but already going to get taken down. Scum brings it back to a three versus two. They're looking for him, and Scum's not able to get that second one down, and now it's Pro Loot alone. There's a big stack from Minnesota over towards B, and Havoc just played that so wonderfully. Staying alive in that position, he knows they know where he is. <laughs> so that's drawing attention. They know he's weak. They kind of have to go for him. But probably just played this well. Minnesota managed to wrap around, and I want to say he's played it well. He's got a little bit fortunate with the timing, but can he hold the 1v2? Nope. No, he cannot. The touch will win the gunfight, <laughs> and that will be the round to Minnesota. Gets a little bit fortunate on the rotation. It goes his way, but the rotation outside of the site does not. Yeah, a little bit of an anti-climax there, but at the moment, it will be Minnesota Rocker that lock in, and <sighs> I, don't, I don't know. Minnesota Rocker... I'm looking forward to seeing them play well. The thing is, if I'm being honest, being a fan of, of Call of Duty Esports, the fact that it's coming down to this and so many teams are doing well in the last part of the season, it makes it even more complicated for us as casters and talent in the desk to try and figure out who's actually making champs. Because there is, there is so little division between these teams. 
We actually had, if, if I'm being honest, most people had Texas taking points off of both the teams they've played in these last two days. I don't know, obviously, if Optic Texas are going to make a comeback onto this game. It's very likely still an incredibly talented team, but it is an interesting turn of events as we come into one of the most close and climactic points of the year. Briefly, just to answer back to your point, that they have, as the grenade comes through onto Shotzi, they have so much talent and they have the luxury of the, having the time to try things out, to try things on this roster. So if they are losing games, yes, okay, it might put them in a bad spot coming into the major, but they need to figure something out. They have the luxury of how many points they have to have that opportunity to figure things yeah. out. Uh, the other thing is they probably still want to get into that winner's bracket in major. Yeah, that, that would help. Four, but don't ever count them out. Up to Texas have done more with less. Probably going for the chow and he doesn't get priest up. Have it though, managed to get dashy. That fleeting numerical advantage goes away. As Scum goes for the chow as well and goes down. Prolute left alone again here against Minnesota. The benefit is time. Did you see that play with the FOV? They shot at him as well. They shot at him as well. Prolute will now know this is going over towards B. Still has a grenade in his hand. That bomb will go down as will Standy 1v1. Looking for this player trying to figure it out. He didn't see that player either. Going to go and check every single angle for this. Havoc and Prolude, and he's going to be found as well, and he gets taken down. Not able to get the clutch. Great first gunfight, but just couldn't find the player in time. Rocket, take another round here into this one. And still, we keep moving forward. There's a lot of S&D to play, and I'm trying not to... I don't want to doom sell or anything, but obviously... No, I, I, I want to kind of highlight the fact that Minnesota have to dig their heels in. They have. I, I think in these situations, though, it's come down to Prolo being left alone and 1v2s again, but they, they're not seemingly impossible, I want to say. Optic are having opportunities here, but Minnesota are just about on the skin of their teeth. Winning these rounds. Touch is trying to get position, though. Gets aggressive, finds the pick as well. Dashi might be the next in the chopping block. No. The old reverse a room, and Touch is going to get taken down. Three versus three now. Very important trade there from Dashi. Very Look interesting. Minnesota. Minnesota, Minnesota have, have called a play. A play's coming through. Dashi's about to see them. I don't know if he's all the way to get the gunfight. Huge win there from Dashi. Stops Minnesota in the tracks. They lose all position as well on the map. The idea of going as a three is for trades, and they got none of them. Oh, oh, oh I, I, know. I, I know knew what, what he was doing. There. I knew exactly what he was doing. He wanted to jump on the bomb immediately there. Even if that player was there, if he hadn't have seen him, it was his only win condition. Shotzi sees him though. I, you know, I, I very much respect it. <laughs> I very much respect it. That had to be the play, right? Yeah, essentially. Uh, like I said, the, the, the kind of the crazy thing is, is when you go for that, essentially the wolf pack tactic, when you hit something as a three, it is on the understanding you should be able to get a trade. Dashi making that kill and getting out was huge, and it forced Minnesota into a terrible position where they didn't have map control and they could be locked down. Dashi again comes through for Optic Texas. And the first blood is there. Standy, while he breaks into the old bomb site, will be nervous about making any further moves. Dashi, one of the top performers this season. Is it going to be Scump who's going to find another opening here for Optic? It just seems like they're in that flow state that we sometimes see them in. They seem to just be moving around the map fluidly. And Rocker don't have an answer at this moment in time in round number four. So this is four now for the side of Minnesota. Can Attach find a pick and make this a little bit more doable? That's what he wants, but there is nobody to find. And it's now a one versus four. No bomb for Attach. He was great in map one, but in map two, he's not going to get the one versus four as Texas tied up two to two. Good bounce back from the side of Optic. Get themselves in a better spot. Shotzi with a final kill coming on through. It's about that first pick again from Dashi. These first bloods have been very, very influential. Rocker not able to answer back with some of these 3v4s that we have statistically seen come through a little bit more than everybody else. Can they find some here? If Optic do find those first bloods, it's been very, very close. Four spree for Dashi. Keep an eye on that. Three more on the glide bombs there, but look at this aggressive push from Minnesota. Optic are ready for it as well yet. Yeah. Never mind, Scum gets the first blood. It's only aggressive if you win it. <laughs> if not, it looks a bit foolish. 
Havoc going to try and make a play here, but he is surrounded by the green wall. And they have actually chosen to back up here. Mm -hmm. Potential mm -hmm. rotation call coming in. Yeah, and but Minnesota kind of gained something from that there. A lot of real estate over towards this A side. Havoc very pushed up. Optic do, of course, lose a player in that transition as well. It's a three versus three as Shotzi will fall. And Havoc is in a position to do a lot of things here. He can make the cutoff if any players do push through Barney. He can make the flank if this bomb goes down to B, which is inevitably what is going to happen. Scump in a good position here as well to watch that mid-map. This is all over the place, though, Brycey. This could go either way. Minnesota not in a bad spot. Comes down to gunfights. Whoever wins these first gunfights gets the opportunity to squeeze. Havoc managed to get down pro loot. However, big trade coming in from Scump. Brice is actually going to be on the bomb. He needs reinforcements coming through. He's trying to take him down. Attach and Dashy. They're going for this one. The bomb is being defused. He's going to try and find Scump towards the thing as well. Is he going to get it? Yes! It's been defused. Is it? Yes, it was! It was! Rocker did just enough. Optic were not there in time. They did not have the positioning. Minnesota put all their eggs in one basket in the hands of a defuse. And Attach did just enough. Didn't win the gunfight, but he bled time. And Optic are going to be sick about that one. It's one of those bomb sites. As soon as you give it up, if you're on the attacking side, which you kind of have to, it's so open. There's not much cover to try and get yourself out. It is such a dangerous prospect that players can do that. We've seen it so many times, specifically at that site. Minnesota get the job done, find themselves in the lead. Still streaks ongoing for the side of Texas there, so a small silver lining. That's what was around. They should have won. 3-2 down now, but still, this is doable. There has been opportunities. It's just been clutch up players from Minnesota that's winning them these rounds. Can Optic finally close a couple of these out? Oh, huge two there from Optic. This should pretty much be a settled round now. I don't think they're going to find anything oh else, but Shotzi's going to go down. He just gets the worst cut timing ever, and Scum cannot get the trade. And Dashi will eventually answer the call That's once big. again with two. This man is pulling Optic out of the fire. He has a mighty strong back at the moment on this S&D. Tied up again between these two squads. And I want to say that was minimum number six. That might have been number seven for Dashi there. Let's keep an eye if he does have a hold of that glide bomb because that changes a lot for a round at least for the side of Optic. Changes a lot for Minnesota. They're going to have to think about that as well. They will know exactly what's went on, but Dashi on the seven. Dashi with the glide bomb. It's all tied up, but the answer in the hole here for the side of Optic Texas is that glide bomb. Let's see where Optic go with this. Does he use it for info? Does he use it maybe when they go back and on the defense? There are a million options for this glide bomb and he won't really commit to it until they need it. There he goes. He's going to go for it now. It is for the information. He's called out A is open. He's looking for it as well. Goes in towards L. Finds nobody. But what it has done is opened up that A site. That's okay. It works out for Optic. Now for Minnesota, do you have the retake? For Optic, that was eggs and all in that one basket. you got to win this round if you've invested that. Looking for the retake here. In through Granny shots. He's going to have to do something. He gets taken down. Standy with the first blow, but look how spread out Optic are. They're looking for the flank, but so is Havoc. Scump with an important kill. Three versus three. Managed to get away with it as well. Scump somehow playing his 15. life and has got out. Havoc got another one. Scump's going around the house. He's been found, though. This time only 19 health. He's trying desperately to stay alive, and he goes down. It's on Pro Loot. He just has to get one kill, and he has Pro Loot with the clutch. That's just enough in a perfect position to gun Rocker as they dive for the bomb site. And the clock and the clutch comes through. Chaos on Bacage. Just perfectly well timed. They started the flank round. You've seen them through the mid map. I think it was him and Havoc actually passed like ships in the night as the rotation then comes through. Finds himself towards the back tank. And it's always going to be difficult for Minnesota with that little time left to defuse that bomb. And Optic will get one back. The glide bomb was invested though. Very proactive from the side of Optic to send that one in already. Probably with three. Can they do something here now on the defensive side? Can they extend this to a two-round lead? Such a close search and destroy. Back and forth all the way. Minnesota yet to make any sort of decision on which way they want to go. Shotzi making the decision for them. Havoc will fall three versus three now as Proly falls as well. 
Nobody on this map likes having a numbers advantage for more than a few seconds, but <laughs> speaking of somebody who does, it's Dashy with a dagger from long range. And this is Shotzi waiting. Careful, he's going to slide. Catch on this corner and look for somebody. No, he takes Stanley to the face. Attach is going to go down on the elbow. And Stanley's going to have to challenge this one. And Dashy was pre aiming it for a second, but Scum eventually comes in to pick it up. And Optic Texas. It's been a bit of a weird round of SD so far in this series, but they are now on map point. They have, they have been the better side. It's felt that way. They have found themselves in positions where they can win these rounds. Been a couple of good clutch up situations from the side of Minnesota that's kept them in it somewhat. But it's felt like Optics map most of the way through. And it would be a super important one for them as well. I'll caveat on the rest of the series, uh, maybe in a little bit longer, but I, I feel like this is crucial for Optic. Absolutely crucial that they try and get this one closed out. It's aggressive here from Optic. Who's coming through the doors first? Stanley's going to take down Shotzi again. He's gone down to a three versus three. Chaos is raining. Stanley's finds one. Looking for Prolu. Prolu is not going to get away perfectly clean. He's stunned. But Overwatch. Overwatch again. Get the bat signal up because Dashi has arrived. One more time for Optic with another trade. Down to a two versus two. Can they find him? Dashi again oh and again. God. It's over for them. It's now a one versus one. A Priester versus Dashi. They need him one more time to lock this map through. And Priest is going to hit the tank. Does he see him? It might just be timing here for Dashi. Can he get away? Somehow, even with Priest knowing where he is, he just couldn't catch him. Oh, he's seen him. He's seen him this time, though. And Priest will eventually close the round out for Minnesota. Had eyes on him for so long. But Dashi can't be elusive. Eventually finds the kill and ends his reign of terror. Because Dashi has been lights out here on Bacage. But Minnesota bring a round back there. Five to four. Things getting a little bit scary for the side of Optic, but that was so crucial for Minnesota. Now. Well, how does this continue? We see Minnesota on the attack. They've set up for an A defense. They have not set up for B. Now you can eventually see Prolute trying to hold this one down here. Stanley's managed to get up top. Rotation coming in from Optic. Havoc gets the oh, first wow. one to Dashi, though. And that's not what you want if you're an Optic fan. A man who's been so, so instrumental. But Shotzi's going to... Oh, my goodness. Shotzi's got caught on the flank. That should be the round. That should be around 11, realistically. Unless Prolute and, well, just Scump can pull something out of this round. I don't think he's going to be able to. Scum should surely get caught from the left-hand side, or his right-hand side, I should say. That's going to be the round. That's going to be round 11. Minnesota comes screaming back into it. It felt like Optic were just striding away. But a final round to decide. Map number two is coming up. Everybody watching this one. So the bollocks are clenched because this is a tense game. Optic looked like they could have had it completely under control. Minnesota went up to begin with. It all comes down to this, around 11. 2-0 for Rocker, or 1-1, one, one, as Texas bring it back, and they have the attack again. Optic. Slightly goes towards Optic. <laughs> it does, it does slightly go towards them. Optic winning 67% of the defensive rounds, and Will Havoc's Ooh! just gonna fly through the middle of the map. Scump will trade it out, but that's a lot of map control now for Minnesota. They will go for the plant. It's going to have to be a retake for Optic here. 3v3 situation retake. Sandy's How is he alive? Hell. Look at the amount of space they've given up here. Attach has buried himself as far back in spawn as you can go. Priester gets that one as well. An optic need magic. They need Dashy. They need, Prolo, they need a clutch as well. And now it's only Dashy. Dashy has 20 seconds to pull off a one versus three, and he finds one. He looks for a second. It's no good. Rocker has made a comeback. They have taken two Bacages. They are two to zero up. And I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that just happened. 5-3 up. It felt like they were cruising. And Minnesota send it down in map. Havoc is through kitchen in about 15 seconds. 
Dash your 12 and 6 will be what a lot of people will talk about, but the Minnesota Rockers side clutching up so many times. Think back to the 1v1 with Priester and Dashi. Think back to that Ninja Diffuse. So many moments that Optic will look back on and say, there's so many times we could have clutched up in, in this game. Unreal All play, of by the way, to hit that. <laughs> that oh, I, I mean, because that, I mean, typically you head to around 11. It's such an important game. It's, it's, well, it's a more important game for Minnesota if you want to go in that direction, but the fact that they would then do that in a round 11 to go two to zero up Take some stones, Bryce. It really does. Well, here's the thing. It not only, obviously, he almost got two from it. Didn't. It got traded to one one. But this Push is the crucial thing Push it did. Up. The crucial thing is it shook optic. Their setup was broken. Dashy moved away from the tank. He moved away from the bombs like the plan went down. It's chaos. But Minnesota Rocker are two to zero up in this series. Map three. What can await us? Don't go anywhere. We will see you right after this.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew and Zenny. Armor your eyes with blocks gaming glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com slash CDL. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. You are joining us in a little bit of a spicy game here. Minnesota Rocker against Optic Texas. So far, Minnesota Rocker are up 2-0, winning the last S&D 6-5. Much of the disappointment of Optic fans because they were up 5-3, Tan. Yeah, the fine margins not going their way, especially when you talk back to game number one. Few little plays, few little gunfights here and that. Pricey, they could have been 2-0 up here. Yeah. They really could have. They really, really could have. Uh, I suppose it comes down to a lot of things here. I know fans are disappointed in Optic, but I said this coming in. I'm not too worried about Optic's performance here. All they really want is to get into the winner's bracket and figure out what they're doing with the setback they have suffered. Uh, for Minnesota Rocker, they obviously don't have that luxury. They don't have the luxury of already being qualified for champs. They don't have the luxury of being able to lose any 10 points where they can grab them. And they will be looking now to bury this control, take the 10 points, and then focus on the next game because they need it more. But anything can happen in the CDL. We've seen reverse sweeps of plenty. We have seen all the way to round five map 11s. Let's find out. We jump into the control. It's Tuscan. We're on board. We're dashy. 1.4 KD on Tuscan control. And well, if he was firing like he's been firing in that search and destroy, then well, I'd imagine he'll be alongside that. Here, yeah, heading into Tuscan. Uh, just to discuss this map, of course, notoriously, it is a staple for Optic. But, it's like production read my mind. A four game win streak for the side of Rocker. Optic are one and two over their last three performances on this map specifically. What do you go on? Do you go on statistics over the whole of the season or do you go on form price? I like to pick form on this one. Minnesota Rocker could very well close this out on three here on Tuscan. They certainly could. But I'll tell you something. I have always believed that Optic, even in its many iterations, are the most momentum based team in Call of Duty history. They catch fire. It's very difficult to put it out. And that's what they need right now. I mean, all things said, I don't think I've seen Dashi lose a gunfight this series yet. Well, they needed to not. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they really do. A's already captured. I'll take on their way over towards B. It's like life advantage for them, but I love that from Havoc. He plays this he plays this role fantastically. He's up there with Envoy, Shotzi, these guys who flank all the time and just being in use to surviving in and around, sort of kind of past the line of where Maps is, where P5 is. As long as you're pushed up past there, causing a nuisance as best as you possibly can, it is very difficult for an attacking team to find a push through. A little bit of radio control here for Optic Load, and this is what they do well. Radio control, aggression. Find their way through, they're on to B, can Minnesota answer back? Looking for as well with those nades are starting to rain in here, but Dashi on Overwatch, 6-0 now. Just when they need him the most. He is not missing. Eventually gonna be stunned, oh. that glide bomb will not come through for him. Optic, though, do have the kill lead. Scump going to try and hit the back. He's in his own full streak at the same time. And here comes the next Optic hit. They're waiting for Dashy to back them back up. Shotzi's already taken down Standy. They're looking for positioning. And unfortunately, before Dashy can get there, they lose the gunfights. Oh, great gunfight win for Scump, who's on the five spree himself. Minnesota need to wake up very, very quickly here. The defense is not something you want to be throwing away on Tuscan. Still plausible that they close this one out. The seven life disadvantage for them, though, is never going to help things. Attach will open up with one pre step with another. That's a nice clean wipe, though, and that's going to make things that little bit more comfortable. Early will back off. No need to sacrifice your life yet. Although he may not have a choice in that matter. Oh, he actually won that gun fight up against Havoc. Pre step will answer back, and that is going to be a little bit of control now for the side of Minnesota Rocket. Shot He's going over, and that does hit him, and he has to back up. Shotzi can actually try and push the advantage as well, and he wow. does. He cracks it open just a little bit. Huge play from Shotzi. This may open the door from Optic. You can see them swarming now, looking for this blast play. Rocker do not have the lives available. Shotzi and Dashi combining for this one. Havoc going to try and stay alive. He finds two as well, but is that going to be enough? Only three players from Rocker left alive, but 13 seconds. Can they win the gunfights? Priest finds one nose to be attacked in the end. It's a gunfight towards the back. It's pro loot. He needs to jump on at some point. His teammates are not there. You got to get on. You gotta get on. Standy's on his own, but this is doable. Two kills is what he needs. 
just one mistake with the scumble find one. Can he get the last one on the shot? See, no, he's got back up. Optic will find the attack in round. But just about. Very well placed. But Minnesota was so stubborn all the way through it. They were behind all the way, but just staying alive so well towards the end, but not quite well enough. Well, it wasn't clean. It was not textbook. And it certainly wasn't pretty. But a win is still a win. And Texas get the attacking round. Dashy 10 and 3. Can they hold their defense here? I know, obviously, it doesn't matter as much going up 2 to 0 because of the way the rounds work, but it certainly feels a lot better to be up 2 0. Potential is on the cards here for Optic if they can lock this one in. Reverse sweep starts here, yeah, maybe. It's been a crazy game, and it's one, as we mentioned, that this could have been 2 to 0 Optic Texas very, very easily. A couple of gunfights here and there, a couple of little decisions here and there. Very, very different series. Attack coming in here, though, from Minnesota. They're going to start getting progression over towards A. That's going to be locked in momentarily. It's all about the B hit one small. Shotzi's going to be playing that awkward little roll one small. Pushing through radio, getting behind it broken. Just causing chaos in the back lines. Minnesota going to try and find a way through. They just have to hold something that is definitely easier and getting that attacking round, especially considering the way they are shooting at the moment. Just keep trading away for two minutes. Chassis is going to win that gunfight against Stan as well. Pro is going to get another one against Havoc. It pushes Minnesota back further and further on this map. Shotzi gets Done. another one. And maybe, just maybe, this is where Optic catch a little bit of form. That's a problem. Pro loot. Found his way behind. Oh my goodness me. One, two. There's the third there for Pro Loot as the rest of the team now come in from the other side. Very, very well played. He's played that phenomenally. Shot team might have just come off the respawn. So Pro Loot moves himself up. Just good rotation of play in terms of positions from the side of Optic. Defense still in their favor here, Bryce. Havoc just turned what was a horrific scenario into actually a pretty good one. Managed to actually outmaneuver Shotzi for a second here. But they're looking for this player. As you see his legs, he does. Eventually, Havoc will get that kill. But Dashi gets another kill at the same time. And Havoc is caught just a little bit. But stopping that clock for a second as they look for a few more kills. The flank coming through again here from Shotzi. And Havoc gets another kill on this team. But it is not locked in for either squad yet. The next few gunfights will be huge. And Dashi takes down Shotzi on the flank. Stashy in the corner, but Pro Loot and Scump win the gunfights as well. Priester and Standy combining, though, and already Scump on that flank. A constant flank from the side of Optic every single time. If somebody dies on it, somebody else is on their way. Havoc will find Scump on the flank, though, so it's everybody through the front door momentarily for the side of Optic, but Shotzi finds a way around, but Pro Loot gets the job done from the rear. Minnesota just cannot clear out their flank. It's constant from Optic. He will be down and respawning, and uh, it doesn't really matter because he'll be back into this fight before Minnesota can get anything going. But this may be the last hurrah for Rocker. They're waiting for it as well. Scope to see that player, and he's going to get taken down by Standy. Already gone through. Players now from Rocker streaming onto the point. They're going for it on the platform as well. Probably going to try and win it, but he loses to attach. Priest is going to be on here at the same time. Nine versus seven, attached going towards the back. It'll be a single stack at the moment, but oh. Scump guns attach. And Shotty takes down Priest up. And they have found this one oh in the my. seconds they needed it as Shotty wins another important gunfight. And while Optic Standy. lose a stack there in the end, they do Standy. find this round ton. Standy, Standy's inside the point. He is going to fall. Sorry, I, 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 I didn't want to say... Bryce, this series has already been crazy. I didn't want to count it out until it was actually done. <laughs> I, I was gone. I was next rounded. Got inside, but the rest of the team weren't too... Well, actually, they were quite far away. Never mind. But irrelevant to the point. A really good hold there from Optic in the end. And again, it's that flank. It's so consistent. There's always somebody filling those shoes. Right, okay. If you're alive in and around mid-map church, somewhere like that, get around behind them. If it's late, if it's early, it does not matter. They're always going to be watching it. They may well win a gunfight, but it allows the other side to push up. And now Optic Texas 2-0 to the good here in control. It's been such a question mark around their game recently. And this is something that's always been ever present as a good map and mode for them. And they're really answering the critics here. 
today with a map three that they absolutely need. Minnesota Rocket, to be honest with you, I mean, if we want to touch further on into the series as well a little bit, just momentarily, Brycey. Berlin is really not a good look for them as we head into map number four. A seven game losing streak on that half point map. If Optic win this one, it screams of a map number five to me. Oh, at the moment, Sandy's standing in the way of Optic. Many players challenging him eventually. They'll get that clock stopped. They'll get the points onto it as well. Attack's going to be here. And again, they're off of it. Burning a little bit of time. He'll clear it down. It's looking like a much better defense here coming in from Minnesota, but Hammer goes a little bit crazy. Jumps out eventually. Priester will pick up his trade. And Optic are looking to make some pressure over towards B. Again, it's that fluid kind of player that they do when it does come down to control. It's not about setups and being strict in what they do. It's very much about filling the boots of whoever has just died, making sure those rotation things sort of come through. They're filling those spaces where Minnesota cannot answer. But they have run out of time here just a little bit. Down on lives, and this would be a good round for Minnesota to win here because if they then go on and win their attack, they're in a good spot for a round five. There's a lot of if, buts, and maybes. But Optic need to make sure they lock in A here to give themselves a chance to close this out quickly. Oh, nobody near. They're going to have to just push this one. I don't think they can get to B in time. And Minnesota trying to stay alive, but eventually they do go down. And Optic will get back onto this point. And one thing you want to bear in mind here, I know it's a long way off, but we do go all the way to that round five. Ticks mm -hmm. will matter. It does. Touch takes down scum of the point. Minnesota might think about this. Havoc's on the flank. Prolude's out the point. If he can kill Shotty as well, that would have been huge. But they have to make sure that they do not overcommit. 1.5 seconds and six lives remaining. Still a mountain to climb here for Optic. But 1-4 dead. Everything changes. Here we go. Optic. Can they play this basically flawlessly on this retake? Minnesota have players in P5. Shoshi already gets one. Stays alive. Prolus gets a second one. Optic swarming now towards the point. There's a stack coming through as well. Minnesota have to react for this one. They are here in force. First tick done. Everybody from Optic is here. Priester gets two of those. Shotty gets another one. There's a dive in for a touch in the end. And there's going to be Scum towards the back alley. Still alive here. It's a three versus six. Scum back on the point. The King, the King needs to go huge. He looks for it eventually. Somehow he's still alive. pre fire from both sides, but Havoc does manage to get it. And with that, I think it's possibly dead. This two versus four, is it a fairy tale? Surely it's not possible, right? You would think not, but well, you might as well have a go. Prolude will find the kill on the Havoc. Prolude Wait. will find the kill on Wait. the Sandy. Pricey. Two versus two. two. Versus two. It's an S and D round for a point. It's an S and D. Oh. finds it as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, Tatch has to pull off a clutch now. They have the numbers, but they didn't have the backbone. Somehow Optic have got through this, and he has to challenge it. He finds Dachi, oh but Dachi guns him. And Texas, Texas win the control. They will not be taking it any further. That is a 3-0, and that is redemption for Optic. Oh my goodness. How have they clutched that? I do not understand. I'm trying to figure out where Minnesota went wrong here. Optic if did all the hard work, <laughs> but I think the overcommitment over towards Hick, like I, I understand with the ticks, but just let them have it. You're up so far on lives. Just set yourselves up in awkward little positions over towards B, but they decide to send themselves over, lose a couple of gunfights. All of a sudden you have nobody in mid map. Texas could get a little bit of control and that's what gives them hope. But Prolook opening it up with two kills and Dashi finishes the other two himself. So well um, played, the grenade is what gets it done. Prolook didn't have a great game by any stretch of the imagination, but that seals the round and seals the map for his team. And looking at these next two maps, a reverse sweep is absolutely not out of the question. Just cannot believe what we saw. That was a 11 versus six. It came down to a two versus four. And Optic Texas says, all right, watch this highlight reel. We're about to have the double nade kicked it off. They work together as a duo to get that first kill. Prolute then make the kill. Dashy dove through, got another one. They stacked up and attached, looking lost. Did not have a good control. 
and a redemption could have been his, but it wasn't to be. Dashley gunned him before he could do anything. Maybe one of the greatest control clutches I've ever seen. Phenomenal. And I think, you know, let, let's just try and touch on it while the highlights are coming through here to highlight the moments where I think it went wrong. So it takes a long, long time for Texas to get a hold of it. It's 13 to 7. And then it's just a bit of an overcommitment. Proloop flies around, finds that one, and then the next two. <laughs> I mean, I can't even remember what happened, to be honest with you. I think it was just a blur. Three to zero for Optic. Is that the route back into this game? There was a first sweep that happened yesterday that involved Optic, and it started with a three to zero on Tuscan control. It was them who were on the wrong side of it. Minnesota didn't they get a trade. Be... Did not get a trade. A Dang. trade. Four players, and they couldn't trade. It was a complete four-man wipe. Complete four-man wipe by two of them. Well, I said this before, and I still am going to stick to it. I believe Optic, and it's just been a thing, right? I've been around Call of Duty for a very long time. I'm old, but Optic have always been a momentum team. They've always felt better after getting a win under their belt. And this might be the catalyst. This might be the little ray of hope that people have been asking for as we move on to map four, Tan. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the stats that are coming on through here. The Rocker are on a seven-game Berlin hardpoint losing streak. But wouldn't it just be typical optic to lose that? <laughs> don't, <laughs> I, mean, don't. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, believe yeah. anymore. All right, we are seeing ridiculous well, things from the CDL every day. We are. It, it's every single day. It's just absolutely crazy with these points on the line, with champs on the line for a lot of these teams. Players are stepping up. They're really, really. Oh, but looking at these next two maps, I, I really don't like them for the rocker. I really don't like them at all. And, and they're the team that need the wins, Pricey. They really are the team that need the wins. They really do need the win. And we, you're going to hear us talk about this a lot, this split, because it is very, very important. The points all these teams are on, as you can see, what we're basically calling the bubble. It goes from Ravens down to the subliners. Ravens with a huge win earlier, by the way. That brings them just a little bit higher up. But so many of these teams fighting to get out of this position. Rocker are in ninth. Currently, if we ended everything today, they are not going to champs. And they have to fight their way back here. Reverse sweep against Optic, a team they look like they could beat, would be devastating for them. Especially with Subliners continuously getting points. Some Gorillas lose today as well. Boston got points against Optic. It's difficult. This is not a fun time for the teams in that bubble. And that's why we have to keep highlighting it. Every 10 points you can grab is oh so crucial. I think Boston getting that win yesterday was so big for them, wasn't it? There's that yes. little buffer there now. And it would really take like some really good events from the side of it. I mean, you're talking LNG. Thieves, maybe a little bit of resurgence from them. Now Rocker as well. It would take quite something for them to have that big moment, all of them to then push Boston down because that, ex that extra win that we really didn't expect to come from them could make the difference. And even honestly for Boston, a couple of wins here and there could, could solidify them for champs at this stage because of how mixy it can get below them as well. Not, not all of these teams can get maximum points. It just doesn't work that way. Yes, there's a lot of points still on offer, but they all can't get them. It's going to be wild. Honestly, it, it's just given such an extra factor to this these final couple of stages, hasn't it? Of course, we have our majors. We're very concentrated on who's going to win them, etc., etc. But there's this other story of these champs teams. Who is going to make it? Who is not? I mean, Paris are pretty much solidified now as far as I'm aware. They, I think it would take something flawless from them all the way through. But we, I, I see it a club on Reddit. Reddit. Temp, Temp is gunning for a couple of people's futures, to be honest with you. He's just like, I just want to play a spoiler. And, and that's what we'd love to see. We want to see Paris really try in their games and just be a nuisance to some of these squads looking to try and find an easy dub. I don't think they're going to get it by the sounds of things, what's been happening in the scrims. But nonetheless, Bryce, this, this whole final stage to get to the point of who goes to champs, it's going to be very, very intriguing. I, I I feel like I've aged in the past 48 hours already <laughs> trying to figure it all out, to be honest with you. It's, it, 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 uh, gray hairs are coming and you say you're old. I'm, I'm right alongside you, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> it certainly is. And if you kind of want to go to Champs, obviously, you can get yourself tickets. They are currently on sale. And we will see you at the Garland Centre on August 4th and 7th. And obviously, all the days in between. We will be there in beautiful, sunny LA term. Sonny Ali, I, you know what? I, I think for me, like, I'm just looking forward to seeing you suffering.
Well, that's a lovely thing, but let's move on to our next map here. Of course, we are going to go Optic versus Rocker. And Dashi has a 1.4 KD this series. Optic are shooting, but can they continue to do so? Is there a reverse sweep ridden in the stars yet? We will find out. Rocker, they've got Havoc on their side, but really the slaying has not been. And they have not got a good record on this map. We will keep saying it because is this going to be eight losses in a row? Or do they break it here and now on the hearts of Optic fans? Apologies to a couple of fans who've been tweeting at me, telling me it was a 2v6. Whatever happened, it was impressive. Anyway, here we go. Rocker, seven game losing streak, as I've already alluded to on Berlin Hardpoint. You need to turn that round up. The reverse sweep is on the cards. Optic come out swinging in map number three. I think we're seeing five. We'll have to find out at the moment. P1 will be in control of Minnesota. Optic looking to try and break this one. And the player slips through. Who's that? Of course it's Shotty. Of course it is. Who else would it be as Shotty manages to break into this point? Stays alive, trying to get something done, but Havoc eventually finds him. And still, the point's heading over to Minnesota. It will be Optic, though, who look for the rotation, potentially just to get a little bit of scrap time here, maybe. Well, the scrap time wouldn't be bad, considering Rocket did start on the more beneficiary side. Shotzi can't find that final kill. It wouldn't have been the final kill, sorry. There's a couple of other Minnesota members there, but that's 42 points all the way over towards Rocket. Optic yet to answer. But that is typical. Honestly, I think a, a lot of teams, you, you don't want to panic. Oh, well, Shotzi, maybe panicking about that gunfight, but you can't panic too much if you didn't have those spawns. You lose initial control. It's always very easy, but you might start panicking if Rockets can find a way into P2. Optic trying to lock this one down. Don't really have great control here, Brightsy. Restoring a decent little spot as all the rest of his team to try and break through. I can see at the moment he's going to be Optic Pro who manages to find three. Unfortunately, one is going to be his teammate. They're trying to stay alive. A little bit of lion's share of time going over to Minnesota. The difference is going to be here. Scrap time versus rotation. Dashi finds an unbelievable kill, by the way. And uh, Attach is going to also going to come under trouble. Shotzi jumps back in, says, no, nope, no scrap time for you. We're going to have both scrap and rotation. Oh, look at this, though. Dashi all the way over towards the back. Finds the kill, and there you go. And the sword to get the scrap. Want to get the rotation. Fire is going to be crucial here. Shotzi and Cole will be dipping and diving through all the many doors and corridors that we have on this area of the map, and Prolet needs to try and win this gunfight. Standy's found a way through, so has Havoc. How on earth is Standy right up the street? How is everybody on Optic dead? What am I seeing? They flipped them out. That is an unbelievable break. Optic needed to hold it. And now they have to jump into the teeth. Minnesota are set up. Attached finds the first one on the dashy. A push coming through fire now for Optic. Priester, can he play? Spoiler, he's looking for the players. He finds Scum, he knows exactly where Shotzi's going to be. He's going to try and call it out, but Dashi gets a kill as well. And Shotzi gets another one. Oh. Unbelievable play from these two. I mean, they broke it back for a final 15 seconds or so. Which you'll take. Fantastic break back from Optic, but you have to say that setup that they had mustn't have been good enough because Minnesota just sliced through it initially. That could have been a very, very different scoreline heading over towards P4. And Optic managed to lock that one down. Very much going to be the tight game as it goes. We're about 20 behind. Optic, though, over towards this P4. Do have plenty of control. Can they lock this one down? Is Minnesota trying to force through the front door? Having will find the first. Dashi will trade it away. Optic still in control. Well, Optic going to try and get as much time here as possible, but they've got to just resist a bit of pressure. That's why they're not committing anyone to this point quite yet. Eventually, starting to soak up a little bit of time, but Prolet does go down, and that's always a danger here on train. Can be taken down if you are going to take that back spot. Oh, it just gets caught over and over again. Explosions ricocheting around Ticket. So Optic finding a route back into this here. All the way towards the trains. Something for me that I kind of want to point out is the final few seconds of this hard point will fall out in front of us. Optic are the best team on the game at locking down points on that P1. Of course, we've seen Minnesota have a lot of luck over towards it as the game does tie up. Keep an eye on this rotation. Keep an eye on them trying to flip things here over towards P5 to put themselves in a better point. Just score plenty of points over towards P1. You're going to have a hard job doing that, though, when you're all dead. 
Minnesota continue to lock this one down. They're going to have to try and find another way through. Tap's not actually able to stop Shotzi there. He gets the kill and gets away. And now as he commits, he's going to try and take control of clutch stairs. It's a little bit of positioning play coming on from both teams. Obviously, if you're going to be Minnesota, you do not want to see the spawns here to Optic. Scum doing everything he can around fire. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Trying to find this wrap. Shotzi at the spearhead of this attack now. So we can already see Rocket sitting tight over towards P1. Shotzi will find Attach in the mid-map, though, and is the collapse maybe going to start coming in here as Optic? Looking to try and find a route through. Shotzi. Wouldn't surprise me if he's going to try the jump to try and get inside the point. Scump will find one under Priest that's standing inside the point, trying to watch on train. It's just going to be about Shotzi potentially coming in on the flank. Finds a way in. Points on the board. Optic inside P1, but Minnesota not too bad of a spot to try and retake this. I say that. In five seconds remaining, they're already thinking about the rotation over towards P2. They are here, but Attach wants to break this or at least try and contest it for a few seconds. Doing away full for the second is not always ideal. And you can see Minnesota are going to try and make it this one. I'm digging. Probably just going to go down, but Shotzi and Stanley and going to try and get these kills just ricocheting through eventually. Skump trying to play spoiler. Not going to be enough as he sits clutch stairs and attach will take him down. But it will mean that Optic have had free reign to go and get this rotation. Yeah, that's a small win, I would say, for the side of Optic. Minnesota are the first ones there. You pretty much split the points. And what was a very, very tight game, but you head over towards P2. Let's see if they can find some good time themselves here. Pro loop. Good play from him when he's sitting at 7-11, but honestly, so many of the kills that I see him find are always so important. None more than those, well, I want to say, three or four that he found towards the end of that control. Scump now, our Mountain Dew featured player. What can he get going here? Not too much. Havoc will find him. And they're sort of trying to find a break on through. Havoc's the bait through the front door. Probably will find him. I'll take nearly finding a way back. Oh into the lead here now as Prolude still inside the point still surviving Bryce dancing diving ducking eventually taken down by Attach Attach versus Scump and Dashi will actually just intervene and take him down as well but here comes the question what can Shotzi do the X Factor for Optic has found himself in street towards spawns and of course he slips the net of course he finds it and eventually Attach picks him up I imagine they were looking for him. It's something every team in the CDL has to do. Where is Shotzi? That's the ones that will be coming out of the lips of Minnesota Rocker in that kind of situation. But it is going to be Optic now in the lead. Shotzi through the front door. Has Scump just behind him as well. Can't quite land the shots, but Dashi pushing down the street side. Prolude is there to help things out as well. It's just a little bit of control needed from Optic as Rocker lock in some good time here. 40 seconds remaining. Over towards the fire hill. This is good time, but Optic around the outside of the street. Havoc though, gonna be in a position. Tries to find them, eventually gets a few bullets down onto many players, making them weak. Allows his teammates to kind of get back into it, but they are gonna lose the spawns going? here. It doesn't really matter if they flip them out. Just hold it for as long as you can. Probably with a great challenge that just comes through and wipes them off the map. Scrap time for Optic. We'll put them back in the lead. Will the rotation matter? Such a back and forth game between these two and map number four here. Minnesota definitely giving a better showing than the stats give them credit for. We still get rid of Shotzi, so that flank is nullified, if only momentarily, and continues to be as Priest will find another on to Pro Loop. Dashinko trying to find a push down this side, but as this all goes on, Minnesota are soaking up some very, very nice time. And Priest is doing a very, very nice job of locking down this side of the map for them as the rest of Minnesota just going to continue to lock it themselves. It's only Dashi who can find a way through and find two. That is massive from him. Can he stay alive? Unfortunately not, but it has opened the door. You can already see Optic pouring out towards back train. They want to try and get control of this as well and come flying through eventually, but will be taken down. Prolude, though, trying to play a bit of spoiler. You can see him holding the position, allowing his teammates a little bit of an easier run through this to try and contest as much as possible. At the moment, it will be Minnesota in the lead. But bear in mind, P5 is next. And then we go all the way to P1. Anything could change. Curious if Havoc is going to maybe try an extension over towards Fire here, but just trying to lock down top three. Good power position, 23 and 17 from him. Having a great game on the AR. Can Pro Luton Co find a way through? Of course they can. 
Fire is in their hands. They find three kills as well. And that's going to be a little bit of time over towards P5. They've got the spawns they want for 45 seconds or so time. But can they find some good time here over towards P5? Well, basically, Optic need to continue to hold this. They can soak time here, and they're doing a very good job of it. This is basically the perfect scenario for them. Hold P5, hold P1. Take the time, bring it back for them, and they're doing it. They are winning the gunfights over and over again. Shotty eventually will be taken down. That's a two-piece from attack, and the flip comes in from fire at the same time. Dashi Split. needs to find some sort of hero play, but fortunately, Optic are going to come up towards P1. They have control. They're going to fire Havoc tries to make a ridiculous play. A benefit to Optic... They have the spawns. Statistically, the best team in the game over towards P1. Need to be the best game in the team over towards... Best team in the game over towards P1. Can they lock this down? Havoc through the front door, though, is going to find one. Dashinko is still inside the point. Havoc needs a little bit of backup from the rest of his team. That should give them a little bit of time to make their move up the map. Dashi not in the spot on top of the bookcase. His attach will now just try to cut the head of the snake off. Pro will be dealt with here. Minnesota are in a good spot to try and break this one back. Dashi is still alive inside of the point. He will be dealt with. And Minnesota find a way through. Optic get broken far too easily there, Bryce. They do. And this is going to be crucial. Shots are going to hit the flag. Finds Priester. They need him. He's looking for the second one as well as Prolu combines. They have found their way through. Danny's going to try and do something here. Slow them down. Scum's looking for him. And does get taken. We are going to P2. It's shotty time. Things will get very, very messy here. Priester will try and lock down the stairs. Minnesota have the luxury of that lead. They can rotate early. They can get themselves set up. But it's a very, very tight knit setup inside the point. Probably will find the first one. And will the final few players on the Minnesota Rocker follow and Tatch will find one. Havoc will find another. They are so close, Brycey. Now they're getting into it as well. Kills going back and forth. Three forward. seconds. Tatch just holding off for them at the same time. And they're going to try and clear it here as Prolu tries to get through. He has to slide in. Priest is going to be here as well. It's just a one second game here. But if Optic hold, they can win it. Scump is here. Teammates are here. Optic are here. Minnesota just need one good trade and they'll win this one. And it looks like it might be Shotty trying to stay alive. He goes down. Oh and my they win God. It. Rocker break a seven game losing streak on Berlin Hardpoint to crash Optic out of this series. 3 1 for them. The 10 points gets ticked up. And oh my goodness, what is going on in the CDL in stage four as we head to the major? At this point, I'm going to stop looking at statistics because I think you just go into a game and whichever team is shooting, whichever way you're feeling it. That's the way it's going to go. Minnesota Rocker find themselves a 2-0 lead. Optic seemingly back into the game on one of their better maps. Rocker haven't won it since Christmas. And it's a gift. As Rocker will find it. It's only a 14-point game. Every single one of these maps outside of the one the Optic won was close. But Rocker have had the ice today. I, I, I just can't wrap my head around how three of these games are so close and Optic haven't won a single one of the close games. They are close. That's the, that's the kind of the crazy Super thing close. about this. We're talking about Optic losing, you know, the two games, but they just, the, like, all these maps have been so unbelievable. And I thought there were so many times I thought Optic had the advantage. They got broken, you are right, a little bit too easy on some of these hills. That final P1 rotation for me, they need to do better there. Yeah, P3, P1, just never really looked like Optic's kind of time, but I suppose the silver lining is there is still an awful lot to play. Winner's bracket is not a million miles outside of possibility. But yeah, I know Optic uh, probably not going to be happy, but Minnesota Rocker, it is the start of their campaign. Flawless last time in the qualifiers. They do it again. They'll look fantastic. So much, so much time to, to kind of contemplate here. There's a, there's a lot on both of these teams. I, I said that the win is a lot more important to the side of Minnesota. Optic really do need to figure out what is going on out very, very quickly. And whether that comes viral or loss, maybe they'll look at something here and say, right, okay, maybe something will click. The, the thing is for them though, look at those score lines. It, Minnesota are a good team and they are not far away from them here. What is that? It, 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 
a 13 point difference on map number one a one round difference on map number two smoked them on tuscan and it's a 14 point gain on, on berlin hardpoint map number four i'd imagine tuscan search and destroy would have went a similar kind of way but especially when, when, when you look at the statistics for, for minnesota uh, in that they haven't won berlin since i was in my 20s <laughs> which admittedly was only my 30th birthday last month but it's still a long time ago Bryce. It, it was yes. a long time ago, but I'll tell you something. It's been a wild ride for this series and for most of today, but we're going to let the bear desk break it down because I'm sure they've got a lot to say about what we just saw. Ted, you old boy. What's up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Minnesota Rocker for winning that series against Optic Texas. And, um, hey, Minnesota's looking really good. I will say this, though. When it comes to hard points, it's, it's really interesting and fun to watch because the simple fact that Rocker always seems to have those very tight, contested games that go mm. down the wire, yeah. man. Yeah, I mean, that was a great hard point. Uh, I mean, watching Optic in this in this series, and especially in that Berlin hard point, they're trying to play the right way. They're making the textbook yeah. play. They're rotating. Something just feels different without Illy on this team. They're getting two-piece like we saw on that rotation P4. Priesta, they're looking for him in the back. He just ends up getting three kills. They're getting reflanked by Havoc on P3. These are things that Optic was picking up on prior in their last iteration of their roster, but it's not happening now. You could tell it seems like an overcorrection when they're going over what's going wrong in scrims, and now on the map, it's just not translating to wins, man. Minnesota just outplaying them. Yeah, and like we said before, I mean, we, we talked about the sub situation. Shout out to Pro. He's had great moments, phenomenal moments. Yeah. And shout out to that 2v, what, what was it, Clutch with Bruce? That was That nuts. was insane yeah, that in was control. Insane. Yeah, Ali, throughout the entirety of this match, what was your favorite moment that you want to break down? Honestly, it has to be the amount of times Havoc just hits a route and respawn. It's just the amount of times, like, even though they have hill control, Optic is in a situation to hit the front and the kills start going their way. But the second you look at the minimap, it's Havoc literally making the perfect route to reflank from behind them and shoot players in the back. And so, like, oh, this is where Optic gains the momentum. They actually just got a two-piece. They should get control. No. Who is it? It's going to be Havoc that's hitting the reflank. Like, we saw it there in P3 in office. Like, he hits that reflank. He spawns Optic in the back. Sure, there was like 15 seconds left, but they were able to give that up, give them that time, make their way over to trains, and just have a beautiful hold. Even though Optic tried to hit through train side, it was, I believe, attached that was just sitting in train room, just getting piece by piece by piece, just ruining every plan that Optic tried to put into motion. And one of the plans that um, he ruined and helped his teammate Havoc out with is going to be the scuff play of the game where um, he offered up his body as resistance and then <laughs> the defuse went down. It was a great round. I mean, you see, they end up getting the defuse here. Priestess goes, I need to hop on the bomb. You see, attached looking over him. Uh, right prior to this, Havoc ends up getting a kill and then gets traded out. But he hops it, attaches challenging Dashy up top. He makes him a little weak, so he knows he's going to back down. And then he's just trying to anticipate the next player. Finds Skump and ends up losing that gunfight. What but it's bro. enough time for Priest to get that defuse. I mean, that's just a confident play out of the Minnesota boys, man. And what was a wild search and destroy, especially that round 11. Can't believe what happened there. Well, right, exactly. What a play by Attach, by the way. I'm just offering himself to add in that aggro, right? And be able to be the focus of attention right there. But... Also, let's take a look at points to see how the Minnesota Rocker are faring so far throughout this year with champs on the mind. Listen, I know all these teams coming into this stage when they're looking at the schedules of the other teams on the bubble. LA. They were like, okay, they're about to play Optic Texas. They're probably going to lose that. Yeah. Well, these teams have been beating them. You got Boston yep. who beat Optic Texas. Now you have the Minnesota Rocker who beat them as well. And this bubble is so ridiculous with LAG now taking a couple of losses, still at 125. They're looking to get bumped out. But yeah, that's a big win for the Minnesota Rocker. We know how good they can be online. They need some more. This is actually getting kind of scary from Optic Texas as well because the two seed is really good. That's what you want. And, um, yeah, they start to get knocked down a little bit. I mean, they could face the uh, higher seeds, maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe they could maybe, get overtaken. Maybe. Right? If this is the trend that Optic's going to continue it's on, real. I mean, and obviously, like, these aren't the toughest matches, right? Uh -oh. If they don't figure it out soon, I could see Seattle definitely taking over that number two spot with how they looked at the major. Yeah. For sure possible. And um, L.A. is out of the top eight right now. Um, let's take a look at Minnesota right now. This has been insane. But um, so far, Ali, Minnesota, we saw what happened at Major 3. They they got two big losses at. Yeah. I personally feel like, you know, they, they could have done better, but they lost to Toronto. This stage, they have to go all out. 
I feel like there were a lot closer matches than maybe we expected. You know, they went five on stage and we were like, you know what, Minnesota Rocker are absolutely disgusting. Now we need to see them do it on land. They did have two unfortunate losses, but they were really close. Like the Bocage hard point against Toronto ended on time. Like it was 6-5 search and destroy. So like we still saw what they were capable of. Havoc was still frying. And so heading into the stage four, it's just about the consistency for them now. It's oh, yeah. just about translating the stage into the major. And I think absolutely. this is a huge confidence yeah. boost heading into it. Yeah, I think it's about translating it to land, right? Like yeah. it, like Bryce was talking about, it's hard to benchmark this team because we saw what they did in the last stage. They were dominant. They were 10-2 and in respawn. They were 5-1 and one in S&D. And then these guys, they went to the major and they lost the two teams that they beat during the regular season right. play, right? And they got 3 owed by the Toronto Ultra. Not only that, they played LA Thieves and they lost their two best search and destroys. So that's why I'm a little hesitant to sing their praises just yet. I gotta see it on land. No, no. At the same sing, time, they need those points. No, no. Sing their praises. They, they were filthy on land throughout the qualifiers, but they went to land and they went what one and two exactly. the thing is at the end of the day minnesota rocker knows we like them but expectations are definitely there for a reason right if these are the teams that you beat online you need to beat them on land as well but also let's take a look at the minnesota rocker schedule looking forward where they have the float of millionaires next and that game could be a good bounce back game for them ali hey i could say bounce back but i think this optic texas was probably the biggest win under their belt yeah now. yeah Absolutely. I mean, coming back after the, you know, disappointing major to have Optic Texas right out the bat, that's a huge W for them. But I'm looking at that Florida game, Allie, because you know who they're going that's up scary. against. They're going up against that hey. major major <laughs> guy. So that should be interesting. And Florida desperately needs points. And then also that is a major match on the bubble. Both these teams yeah. basically equal in points. Whoever wins that one game can decide whether you make it to champs or not. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, pull out your pennies right now because um, when it comes to challengers, trust me, you want to go to Boston. And um, Allie, there's yet another passion pit event and I can't wait. There's another passion pit and man, am I bummed that I'm going to be able to participate in it. But <laughs> I know it's going to be dope. The venue itself looks incredible. And we've seen what these challengers players have done, not only at the opens at the other majors, but in the CDL scene as well in the pro scene. The amount of players that have been brought up has been the most this year than they have in the past. So go and make a name for yourself. Yo, Ali went off right there. Let's <laughs> actually jump into the game field victory spotlight as well with Havoc, the difference maker for the Minnesota Rocker. Havoc, I'm going to be straight up with you for this first question. Hey, what's up, man? Um, my question to you is, um, I don't talk to you behind the scenes and whatnot as well. What happened at the last major, and how do you guys really look forward to um, just be better on land and throughout the rest of the stage to finish out strong? Uh, yeah, the last major, stage three, it was super disappointing. Um, we really let the 100 Thieves series slip and then, um, and then couldn't close out. Um, I just blanked. I didn't even know who we played second. Oh, we played Boston, and then... Um, Toronto. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Toronto. That's how you know he's in the mix. Focus on the beast, focus on the future. Yeah, we had a really close series with Toronto. It was definitely winnable, but we didn't capitalize on a lot of um, like good positions, and we really like we, we really threw a lot of our, our our good positions. So going into that, we just want to like calm the nerves. Or going into the next major, obviously we want to get there, get winners bracket, so we can uh, get a good run going again, and then calm the nerves and really just play our game. Killing in New York. My personal question for you is when I see Respawn, I just talked about it. Like, it's probably one of my favorite things to watch when you guys are in the mix is that whenever the team seems like they're about to get footing, you're the player that's behind them. You're the player that kind of plays spoiler. I want to know, is that just a decision that you consciously make to your team and always be like, you know what, guys, like, I'm hitting this route. And, you know, if I get good timing, I'm going to be behind them and, like, ruin their whole thing? Or is that somebody else kind of saying, somebody hit the flank, somebody get behind them, and you just happen to be the player in that situation? Yeah, so me, me and uh, Standy, uh, we actually have kind of the same role in that regard. Um, a lot of times it just feels natural. Like you're that guy off spawn. You, you're on your way to do a route and you see, you kind of judge how the kill feed goes down and then you base your route off of that, or at least I do. So a lot of times uh, if I'm doing it correctly, it, it, it leaves me in a really good position to kind of mess up their setup or get behind enemy lines or uh, just be in a good spot. Uh, Cole, congratulations on the win. You guys look great out there. And for you, it just seems like you're willing to take any risk on the map. You know what the reward can be. And in round 11, you took a crazy risk. Was that your call? Who called that? Because you looked like you were rogue on the map there. But you get the first blood, and it results in a win. So, you know, those type of plays are wild. And I want to know what's going through your mind. Who's calling it in that situation? Uh, so right there, uh, this is a play that I brought over actually from Texas Nation, but <laughs> at the time, Eli or Standy, he called the play, and I was like, okay, if I have dead silence, then I'll do it because of the new mm. perk system. I had dead silence, I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then I got into tools, the little room, and I got aim assist through the wall, and I started tweaking, and I started just shooting, so that's why you saw me shot. 
Yeah. Um, but I knew eventually I knew they were back plat, so I just slid out. Uh, I knew Eli was behind me, and I, I would trust him to get any trade. So, so it all went according to plan. <laughs> Love to see it. So, imagine if you got that 2K, though. That would You would have been that guy, Havoc, man. <laughs> so I think I would have gotten the two kills if I didn't, like, mess up my sh If I didn't start shooting, I think I would have got both the kills because yeah. I've been in that position sure. before. All right. Well, the way science works, if you didn't die, you would have got the kills. So, yeah, that, that would have been a thing. No, but have a good job on the win, man. And um, I think you guys play tomorrow. We'll catch you tomorrow, okay? Yes, sir. See you tomorrow. All right. Take it easy, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, Optic called the landscapers, the construction crew, whatever it is, because that green wall is looking kind of um, <laughs> sus right now. But, hey, Minnesota Rocker with the big win, and we have yet one more game to close out the day. I can't wait. You got that right. It's LA Thieves versus Boston. This is going to be a good one. But the question is, which version of LA are we going to get? It's been an up and down year so far in Boston. Are we going to get that fast and furious sub duo? I really hope so. We'll catch you guys on the other side for conclusion of the day. See you soon.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Victory in a can. And upgrade your game with a scuff. The official controller of the Call of Duty League. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we made it towards the end of the day where we have one last series to go. You heard it right. My name is Veli. We got Ali and also Nameless, but check this out behind us. We got the Boston Breeze versus the LA Thieves, and both of these teams have had pretty interesting stories this year, right? But Boston has had the most fun one recently. They've had a team change. They brought in my man Vivid from Florida, and the duel that he has with Nero is, um, is kind of special. Ali, how do you feel about this squad? I mean, they're the two fast, two furious SMG duo, right? They're arguably the fastest in the game. Vivid was at a 5.3 engagements per minute, and Nero was at 5.2 over the three stages. Yesterday, Nero had six engagements Same. per minute. That is the fastest out of the SMG's averages so far heading into stage four. And we saw what it was capable of yesterday versus Optic Texas, which a team that is also usually fast in their pacing, well, they weren't able to handle it. Right, and Nameless, man. <laughs> Look at that meme as well. Nameless, yo, I, I loved Vivid on Florida, but Vivid on this team when Nero was different, man. The way yeah, they, they busted playing, against Optic. Yeah, I mean, they were playing absolutely fantastic. And the best thing about this image is that it just shows <laughs> on the car along for the ride. But yeah, you see it on the two fast two periods. I mean, that's what they were looking for, right? They yeah. wanted those faster engagements, and uh, a lot of people criticized them, me as well, and they showed out in that match. I mean, you saw Nero have a huge performance. Vivid went off as well, and he was playing really quick. So for these guys in this series, last time they played, they didn't yeah. have Vivid. They played against the LA Thieves, and the LA Thieves smoked, smoked them. And who had the best series in the other team? It was actually Envoy, the SMG, popping off, going crazy against Boston Breach. So you're going to need this new found SMG duo to really do some damage. And I'm going to give a quick shout out to Gershon and also Joke and E, but when it comes to the game field keys of victory, Ali, what you got? Well, continue letting you be a playmaker. I know I saw Alex tweet from Atlanta Faze not too long ago that he's just like Dylan Codd, a walking four-piece. Well, that's what we saw yesterday versus Optic, and winning the AR battle will be critical. Gab in Berlin, hardpoint. Gab control. It is AR heavy against an LA Thieves team who love pulling out the AR AR guys, all right? Kenny looks so comfortable with that in his hands. And yesterday, the ARs on Boston Breach were struggling fairly early. So we need them to be on point when it comes to this series. But a little bit of comfortability might serve him well in this series right here. I want to see Zenny give back to his stage two form. And if he does, this Boston team will be terrifying. But they're going to have to get past the LA Thieves right now, who had a great show. Well, uh, we're showing in <laughs> Toronto. But let's take a look at the maps and modes right now, see where these teams are going. And I'm nameless. I want to hear your thoughts. I mean, we were just talking about it. there's some Gavutus in here. I mean, that's where we really look at LA Davis and we know how good they can be there. It's just dangerous when you have an extra AR on that team. We saw the last time they started off against Gavu against Boston on Gavutu. It was not pretty. Octane had the time of his life on that map. So Boston looking to come back with a vengeance here, but it's a new team. It's a different dynamic. Uh, in Search and Destroy, Desert Siege, we've seen what LA Davis have been able to do on that map. They've gotten so much better there. And they had a three and two record in Search and Destroy at the last event. That's all they've needed to be really. Is if they're 500 in S and D, they're gonna have a good time in some in some of these series. And at that major, they were finally. Right now, kicking things off on Gavutu. Um, just real quick, Ali, who you got one in this match? I want to hear your prediction. I gotta go with Boston Breach after seeing what they were doing yesterday, man. Especially against Optic Texas, I I'm a believer. All right, well I'm gonna let you know now. I just cannot bet against the LA Thieves anymore, especially from what we saw in Toronto. So I'm going full bias today with LA. Let's get it. But listen, this one. I still got the tag on it. Let's send us over to the house and chairs for the final series of the day. Fellas, take it away. Thank you very much, Des. Good to see that bias flowing all over the place. We appreciate it. But it's going to be a fun one. A chance whatever way we look at it. I mean, look, points are on the line. Good teams in form, you know, in the form of Boston. What are we going to see out of the LEFs? Strap yourselves in, kids. We are about to find out. Took a Here we go. I mean, you know, pick your poison with whatever storyline you want to rock with, like the LA Thieves online versus land performances. Just the fact that all of these seems incredibly tight in the CDL point standings. And obviously, well, now that Minnesota Rocker got their win, there's that extra 10 points of separation between them and Thieves. So I think right now, LA looking to respond in kind, but the only story, well, not the only one, but the one I'm actually focused on, at least for the Kabutus, I think the Vivid trade is like the most interesting roster decision we have had this year. 
and I want to see how he performs because all year long on this map, Vivid has had a 0.81 when he's playing with Florida. Yesterday dropped a 1.26 versus Optic. So we got Vivid in a new system. I want to see how he does. Let's see how he rolls so far is not good. He's uh he's been taken clean care of there by the rest of the guys, the LA Thieves. Good work out of Kenny right off the rip. Your boy's in the kill feed. Now he's up in your grill and your spawns. Nice stuff for either way out of both sides. LA Thieves opening time going their way. Extremely aggressive on this side of the map. We'll see how the spawns go. Good job there, number eight, doing your thing. Spawn on the right-hand side. We'll see how long they keep this going. But so far, a bit of fun time now out of the LA Thieves. I mean, hey, this just turned into like one of the most aggressive P1 setups that, I mean, maybe we've seen this year. Thieves Ever. truly just going and sitting inside of their spawn and all that pressure results. And well, Octane's going to be on a four spree. And now you go over towards P2, where funnily enough, LA Thieves actually the best P2 Gavutu team in the game. Not the best start, though, was Boston looking to bounce back. Nice little amount of control. And funnily enough, actually gunfights tucked away in their spawn. You see LA Thieves constantly trying to put that pressure on. Yeah, kind of keep pressure on, try not to let up on those spawns on the right-hand side. So it's a delicate balance between both teams right now. TJ, though, having a three spree. He's having a good time here on Gavutu. Right off the rip, pulling this one back slowly but surely. Can't quite get into the back lines there of the LA Thieves. Watertight defense in that regard. They're keeping it all good. Now, can they get their way towards the point? Got to worry about Vivid as well, though. He's the man on the top side of the map. He gets himself another one. A three spree and potentially spawns for the squad. Uh, and the break is still not in, Ooh. right? LA Thieves on P2. We talked about their ordinary success. Now they're getting bullied, and now they are running the risk of, well, losing spawns going to this hill as Vivid's on a four. You talk about one of the most important gunfights on the map. Vivid's got the next couple in front of them, but maybe a little bit unfortunate. He gets forced to back down, but oh my got some reinforcements. There's number five. Draza getting tagged from his teammates, but it's not enough. Draza stays alive, and LA Thieves, there's still hope. Oh, Zin needs to get in there at the right time just to get themselves into a position to fight for that point. Here it comes, though. Next hard point up and about. Number three. Draza's got himself the first opening seconds now. Top ring control in the hands of Octane. The rest of the side of the map's going to be all sweet and sound for the members of the LA Thieves. Keeping things together. Nice. And again, just pushing. That's going to be the game plan right now for Boston. Try to get that break from up top. It's going to be an Octane trying to stay alive. Three spree, 10 and three overall. Can he get any more? No, it's Kenny. God damn it. That's the kill coming through, but that's going to be an opening now for Boston to work with. And the gunfight on the hill. Well, Draza finesses long enough to get a little bit of help from Envoy. So, Thieves still alive, still stable on this hill. And, hey, even Stunt's going to do enough to get a kill to help take him down. But Boston are fighting for this, right? Yeah, three players pushing up through the ring side of the map. Draza as cracked out as you could ever need him to be, but can't win the second. And honestly, for the final 15 seconds, this is still decent time for either team to get. And Vivid, we talked about his stats. 0.81 when he's playing with Florida. Right now, 10 and 5. Double positive, he'll take it in Boston. Well, they take the rotation as well. Yeah, rotation's all good. Nero, the man in your screen, finding that time. 3 and 10 for him so far. Not the best looks out of the young demon, but we'll see if he can turn things around. TJ and Myth Methods kicking off the kills. Here comes it now, and Methods once again finding that sweet one. Draws on the back line. He managed to sneak through. It's going to be enough to cause enough discord in the ranks of Boston to flip the point, and it might be enough. Here we go. Boston trapped from the backhand side. Here comes the trap. Kenny's there. Nice shots into the teeniest little recesses now of Gavutu. He's going to shot Saron as Kenny is frying. That was a force free before being brought down we are over 100 points now for the thieves and that is one of the worst feelings in the world when you're walking out of spawn and already getting shot from kenny who's basically deeper in your spawn than you are but it looks like with a couple nades and a couple gunfights going through boston dude stabilize and at least get the final 20 seconds so certainly a decent chunk of time that they're able to get but if you're looking at the back coverage right now la thieves they have it locked out across the board pressure and ring pressure up towards cliff and well whoever comes off spawn should be quick on that rotation. Oh my goodness, number two. Methods has just spawned in paradise. Maybe it'll catch one out here. That's a big one. He's going to be able to stay alive on this side of the map now. What an interesting situation to find yourself in right now if you're the LA Thieves. You thought you were all good, but you ain't, son. Kenny with a kill. Makes it safe for now. Still, here comes the push. Still one member up. Now four. All spawn on the back right-hand side of the mini-map. That's going to be Boston Breach. Let's see how this one goes down. I mean, dude, uh, how many times is LAP is even right from P1? They are playing as aggressive as possible on the map, but you run the risk, especially in this game, to flip those spawns. So Boston right here, uh, I mean, that is a couple mistakes right there that LA Thieves end up letting slip through. Yes, they still have a lead, but Boston, the opportunity at least now to try and fight back just a little bit. Draza, though, sliding the hill, ready for the challenge. And well, these final 20 seconds, I mean, honestly, still a dogfight. Boston, though, they get wiped off the board. Nero trying to make the late play. The final 1v1 just to decide this scrap time. Oof. And Draza wins it as his teammates are now winning that rotation.
Yeah, rotation's already over towards the ring, and that's going to be a big hit now from Kenny. Nice shots here, and that's the one in the back line. Gets the second, 18 and 9 overall. Kenny having a good time ever since his rebirth at the last major. We finally saw Kenny spring to life here in Vanguard, and it's about bloody time. Good kills going their way now, though. The ring is in the hands now of Boston Breach as the second set of hard points is upon us. Draz is still trying to keep the play alive, waiting for those reinforcements, but it's your boy Vivid, low beach side, finding them kills. And keep in mind the side that LA Thieves end up pushing out ends up giving them the spawns that they do not want long term. So, I mean, you get Kenny picking up double kills and you still lose the break over towards P1. But hey, if Kenny off spawn, we'll just go and pick up another double kill. Maybe all is well that ends well. As LA Thieves, I mean, almost consistently putting themselves in a tough spot and instantly bouncing back and delivering. And again, uh, you know, I've said this, what, a few times now, final 20 seconds. It looks like Thieves poised up the fight for it. Nero, though, wants to strip it from their hands and maybe is successful. Him and TJ with a, a bit of a dogfight around ring. They will be able to get that final bit of time. In the meantime, though, Kenny trying to flip spawns. Not successful, but LA Thieves get to P2 first. P2's up. LA Thieves in there first. Let's go for a quick listening with Boston Breach and hear how they break it. Yep, shout man. No, what's up? Top up. One top up vote. Top up we can't even. He's our side top of the boat. Two top up. Two top up. On top of the stairs. No, one shot our side time. They're going to be close They're going to be close to us. I'm going to go over time. Everyone need time here, guys. They triple? They're going to be in house. 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 Triple top up. Triple top up. Triple shot. Triple triple drop. One shot. One shot. One shot. Trip this. I'm in. Top on hill. Top on hill. He's on top. Don't fuck the stairs. I think he's top up stairs. He's top up. Top up. Top up. One shot. I'm going to try to do more. P4. P4. I got one time. I need a time. Ring, yes. ring, ring, ring tank. Ring tank. Done first I'm wrapping right. Envoy, our steps. Our steps, our steps. Our steps, steps weak. Envoy. He's hitting on the road. Nice. Is there any? Yeah, it's big time, bro. Nice. Where's Envoy? Where's Envoy? Envoy's old. Envoy's old. Let's go. I'm pushing up right now. Pushing up right now. Close, close, close that week. Close up. Yeah, I got time. One shot. All good. All good. All good. Full 60 this next, guys. I need to cross. I'm wrapping right here. Okay. I'm on the time. I'm in right now. There's two. There's two. There's two oil. There's two oil. My, my, LA Thieves, they are having their way with Boston Breach here on Gavuti, oh, Jones. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, Octane is always playing the most annoying spots. Like, they're having to call out. No, 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 he's not on top of the boat, on top of the steps, on top of the boat. Dude's over here using palm trees, and both him and Kenny with the ARs in hand. I mean, having themselves a, a feast of a time. Still in a situation, though, it is Gavutu. You can have wild swings, and right now, if LA Thieves end up flipping these pawns the wrong way, it's not looking likely, but it could cost them. But right now, they're fighting for that contest. Couple players inside the hill, and Kenny, well, he wins one gunfight. Not enough to take them all down, and Boston able to collect a, a decent chunk of time. Admittedly, a long way to go on this rotation. They're saying over yet, though. Drowser from top ring, trying to keep him pinned down. The final few seconds is going to tick on out over here at P3. Good work again from the Thieves, maintaining that mid-map control. Far left-hand side of the mini-map now is where we're going for the next hard point. It's going to be a tough one, a crossover for now for the Boston boys. And no one from Boston is even getting close. They're getting dropped all over the shop, keeping that spawns on the right-hand side. But no one quite there from the Thieves just yet. Finally, Kenny's going to get on that point, start soaking up the radar station. And here we go. This could be it. And LA Thieves have just consistently had the most aggro in your face. You're going to have miserable gunfights all along your way up towards the hill. And... Maybe if the gunfights aren't feeling fun, try to get a couple nade kills in the mix. TJ tagged up one shot, not traded yet, and Boston in the hill for a moment for contest. But then the trades come through, and Drazik, who's holding outskirts the entire time, locking this one down for LA Thieves, who have had an absolute blast to the game, number one. Here we go, final 20 points for the win here to start off the series. LA Thieves looking to get it done. Draza with a three spree. The snippety snaps all over the place. The time ticking in favor as well. 15 seconds remaining. As we see across the map, it will have to go. It can't be quite closed out here, but for now, a next hard point we will see. Over towards Boston, it is on you lads to quite literally not let a single moment get through. And again, I mean, you know, pick your poison with the storylines. I was trying to oh, talk about on. Vivid. Meanwhile, the one for LA Thieves is when Kenny fries. I mean, you talk about the X factor and key for success. Double positive for the moment, and it is only two more seconds that LA Thieves are looking to get. You almost expect the break to come through at any moment. There's one for Kenny. It's a couple tags in, and it's enough for the trade. LA Thieves with the pressure, now the back spawns. At some point, they will get this, Miles. It's two seconds. It's a measly two seconds. Draza, now through the front. 
The next line of defense is going to be Methods. Shots are in. Finds another one. Can anyone take care of that player of the LA Thieves up top? Kenny as he sneaks his way forward. He's been a terror so far and he's still alive. Methods, though, slides into danger. Oh, dear. Points now looking a little bit closer. There's a member of the Thieves in it and it's your boy Kenny. Trades are abound and there we go. The LA Thieves get it done and it is certainly smiles across their faces. Got to be feeling pretty good after that one. Kenny and Octane, massive games out of them, but the whole squad, they were firing there on Gabutu. And that is almost like stage one level of like confidence and dominance from LA Thieves on that map. The old vibes that don't challenge on Gabutu. Because again, it was literally right from the opening break. They played that map as aggressively as you possibly could. And I know there was maybe one or two moments where like it almost bit them just a little bit. But uh, I mean, in the end, they just outslayed, outperformed. And again, Kenny, 36 and 19, 4K damage. Led the lobby yeah, by a country mile. Oof. And I think Kenny, again, the true X factor for the team. If he's shooting even half as good as that, LA Thieves are going to have a good time. And if he's putting up just bombs like that, they're simply not going to lose. It's been a while since Kenny looked that good. And hey, man, after the major, your boy's frying. So great stuff there again at the LA Thieves to start this series off right. Their campaign continues towards champs, of course. They are sitting on the edge of the bubble. Eighth place right now in the standings, 120 points be 130 after this win but we'll see how that one goes great stuff indeed the chance on the other side for boston i mean a little lackluster at times i, I think nero had a particularly slow map and you know it can happen at times but for, as far as i'm concerned i mean the listening didn't sound terrible we'll see if they can make the bounce back and search and destroy and of course they've got control after that but a bad start either way for both teams I think Boston just like, uh, you know, not able to capitalize off the few good moments that they were able to have. There was quite a few hills where, you know, it was just a four man feed for LA Thieves. And then you have guys like Octane jumping up on top of the steps or jumping on a palm tree and being as annoying as possible. But even that moment right there, right? That's where Methods gets like the cheeky spawn underneath Cliff behind him, gets the kill on Envoy out of the hill. But I mean, they only turned that into like three seconds of hill time before LA Thieves like instantly stabilized. So. Not any uh, great moments for Boston towards the end, and obviously a couple slow performances don't really help them out, but it certainly be like that on Gavutu. If you're running an SMG, you're not in control of those spawns. Well, double Ooh. negative is not uncommon. Not uncommon indeed. Wow, the end of the highlights here, as you can see, LA Thieves. It was a lot of fun, especially towards the end of the match. Tell you what, friends, they were enjoying themselves there. 250-195, the final score on Gavutu. That is done. To Berlin we go. Keep your rain gear on, friends, because it is going to be a very rainy series indeed until we get to Desert Siege Map 5. If we have to. But there we go. This is going to be an interesting one again for the Boston guys to get a brilliant result yesterday for them. Can they continue the success? Can they bounce back? We know that you can never count them out indeed, but the LA Thieves, I mean, for me, man, after the turnaround at the Major, I think this is a squad that has had something to prove for the longest of time. They've had such high expectations for themselves, the fans as well. Is this it? Is this the crowning moment where they finally have a great successful stage and to a Major where they perform well? Who knows? I mean, they, it's like saying they're desperate for it might be a little bit too extreme, but pretty close to desperate just because close. if not for the veteran clutch up like factor that they have had on land, I mean, their year like would have been chalked almost like last stage, but they've been able to consistently have the good performances in the clutch when they need them. And well, this entire stage is where they're going to need it the most because again, that borderline team see how they perform and i will continue to focus on kenny i think him and vivid the two players i'm looking at because kenny obviously phenomenal on map number one he's got a 0.74 kd on berlin s and d so certainly a player to keep in mind well we'll take a quick look at a moment of the game field keys to victory for the la thieves but yeah man if not for that veteran leadership who knows where this squad would be mate they really could be uh, outside of that top eight position indeed. Here we go. Chance gave you a keys to victory for the LA Thieves. There you go, baby. It's that major three S&D success. Third in round percentage at the major in its own. Keep grinding out the breaks on Kavutu hardpoint. 34% of the hills on Gav broken. First place overall chance. Safe to say they're on track with the keys to victory. And they need to like bring it together as well. The Gavutu key is already unlocked, but the search and destroy, if they can continue that level of success or potentially like even improve further throughout the stage, that would be a phenomenal sign for the team because Obviously, S and D over the course of the entire year hasn't exactly been their strong suit, but again, it is Kenny on Berlin, the 0.74 KD. But of course, while you look at him for one side, Vivid is an interesting player on Boston because Boston are the number one team on offense on this map, the second best team at converting their 4v3. So you have Boston who's been fantastic, but that's with Capsule, who's been like a top 10 S and D player in the game. On the flip side, Vivid has actually been towards the bottom. So. 
Uh, an interesting dynamic bringing him into the team. See how it pans out on this search. Yeah, statistically not a great look, but we'll see if it plays out. IRL in game. But for now, got to be feeling great for the LA Thieves. Coach Cap, of course, watching this one from a distance. We know Shane is enjoying himself. A welcome addition to the roster I think many fans have found. It's certainly spiced things up in D, but here we go straight to the Berlin. Breach will be watching them on defense first and foremost, but let's see how they perform when it comes to their turn to attack. I think you have, what, at best two players that were here on the cross, so it's what Vivid and, I believe, Method, the defenders of this site, and there's quite a bit of pressure on. Nade's coming through to get the stun, and, well, they get the information they needed. Vivid's gonna be chilling for now. Everything's been thrown. His little legs are exposed now. The woodwork is gone, but he ain't moving. Here comes the nades. It is all landing, man. You've got empty pockets for now. There we go. Finally, Kenny gets the first kill. Trades are there on a Draza. Kenny's still alive and kicking, though. So now Meth is trying to make his way forward. Here comes the gunfight. That's a stinger, indeed. 3v3 now. Nero's managed to get a flank. Oh, my God. But Kenny, head on a swivel, finds another in the round. Yeah, that's great work by Envoy. Just passing the intel to his team that someone was able to, like, potentially sneak through on the flank. And technically, well, yeah, I was going to say a trade comes through, but TJ left in a bad spot, and he gets cleaned up instantly. Efficient round out of the LA Thieves. And funnily enough, what reminds me, Miles, a conversation we were having earlier about, in my opinion, Toronto has some of the best nades in the game. The team that you brought up in response is LA Thieves have had maps where their nades are on point. That's exactly what it was to win them this round. It was the utility off the rip, the stuns to figure out where Vivid was playing. And as soon as the first nade doesn't connect, he's like, oh, he's not in the middle spot off to the right. Nan leads on his forehead. And uh, I think really the nade is just paying off just for the information game for the thieves. It's a perfect spot to use it as well. That A bomb site, there are so many nooks and crannies in there where you can put yourself. And Vivid throws caution to the wind, throws a stun in a Draza. And here comes the hit. Nero's first blood's going to get put down immediately as Kenny trades out. 3v3. Once again, the battle on the A-bomb site raging. Here comes Nero once again. Finds himself the second now on the round. Siege backing up, staying alive. Less than a minute to play with now, and it is still going down on the A-bomb site. Yeah, Nero and Envoy, by the way, flank buddies. Oh. This time it's Envoy oh. that ends up getting the final two. It was in round number one. Nero tries to flank. Envoy sniffs him out, delivers the kill. This time Nero gets through, but that means Envoy does too and seals the deal on the round. A uh, fun little battle that those two players are having. And uh, I think something that the desk brought up is the fact that Envoy, last time these two teams played, completely had their number and certainly an efficient two rounds coming out of the Prince. Three and O oh so far here in the search and destroys. The other thieves find themselves up two in the rounds. Yet to drop. Envoy, we'll see what he can do. Nades are up and about. Might catch Nero. We'll see where this one lands. There it is. Singes him. Enough information passed over now, but it's a good setup at the moment for Boston Breach. Two players towards A. One's got an eye on mid. And this is Nero, of course, watching that B bomb site. Vivid. Judiciously keeping his corner now on the A side of the map as well. And for the rest of the LA Thieves, it's going to be slow and steady. As Vivid is perched quite literally on the edge there. Oh, yeah. Well, now Vivid gets spotted out. Whether it's the, the suns or the nades or the shooting through the walls or the first blood from Kenny. Man advantage, and it looks like this bomb is going to get wrapped towards B. Nero, I mean, for the moment, the lone defender on the site. He hasn't read this just yet as all four players for these making moves over. And again, you get the bomb down. Even without the man advantage, you're feeling great. They're about to get this planted with the extra men. Fast wrap back now from Nero, though. He's got crossed up there by Octane. Beautiful work. 2v4 now. Bomb down. 40 seconds on the clock. Methods and Vivid. I've got to eliminate that long line of the LA Thieves and now defuse the bomb. Methods finds at least the first. Okay. Get the party started. Here we go. Chance 3v2. And while Method's going to be taking the long route, and he got Vivid trying to hit it through the front. Methods finds another pick. So this is a 2v4 where he's putting in work. Now you got Kenny feeling the pressure. And well, it delivers for the 1v1. Methods versus Kenny. Methods tagged up, and now he's got the advantage. Here comes an A through. Methods, this is for the ace. No, Kenny guns him down. He got a little bit anxious for that one. But I will say, man, one kill at a time. Boston bringing it back. I mean, the LA Thieves, though, you know, like, we had a good setup there. We got two down right off the rip, and then they started peeling us. So not over yet. Never chalked, truly. But you stay alive. It's another good round. LA Thieves running the show. And just throwing this out there, the reason Kenny won the gunfight was, again, the stuns and maids that were coming out, right? The, the utility just to tag methods up is he's forced to chow in those final moments. So even saving those stuns for the, the final moments of the round can be enough to get you the dub. And, well, 
You get some information as well. Method spots two on the cross, and he's holding it if Kenny tries to wrap back, but this might be for the call for Boston. Hey, this B site might be open. There's at best two players nearby. I mean, so you've got Kenny making his way across mid map now, and he's there's a small opening now. A blind spot, if you will, in the Boston defense. Here we go. The bomb being planted. Envoy's going in, baby. He's in. He's in. Pistol in hand. Finds at least the first blood. Now, second comes through from Kenny. Oh, dearie. Methods the top oh, trade has just been eviscerated. The whole team's nearly down. But Nero, the last man up. Can he make anything happen here? 30 seconds there on the defuse. And it is good night, Boston. What a round, LA Thieves. Dude, hey, Kenny is in his bag. The play calls are on point. That is like, again, dude, similar to like the Gabutu as well. Like the most aggro way to retake that site is the play that Envoy makes. Just like run straight through the middle like lane. You're completely exposed to every single clutch spot in the back. But if you get the timing right, the guy that's playing in sight never going to make that read. And Envoy makes that play, has Kenny for the coverage. So Nice one from Envoy, and I think Kenny picks up three in that round. Again, a 0.74 KD on Berlin s &D right now sitting at eight and two. Three year streaks, why not? Perfect scorecard thus far for the LA Thieves. Nero is trying to make his way on towards that B-bomb site. Knows his players are bound, but Kenny, oh no, that is not a crane. It is Kenny, and he's gunned you again. They've been now waiting for the perfect time to hit the... Oh, God, there's no perfect time. And Envoy's destroyed in 40 seconds on this one. 4v2 methods. Oh, no, he's done. Tej, you're all alone, son. What have you got? And the answer at the moment is not a whole lot. He is in trouble. Here come the thieves. And Kenny may finally come to a close. The spree is done, but so is the round. Ugh, Boston can't get anything going. I do. I, LA thieves, I can tell you one thing for sure. They have no respect for Boston at all in any way shape or form i mean truly doing whatever they want as aggressive as they want every play call on point and giggling the entire time i'm actually i'm kind of baffled at this point that boston like completed a reverse sweep against optic i mean not to count them out like early on but straight up right now they are just getting bullied in this matchup worked on vivid sadly on the donut and this is statistically what we were worried about that again capsule was such a heavy hit when it came to the mode Vivid, not it, but here we go. An aggressive opener, potentially. Oh dear, ruin from Envoy's first blood. But you've still got members of Boston now lining up for this one. It looks like they've lost the nerve and the push. Oh dear. Wait, Vivid gets on the board. And now a 3v3. And 3v3 and up top third. It's always a, a fun spot to try to be in. Nero right, wins the right. next gunfight. And here you go. Three versus two. First advantage Boston have had. We got to try to make it happen. Oh, nice work, out Nero. The shots are there. It's a 3v1. Octane, clutch up and make it a 6-0. What will happen? Tagged up by Methods. Oh my God, Octane, he's still alive. But that's a kill from Vivid. He's on the board and so are Boston. Uh, yeah, yeah, hey, you get one, right? You know, you just you get a little bit of momentum. You don't drop a donut. You feel good about the round. If not, feeling pretty bad about the entire game, but we definitely should not count this team out. They can complete reverse sweeps. We've already seen, I think, two maybe three full sales this year so i suppose you never know but even with the final gunfight you know octane just had against methods it's not like these are going to be playing with any fear whatsoever yeah you absolutely cannot count any team out in the map or mode or vanguard quite frankly but let's find out what happens here draza turned to there dust nice fade away there from methods Makes safe the site, backs on up, waiting for his boys to get involved. That's the flank wide open now. Nero's on the run. And here we go, TJ. We're clawing it back one round at a time, one kill at a time. Kenny in the 1v4. Uh, and talk, look at the minimap, dude. They talk about being surrounded by everybody. Spots out Nero, but oh, it looks like Nero can see him too. And as dominant as it gets, I think almost every single player, maybe Nero is able to pick up two in that round, but just wins the individual gunfight. Methods with the first blood as well. And I mean, hey, that's that's perfect. Round two. Perfect. Two in a row now for Boston Breach. LA Thieves. They've been here before. We've had moments like this in the past. As you know, it's never over until it's over. But here we go. Another good round. Boston Breach, statistically the number one team on offense here on the map mode. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Well, what's happening is that bomb is going straight towards this B site and Envoy right now, the only player even watching this cross. Now, number five Octane will be quick to help him out, but a little too late at least to stop the bomb plant. So this would be a, a tried and true clean four versus four. 
Well, like these, if they give it up, we'll see what the game plan is for the retake for the moment. Two players going to be working the flank, six and seven, as draws in Kenny. See if they can make some action through P5. You got the full set of what you want now for Boston Bridge. We have seen many teams load the sheets up in similar situations. Here we go from Envoy. First in, Nero can't quite get two. A lot of information passed over though. Envoy checks every corner, checks the right one, gets the kill. 2v3 now, TJ back one up. You've got methods in the prime position. Atop is perched there, brought down by Draza. Oh no, it's on Tej. Finds one, shots are in, can't get the second. That is it, the defuse is gonna come through and he won't find the kill. Envoy, Draza, the LA Thieves, they close out the search and destroy. The perfect setup from Boston Breach broken down one player at a time, and that is a 2 0 in the series. And that is an incredibly difficult bomb site to retake that, I mean, they almost did with ease towards the end. Wasn't quite the hot six zone maybe they were looking for early on, but I mean, either way, basically treating Boston with a little bit of disrespect, bullying them in both maps number one and map number two. Obviously, Boston, well, their only story so far throughout this stage has been a, a reverse sweep. So they've been down 0-2 before, and they've made the comeback. We'll see if they can make that little bit of magic happen again. But meanwhile, LA Thieves, the team literally on the bubble for the eighth seed, trying to get these points. And I mean, so far, looking good. Looking great so far. 6-2 there, of course, in the search and destroy. Quite a speedy one. Kudos again to Kenny at the 9-6. and six, Over 1,000 points, over 1,000 damage there dealt. And so far, this is a very decisive series. Kavutu control, we know control is the swing round, the, the sort of the moment in a series where a team can turn everything around. Typically, you know, if you're going to see a 3-1, this is where it's going to go through. But there we have it. Berlin hard point after that if we have to go the distance. But man alive, it has been a good show so far for the LA Thieves. Confident indeed. Whether it's the 10 CDL points you want or the 10K on the line here in the bounty match, the boys are looking fantastic to secure it. We will see if that does happen. But of course, friends, first map two's done that means we're going to a commercial break we'll see you after this
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew. And Zenny. Armor your eyes with blocks, gaming glasses, starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com slash CDL. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got a price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Bro. 86 all the hay. I won't get a ball today. Got lost in the ball and A's. I'm flipping the balls. I'm flipping the, flipping the, flipping the. Octane. Ah! Deals. Tell him talk to Kyle for the quote. All record, all record eyes. Still want to act, not the ghost. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. LA Thieves taking on the Boston Breach right now. LA Thieves find themselves in an extremely comfortable 2-0 lead, but everyone knows that there is nothing comfortable about a lead in Vanguard. We will find out what happens now going into our next match. Control. Chance. Let's get it, baby. We go back to Kabutu. Uh, yeah, dangerous place, I'd say, for Boston. Yeah. The moment. Oh, so we're like, oh. it's a dice roll for them the entire year of both like Capital when he's playing for the team and Nero of what kind of performance you were going to get. Could be a 1.3, could be a 0. 0.6. It was very tough to like tell between the two, but where Boston are actually kind of strong, like at least halfway decent at Kabutu Hardpoint. Not so much on this one. Uh, bottom in the league on defensive round wins on a map that is heftily favored for the defense and uh, a three and nine record overall. Now, I know we briefly talked in the hard point about Vivid does bring a different dynamic to the team. Uh, he has performed pretty well on Gavutu, at least in the two series and really just two maps that he has had with the squad. But I think both him and Nero really need to pick things up if you want any hope of this reverse sweep to come through. Yeah, if anything right now, our Fast and Furious duo are as disappointing as the franchise itself. Yes, I said it. Come at me. Oh, Here we go. Hey. Now you're up, mate. <clears throat> Take it away, Chance. I'm going to have my feet up for this one after that comment. I mean, come on. They're, like, look, for what they are, great films. I I'm not saying this is like Stanley Kubrick's best work, like type deal. Like, it's a different category. It's a popcorn film. Leave it alone. They're not a popcorn team. They're right now in the top eight. They're looking for a win on defense. Admittedly, not the best start down by four lives. And Envoy, who has pieced them up quite a few times, starting off 3-0. and oh. Maybe looking to replicate another performance as, yeah, they are not having fun shooting at back against him. Outstanding save there, Mr. Ashworth. Boston Breach doing what they can to get back into this one, but A is all thieves for now. You're going to see that clock up to two minutes in just a moment. Let's anyone get close, and the answer is no. No one will get close. LA Thieves are going to steal A. They're going to fly on through. They're going to make their way towards B. But nice fan out right now from Boston Breach, as again, that clock's gone up. Plenty of lives either side. We'll see, though, if the Thieves can make their way on and towards B. And right now, it is not a bad look. Kenny trying to take control of rings. Three spree still in hand. That's going to be the four, and that is it. They're going to be on B. Yeah, and there was uh, zero teamwork right there between Boston, right? You just let players oh up the God. steps. If you don't have ring control, oh you're not going to have success. And Boston not playing together, and Boston now feeling the pain. The nades at least take Envoy out of the hill. Again, if you can't take him down in a gunfight, got to use the frags to make it happen. And hey, <laughs> teams like that out of TJ, ring is now yours. Vintage Tej gets the kills, rings his. Now over towards the other side of the map, they're going to now try to hit the members of the LAPs while they're in spawns. Get on that top cliff side and start applying the pressure. Here we go. Shots are in Tej. Can he get himself another sweet two piece? The answer is no. Viv is there to help out though. Great work again. We've leveled up the life count now, 18 to 18. Boston Breach were bleeding out a moment ago. Now we're looking pretty good. And Kenny trying to be the guy to break out for his team. He's able to pick up two, but that opens up the boat side of the map. And that is not the side of the map where you might be having a great deal of success. They're going to have to try to retake ring at some point. And looks like they're trying to do it from Boston side of the map again. You see Envoy creeping up the steps, but near ready this time, but not ready for two. Now beach side of the map. You have methods posted down low, but Jaza might be looking for him. You got Kenny in the spawn against Vivid. He takes that one down oh. and you get chopped in your spawn. The four man wipe and the stack is now in. Uh, that could be the round. It's a two man stack for now. The nades land. You can at least get rid of one. Got to get the pressure on now. Here comes some sweet nades. This is fantastic lethal and tactical use out of Boston Breach. They've managed to save the day. Kenny Spree comes to a close. Nine lives of Boston Breach remaining on the defense. You've got yourselves a bit of space, but they do manage to secure this segment at the very least. 35 on the clock. Here we go. And Nero's sneaky as well, right? He doesn't get spotted moving up towards ring, so he might be able to be here to maybe shoot a player in the back or maybe an important gunfight for him to win, but it is Envoy. Envoy loves this matchup. He takes him down. 
We got Teach on point. Oh, brought down as well. On to the point where once again go. 20 seconds now on the clock. Here comes Vivid. Up close and personal. Taken care of. is going to find the kills. Last lives now remaining for Boston Breach. And this should be it. Second segment gone. One final hit. So you're going to get. Nero's managed to get to ringside. So the pinch is now on. Draza deals with it handedly. And that is that. LA Thieves win their offensive round. Yeah, it, well, worst team in the game on defense is, is Boston Breach on this map. And I, again, I'm seeing many things from the LA Thieves camp in the cams. Respect for Boston is just not one of them. Well, I mean, look, they're having a good time, man. They're playing games at the highest level. Trying to secure themselves some sweet CDL points. I mean, dude, when I win a round on offense on Gavutu, I dance too. I understand the, the emotion, for sure. Maybe we've, maybe we've been there before. Here we go, though, over towards the A side of the map. It looks like we're going to be hitting this one quite hard for the LA Thieves on defense. Is this a very good read? I think it is. Even with the wall bangs and everything, you name it. I was about to say, Envoy's on your screen. I'm expecting him to win the gunfights. At least DJ's there for the trades just to keep things a little bit stable and sort of the, the default 50 50 setup. Not like a great deal of map control is in. Only one player on point for the moment. Boston's still looking for a couple kills and a few trades coming through. But Thieves up the top boat above TJ. I don't know how ready he is for it for the moment. Him and Nero going to be looking for the gunfights. The trades come through, but TJ wins at least the first one. Now against Octane, he's waiting for the reinforcements to come through. A very slow paced attack over towards that. Oh, he was finessing for a moment. Good shots out of both of them, though. You still got a little bit of work done there on the A side of that final segment there. There we go. Methods is in there. Raz Envoy now trying to make sure B's all safe. That was a good play. Nero was trying to get up into their business to take care of them. But that makes the site safe for now. Hey, he's gone. 2.05 on the clock. Great amount of lives for Boston to work with here on offense. Just keep in mind in the background, Octane is on a five spree for the moment. Obviously a glad bomb. And this map could be devastating. And looking for Octane maybe to get a couple of these trades or just to get cleaned up and shot in the back. But Vivid can't finish it. Well, now they know he's in the corner. Envoy's got him stunned up. The teamwork there. The utility always on point from LA. And Thieves keeping all safe now on the beach side. B is good. Ring is in their control. You're going to be watching those members of Boston. Three of them making their way towards that sand side of the map. Only one hitting through boat now. Viv has got to find at least one on the pinch. Minute 30 to play with. You've spent a lot of time setting this play up. You better make it count. And here we go, Octane. Tactical retreat, seven spree. Looking to make it an eight. Lades are up. Doesn't get the kill. And he's out and about, man. He's staying alive. Yeah, and I forgot where it happened, but he must have gotten team killed at some point. That's why the seven spree doesn't actually get him the glide. So he's probably only on a two or three for the moment. And well, Envoy, maybe the opportunity to try to make a, a late flank play. TJ, though, is there in time. You keep bringing control, no flanks through in Boston. That was a great opportunity to set something up at B. Here we go, still trying to make the play happen. That's a minute out of work with. TJ was spotted. Octane's trying to hold this one down alone. He's got himself Kenny right over his left-hand shoulder. Draz is finding the kills in mid-map. All good now. Thieves push forward, see the kill feed light up. That's all their space to work with now. 45 seconds to go. They've got a slight life lead for now, but this is great work. They've got all the space in the world to work with. Yeah, and the only opportunity is to get that ring control, try to set something up. But as soon as you lose all the gunfights, well, now you lose the map control, and now you will be stuck in your spawn for the final 30 seconds of this game, bar some inhumane miracle play. But that is a lot of ARs in the kill feed, all for LA Thieves. We're almost certainly going to go up 2-0 already in the series, but also in the control. Yeah, very, very methodical defense there from the LA Thieves. Watching them approach that beach one sort of piece of cover at a time. They never overextended. They never went too fast there. Played that real sensible. And that was a great looking round indeed. Wonderful work out of the LA Thieves, both on offense and defense now. Boston, breach. Here we go, boys. This is it. Time to pull the whole series around. Get at least a round on the board. Try to get the momentum going because at this moment in time, Boston are being bludgeoned here on Gavutu. And I mean, just even for like to take advantage, let's say hypothetically Boston are able to get an offensive win. I, I already think they're going to end up too far behind unless they come out and just dominate on defense uh, to get it for the round five. So I have to imagine, you know, the odds for this one, maybe like 60, 40 for Thieves going into it. As soon as that first round of offense goes their way, it jumps up to like a 95 percent chance to actually win the map. So great advantage, but they are back on the attack. Boston, their path to get back in this one. They need to just outright dominate them. Here we go. Another round up. Could be the last one here if the LA Thieves got anything to do with it, and they're going to do it, maybe. Let's find out how they sound in a quick listen in. 
tank, mid tank, then he half health. Bottom boat. Don't I'll play for the guy. Bro. Bottom boat's in it. I got a hold. Bottom boat's in it. I'm leading. 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 Bottom boat's in it. I
wild timing and an opening for Boston Ooh. DJ's RB. Three spree as well. Matthew's got him covered. Rings now all sweet. This could be massive. Kenny, can you stay alive and win this fight against Zinni? This is a big one. Backs him up at the very least. Now, over to TJ on the force free still. Here comes the big old pressure. Oh man, he came so close to dealing with it. Octane's team kill comes through. So now you're in an awkward situation when the numbers aren't working out. The pinch is on. It could be Kenny the hero once again. No, nope. gets ring. Doesn't manage to stay alive for too much longer. Boston's still in the play. Oh, I call duty time okay, against Finest that, and Matthews, yeah. man. He, he was pre aiming it, and as soon as he gives it up, draws it appears, and well, all the B pressure is now going to fall. Draws it should get caught towards the middle of the map, or he gets spotted, and Methods is not having a good time. No. Draws it out, cut off the reinforcements. Oh, no. Less than 20 seconds to go. Are you able to get out of your spawn? Are you able to get over towards one of the points? Because you better hurry up, lads. Here we go, Draza. Oh, man. Ruthless aggression now from the Alaskan Assassin as he finds a few more. Less than 10. Who is it? It's Methods. He's got to go towards B. There are two members of the Thieves there to body block it. That is it. It is game, set, match. LA Thieves. It's a 3-0. And it's money, baby. Is there to stuff them dollar bills into the LA Thieves gonna be feeling fantastic about that victory. Not only ten thousand dollar richer, but also ten CDL points heavier. A deft 3-0 there in the end. And we definitely know what the uh, the actual important thing is just the fact that Minnesota Rocker keeping that gap very close between them and LA Thieves. Well, Rocker make a play. Thieves come out and respond instantly. And I mean, all honestly, I don't know how many 3-0s these guys have, especially through the online portions, but that's about as good as LA Thieves have looked all year long. Shades of Major 1, or Stage yeah. 1, excuse me, Stage 1, Stage 1. Stage 1 before the fated, what, Atlanta phase, you know, reverse sweep that changed everything. But there we go, pals. That was a big one. LA Thieves victory they so sorely needed again, just in terms of where the points are at now. They have indeed changed their position they will advance for seventh place now in the standings they're getting that bit further away from the bubble and creeping up again on boston breach their opponents still yet to really get things going what a wild series that was indeed man la thieves looking strong again on gunvutu don't challenge on gunvutu was the slogan from the start of the year but now looking to get back into the swing of things chance it was a nice look again after the rebound at the major and funnily enough, I wanted like a very interesting dynamic that obviously until the stage is over, we're not going to know how it actually plays out. But in theory, Boston getting win uh, against Optic Texas is like a fantastic one towards the top, like team in the game sort of thing. They're second overall in the CDL points. You feel great after that. But then you lose to a team that's actually beneath you in the standings. And that's kind of worse. Like that's the one you need more to try to keep these other teams down from making games. So uh, just to add to the fact of how important this is for LA Thieves, not just making strides or keeping distance from Rocker, not just passing LAG, but covering some ground on Boston Breach as well. Cause I mean, obviously you gotta make champs, but the seed still matters as well. So it's not just for the fact that you wanna be in the top eight. It is a very close race. I'd say even teams towards the bottom could get as high as like fourth if you play well enough throughout this stage. So LAB is really setting the stone or setting the, uh, the tone for their stage. Sticking away through that 3-0 there as we la 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 our way into 10 more points. Congratulations again to the LA Thieves. Of course, the bounty match as well. So 10k ritual. Also wild day for them. Money, money, money. They had a great day. And again, chance. Current four, man. That's one thing I'm looking at as well. The LA Thieves I wanted to see them bounce back after the, the you know, exit of the major. Great looks from them. Now they're looking fine. Desk. It's all money, baby. How we doing? There's oh money God. in the bank, baby. You see the deal, Miles. You know what the deal is. Chance, what's up? Chance, listen, if you want a dollar two, give me your PayPal, baby. But hey, shout out to LA Thieves for pulling out a big win against Boston Breach right now. This was a matchup that I really didn't know what to expect, especially with what we saw from Boston yesterday. But the thing is, man, it seemed like LA caught their Jets, man, and lay it on Boston, nameless. They just look so comfortable when they play against Boston, like Very. legit. Like on that first map, it was reminiscent of the first time they played them and they just 3-0 smoked them once again when they play against Boston everybody turns up to a whole new level Kenny was going crazy on rotation popping two and three pieces pushing up mid map keeping them pinned back I mean this is an LA Thieves team that just looks way more comfortable than they did in throughout stage two throughout the beginning of stage three like they're different now it's like the lobby has their name on it by the way Kenny I want to see the total stats because Kenny absolutely fried now we all saw Kenny's up and down performances throughout the year right today he was on one but Ali also in search and destroy. I was wondering how that was going to go. It yeah. seemed like LA, they, they played passive and they were able to come up with a big win because of it. I'll have to counterpoint to that. If anything, I think they played incredibly aggressive. <laughs> and yeah. I think that 
actually was like probably my favorite map when it came to the series, when it came to Search and Destroy, because I was pleasantly surprised. You could see the work LA Thieves had put in to the VOD review going up against specifically Boston Breach. Like, they felt like that they knew where players were and constantly capitalized on it. Like, even when we were on Method's point of view, like, you could see the players crossing A. Obviously, he always usually plays up there to call out for his teammates of where the pressure is on the map, and they started shooting at him. So they had that information. He knew he was going to be there. So just my, my hat is tipped, honestly, to the notes from the LA Thieves camp. We, we have to give it to him. And also, we have to give it to Draza for the Game Fuel post victory. Excuse me, Kenny, with the Game Fuel post victory spotlight. Let's get this man on the screen. Kenny, you fry today. Congrats. But Ali, go ahead. <laughs> Kenny did incredible, absolutely incredible. And like I said, about that Thank search you. and destroy, like, that's where I feel like I've really seen the elevation when it comes to your team. And that's where you guys were yeah. really struggling at the beginning of the season. I have to know, like, the amount of work you guys have put in to really turn that around. Um, for our SD, I feel like we've been just trying to figure out how to give more looks on offenses. And uh, obviously, everybody knows, like, not losing our guaranteed situations where we're up and men. Um, I feel like we've just been we been practicing it a lot and then changing up certain things and making more aggressive calls and reacting um, pretty fast to, I guess, the enemy or opponent's offensive plays. Like, whenever they're trying to plant bombs, we feel like we let teams plant the bombs too much, let them get too much map control. So anytime we were calling out people, we were kind of just, like, focusing on one person and kind of just reacting pretty fast on our defenses. So I think that um, went a long way, and I think our practice showed a lot in that match. Awesome. Kenny, you were frying in this Good match. Boy. I mean, we haven't seen you play like that in so long, but yeah, you're yeah. on another level. And I just want to ask, like, when you guys play against Boston, the last match you guys yeah. had, and now against this new Boston roster, you guys play so confident. Why is it so much different huh. against this team? Do you guys just feel like there's no way in hell you're going to lose? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think Boston's a pretty good team. I think that this week, at least, our practice has been amazing. We've been playing pretty well, and I think our practice overall has been amazing this past, like, month or so. And I feel like there's certain teams that put pressure on us than others, and I feel like Boston just wasn't one of the teams, and we kind of just weren't ever felt like we were on the back foot, and we had to actually think. It was kind of just like practice was just flowing perfectly. And it was, honestly, no offense to them, but it felt like that was another scrim. Mm. All right, hey, hey, <laughs> no offense, but like it just felt like our confidence was all there. And every like in, in practice, like everybody's thinking straight. There's no really like all process. Everybody's just going with the flow and just flowing well. And I, I think that it. is what our match felt like. All right, pop off, man. It's Kenny. I'm gonna leave the floor to you to talk to all the fans out there in LA and all around the world. Um, you guys had a phenomenal and, and weird performance out there in Toronto. You had a big win today. Um, what do you guys yeah. say to the supporters? Um, appreciate everybody again for supporting us we're finally getting into form and uh figuring everything out getting more comfortable on the map uh, as a unit so once again thank you everybody for, for supporting hoping hoping we do good in these qualifiers and uh the last major hey, i'm not biased at all but man this version of la is um really good <laughs> stay this way all right you take it easy <laughs> thank you oh no problem man all right so um yeah that, that's it for today um yeah, just as long as yesterday, but LA Thieves were able to go crazy and that scuff played a game where they won in control was even better. Their control looked dominant, uh, to be honest. Like, to get that opening offense on a map like Kavutu, which I feel like we haven't loaded into a Kavutu control in so long, so it was kind of refreshing that it wasn't just defense back and forth and back and forth. I mean, we saw Envoy doing what Envoy does once again, right? Like, he instantly is getting on the streak. He's getting behind enemy lines. Like, the pressure is just there for this LA Thieves camp, and the fact that we're able to stack this point, and again, this offensive round is really what made the difference. Yeah, I mean, the very first round, you're able to win an offense. It takes yeah. all the pressure away from you on that map, right? You're like, okay, we're set up for success here. We have so many ticks. I mean, we won an offense. So for LA Thieves, I mean, they won a ton of big gunfights there on that map. And then we even saw a great defense there at the very end where they push up and put them in that deep spawn trap. But I also just want to say for Boston Breach, I think it just might just be a matchup thing for them when they go to LA Thieves. Like, I still do think what we saw yesterday out of Boston Breach is more indicative of what we're going to see from them in the future. Uh, I just think they, this team gives them a ton of trouble. And we've seen them play them on Gavutu a couple times now, which is just not the right play in my mind. You look at Boston, and they're really strong in the SMG role, in the aggression. I mean, you have TJ as your flex. He's also a very aggressive player. So going up against LA Thieves, who are strong in the AR position on Gavutu, just seems like an error to me. If they play them again, I doubt they go that route. I completely agree. I'm um, also, all right, so let's go ahead and recap the games we had today. And one of the plays really stood out amongst the rest in my eyes, like wholeheartedly. The game field tactical play of the day was when 
Prolude and Dashy went crazy oh, yeah. and what oh, was it, a 2 v 6 This was insane. The fact that they weren't even like anywhere behind enemy lines, like this is just a normal hit to this site. The fact that Prolude finds two here, like you can see it, they line up the nades, right? So you know they're talking to each other. They genuinely are going to make this push. Prolude slides and that's gets this oh. kill. That is the kill that opens up this round for them to take it. Yeah, I mean, that's just communication right there. That, that's such a huge play for Optic Texas. And, you know, we saw them lose this Tuscan control, and this time it was obviously way different. But, yeah, that push right there, we won't see too many clutches like that. I'll tell you that, Bella. Yeah, I mean, it's a that, very that's tough a, sight to take. That's not an easy clutch to do. And the fact that Prolu was able to do that as well, I mean, this is a young man that stepped into the CDL, big shoes to fill, and to see his type of experience happen, I mean, it's a feel-good thing, right? He could walk away from moments like that and just be better overall, and hopefully that helps out Optic Texas. But the first game of the day, all right, it, it was a doozy. London Royal Ravens pulled up with Gizmo and said, hey, Toronto, guess what? We're back, baby. And Ali, they handed it to him. I think it was like a happy little upset. Like, it I think was. most of us definitely went into that favoring Toronto Ultra with for what sure. we saw from them. But for a London Royal Ravens to come out in a 3-0 fashion the way that they did, I mean, they looked incredible. Very specifically, Zero. He was on an absolute terror this series. And I'm really excited now moving forward with London Royal Ravens because they set themselves up in points so so early in the year that we were all worried that it just became a safety net here in the second half, but they are looking to capitalize and hopefully keep that top four seed. In a way, Zero was dog in Ultra. You can see Ultra trying to double team him on maps like Berlin, but that opened up opportunities for players like Nasty to really capitalize and show everybody what he really is in that lobby. Same with Afro and Gizmo as well. But the second series of the day was a must win for the New York Subliners, a team that are trying their best to make it to champs and nameless. They went against LA yeah, and they cooked them in hard point, dude. Like, New York was on point today. And you can see the difference that has made when Krim has a really good performance in respawn. Like, he was top fragging both those hard points, making big, impactful plays. And they played great, man. This New York team that was under pressure, they were losing some clutch moments, but they're rolling now, and they need all these wins. I mean, like, realistically, they even if they go 4-1, they still might not make it. Right. They don't have a crazy run at the majors. So these guys, every single match is do or die for New York, and that's kind of what we saw today versus LAG. And by the way, with this loss right here, LAG are slipping in the standings currently. As it stands today, they might be the only team that won a major event this year that might not make it to champs, but also the third game of the day, Minnesota Rocker really turned up against Optic Texas, and with those hard-fought, hard-point games, Ali, Minnesota did not let go of that lead. Not at all. It was such a close series overall. Like, even the boat cage ending on time. Like, Optic not only brought it back, but made it so mixy there near the end. They were so close to closing it out. And then, obviously, the boat cage round 11. I mean, Havoc just sprinting through tools. Like, just to make that play, first of all, the fact that it was Standy that calls it because he trusted Havoc. He trusted him to get a kill before going down. And then Havoc trusting Standy to get a trade. Like, that is so typical out of the likes of the Minnesota. To Rocker, obviously Optic 3-0 in the Tuscan control. Now that is more of what we expected from this squad, but now to go down 0-2 in Stage 4 qualifiers, yeah. heading into the Major, it is not looking good if you're a Greenwell fan. You just have Major 4 than champs. This, yeah. this is it. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen them lose back-to-back -back matches like that, man. And that, and that series okay. is just a couple situations that got away from them. Like that round yeah. 11, couple of the rotations on that Berlin. like. Right. They just don't seem the same. And this is potentially the Optic team that we're going to see throughout the rest of the year. So they really need to figure it out and start bouncing back in these games. It's funny that this team is like greatness personified. They lose two and we're like, yeah, what's up with Optic next? But it's, it's a real thing, right? Let's take a look at the points to see how things have unfolded with all the matches that we had today. And also, um, oh, LAG holding on to that eighth spot <laughs> tight alley. They're holding on by five points. Yo, these standings are getting super mixy. Ooh. They were mixing before, but now now there's a little bit of some wiggle room for some of these teams, but you can see it now. LAC is now in the seventh spot. LAG, though, five points behind. Minnesota Rocker, five points behind them. So these are going to continue to toss and mix up as we go out our weekend. But wow, Val, that bubble, it's getting scary. This, this is scary. Take a look at that. London World Ravens at 160 in fourth place. And you got, what, Minnesota Rocker sitting at 120. Minnesota could kill it this stage, go to the event, have a great event, and, and just frog leap over so many people. But Nameless, man, today has been fun. We've been talking about points to bubble. We've seen upsets. 
I mean, how are you feeling about the end of the day so far? I'm feeling good, man. It's been a fantastic day of Call of Duty games. That bubble is getting crazier. I mean, we see New York now at 90. Every team that needs a win, they've been getting their dubs. So right. I can't wait to see more of these bubble matches. Ali, you've been killing it. I really love the segment you have with the too fast, too furious and everything. Um, how do you feel about today now that we're closing things out? I feel great. I think it is so stressful to think about. Like, a lot of these teams are vouching for other teams and hoping other teams are winning or other teams are losing because of the bubble, right? It's like, all right, well, if we plan out how our stage four is going to go, we need this team to win and we need this team to win. Like, it's so exciting to see so many teams' chances going to champs and fall onto each other. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the stream right here. But you all know the deal for tomorrow. Same place, same time. Don't miss it. I can't wait. We're going to close out week one with a banger, okay? But I'm um, kind of like that SpongeBob meme where Squidward's looking out the window and he sees everyone having fun outside. That's going to be your favorite team if they don't pick it up this stage and get those points to go to champs, baby. Things are getting tighter than ever, and the competition is absolutely rising to the top right now. Tomorrow, I can't wait to see the matches, but we'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you. Spread love. Just be safe. Have a good night. We'll catch you next time for some more CDL action.